change of rain. Friends, to day three of the DPC SEA PGL Upper Division Experience, brought to you by HyperX and Secret Lab Chairs. That's right, it is indeed day three. I am your host, Tsunami. And now that we've finally progressed a little bit further into this league, we're going to start pitting our former lower division promotions from season one against the upper division mainstays from season one. I got Lizard and I got Black to help guide me through this process. First match, we're gonna see Lil Gun, uh, one of the lower division, and second match, we're going to be seeing Omega. So, mm -hmm. also also new patch. Yeah, also uh, new patch, just you mentioned that. Uh, Lil Gun, uh, did you guys discuss their uh, logo at all? Like The raccoon with the water gun? <laughs> with the Lil Gun. Yeah. Lil yeah. Gun. Yeah, of course we did. It's adorable. They had a different one in season one. They upgraded in season two. Oh, did two. they? Yeah, yeah, it was sa same concept, but they got a graphic of designer. You yeah, you, ha you have to, you know, pay someone, make a better graphic I mean, design. Rumor has it they paid 17k for it. They got yeah. their all their lower division earnings went straight to the new logo, <laughs> and it was money well spent. It's worth it, you know. It's it's the brand, and you're going into division one. You need to pay the big bucks to it's play true. with the big boys. <laughs> it's understandable. Yeah, we can take a look at the standings again. Not too much has happened. We're still in the early days, but we are going to find out some separations now. Execration already dropped two series, as you can see on the bottom left of your screen, and Lil Gun hoping to not be there uh, along with them. And boom, Omega and TNC all picked up their victories. Meanwhile, lower division, South Built Esports looking looking strong, three and zero so far. And Motivate Trust Team SMG with one victory each. And unfortunately, Galaxy Racers 0 and 2 as well. Yep, South build. Was the team that was relegated down. And now they're looking very strong there. So, I mean, a lot of people already suspected that we will see something similar. You know, the teams that drop will go back up. And yeah. the teams that go up go back down. And yeah, it's, uh, we'll see if that party continues in like every other region as well. But likely to happen here again. Mm -hmm. Execration uh, also in Division 1 looking a little bit shaky. In the first uh, season as well, they weren't really that great. It, it was 496, Vice, or Execration that are yeah. going to fight. Uh, they, they made it better. They, yeah, yeah, they barely yeah. made it, and yeah. right now they're on the bottom, and it looks rough. They get some time off, though, as we take a look at today's schedule. 
It's going to be Lil Gun versus Boom as our first series of the day. And then after that, we will finally get a chance to look at T1 here in the league. We saw them a little bit at the major. Wasn't a great showing if you were able to keep your eyes on the wild cards in the group stage. But they will be playing up against Smart Omega, which it could be competitive. I mean, I have high expectations for 23 Savage, but I had high expectations for him at the major and didn't really meet it. I mean, on paper, it should be too, too, too old old. serious, yep. right? But well, uh, there's always some surprises. It's a CA. Yeah, maybe they can drop a game. I just don't feel like Boom will lose the series or T1 will lose the series. Maybe one game they will drop, but... Yeah, it's a CA, and yeah. uh, you never know. It, yeah. it, a three-game series is to be expected, because... All strategy aside, these these players black knows best, yeah, right? Like run at them. Just, they, they just run at each they're other. Rambulan. And they're rambulan. And rambulan sometimes it only takes that one mid laner that's 11, 12k to take over the game and win. If you remember Mikoto from uh, the last season as well, maybe not as much in this one so far. So but far. Uh, yeah. um, he's taking it easy, you know, Dream of Cells back. Then you take the spotlight, bro. I don't need it. I had it last season. <laughs> Like you just came back into the team again, you know, it's a motivation boost. That's right. Yeah. Dream of Cell is uh, looking strong. We had a chance to interview him after their win in the previous series, but high expectations for Boom. I think, well, I, I don't I don't think anyone really looked at them as replacing, it was it was Drew who was the yep. replacement for Dream of Cell. A lateral upgrade at best and a downgrade at best. No disrespect to Drew, but Dream of Cell has been with Boom for such a long time. He's been with these all these players. Yeah, but uh, you know, if you're in the chat, you can very often see Dream of Cell was right, Boom was left <laughs> when they were when they were losing and. Uh, but when I they were winning, uh, when they were winning, then Boom was right. <laughs> Dream was, was left. Boom was right, <laughs> but Drew was uh, left out of the squad, obviously, yeah. and for for some reasons you know same like in in the chinese region when you saw Ajit being uh, swapped from e-home same thing here happened with drew because there are games that are on the carry and in those games he didn't perform to the to the standards that that's expected expected from a tier one carry let's not say tier one division one yeah. carry i mean it's still a meta where the hard carry is in the focus right mm -hmm. so if your hard carry can't perform like, he won't be able to close out the game. Like, you need a certain level of confidence and fear that somebody gives into the enemy, you know? Like, like when you see this guy with five items, like, oh, my God, it's 23 Savage PL with five items. What are we going to do? This kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Like, you, you need a fear level. Otherwise, it's like, what's going to happen? Do you fear anyone black? I mean, I am crazy. I'm the wrong person to ask. So True. You, sh you should ask Tsunami. Do I fear anyone? That beard Who don't feel, I fear? <laughs> yeah. That beard doesn't feel. You have to fear. hide your power level. <laughs> as much as how even with uh, <laughs> with with this, I, like we were talking about sanctity versus X one two three. Who's the mid laner? Who's the carry in this lineup? I I don't know who I should be fearing because I looked at these True. two. I don't know if they're still trying to find their place. Lil Gun still expecting to make some modifications in how they're laning. I don't really know what the deal is. Or maybe just heroes, you know, because the, the mid laner played the Haska, but it was not the greatest matchup for him in the mid lane, so he went to the safe lane instead. Something like that, maybe. We don't know. Yeah, there are there are teams uh, throughout history that would switch up one and two. Every according, game. Yeah, one, every game were according to, yeah. to the hero pool, right? Yeah. Uh, you, you could see that even with Nigma. Well, they in the end just switched up the player completely, but <laughs> they they were switching. Uh, they switched the it up from yeah. time to time. Yeah. Sometimes a bit more than other times. Yeah. Just swap the whole thing, throw the whole thing out. Yeah, I I think that it, I was watching South America and uh, Minos Thunder Predator finally had their first match of the South American, and Minos was crushing it on Carry Tiny. I know we were very critical of four position Tiny. Did like, you go shot or? Yeah, he got Shard and Daedalus, Echo Saber, AC. Up, up the stats, I suppose, as well, early on. Uh, yeah, actually, I don't know. I didn't get to pay attention to that. Yeah. But I hope he did, because he was not rotating very much. Minos is a farmer. I, mean, and I, I doubt it, but you know, knowing him, like, he's one of the only players where it maybe could happen. Possibly. Yeah. As for three positions also, did anything get changed in 7.29b on the offlane? I feel like it mainly hit... Carry. It hit carries brood mother a little bit. Uh, Beastmaster. Beastmaster, that's true. If you consider Which him is an a mid. I don't. Yeah. I consider him a mid. Yeah. And even then, he barely got touched. So your boy Bounty Hunter. Bounty Hunter also happened got, to got him. some got some uh, respect nerf. Five percent on the. So thirty-five percent only. Yeah, it's thirty-five only. <laughs> only. <laughs> only. I mean, five percent is still big, and this is. 
this is how Ice Frog has always worked, right? He uh, <laughs> he uh, nerfs a little bit. He doesn't nerf completely. He doesn't dumpster you unless it's a really big patch. How about Weaver though? Four int, three, agi, and attack animation also got better. Like, why yeah. did Weaver suddenly need such a big buff in a B patch? Yeah, no, not sure. Actually. Because it was I actually missed, quite strong. I, I didn't even read that. Yeah. Oh yeah, Weaver yeah. got the biggest buffs, I think. Really? Because four end is basically another Shikuchi yeah, in lane. Four end, yeah, it's a, good, it's a mana region. And then you get three edgy, which is three damage, more armor, everything. Why? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's what we we're wondering. And the attack animation, you know, like it was increased by zero no, point one second. How I feel is, um, they're they're trying to force the changes of the meta in, into individual in, into some heroes. I mean, they're yeah. trying to force some heroes to 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 be played. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I mean, Weaver's sitting pretty good now on the stats board. Uh, we have seen a lot of Weaver in the major as well. So. I mean, are there any carries you feel were not getting enough love that you were surprised didn't get buffed more? Meepo. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Arc Warden. Arc Warden. Arc Warden. <laughs> it's the, it's the shard buff not enough. Now you can bounce people out and give spell or magic resistance. Uh, I, I actually, we should probably ask Black about that. Maybe Terrorblade isn't the greatest right now, but he's still Terrorblade, he's still yeah. strong. I still see him be picked. I so. mean, I am a big fan of equality. I saw AM got plus one armor, plus but, one but armor, he exactly. should have nine armor, 4.8 uh. edge again, because in Dota 1 they were the same person. They were brothers. How is this? Mm -hmm. It's not fair. Equality where? Where to give Terrorblade a blink, right? Yeah, <laughs> and, and anti major meta. <laughs> Just two yeah, heroes didn't look uh, Wait, 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 wait. Uh, uh, in, in, in Dota 1 or in Warcraft, they, they aren't truly the same person. I mean, and one guy's a, like yeah. a more demonic, yeah. but, but in the end, they're still the same. One is just more evil than the other. True. It's like true. The, my, my bad half, you know? It's like, it's like a step bro, a good yeah. step brother. Yeah. What are you doing, step bro? Why are you demonic now? It's like, uh. Great, yeah. Do we have a player comparison that we can look at by any chance? <laughs> oh. Can we compare two players? <laughs> Yeah, there we go. That's FBC a great way to get Marvel. out of this conversation. <laughs> FBZ and Marvel. FBZ was crushing it on his Timbersaw in Season 1 and then as well as in their series uh, earlier in the league. And Marvel, haven't really seen too much of him quite yet. i, I got to admit, I'm, I'm surprised that the numbers are not totally in FBZ's favor because the guy was always crushing it in pretty much every game. Mm -hmm. It's what, a GPM 175. Yeah, but less hero damage per minute. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not really a lot, is it? I mean, it's from creeps only, I yeah. think. So you get uh -huh. like, not the passive GPM, not the ones from hero kills and stuff. So. Mm. Yep, hero damage as well. I mean, I was always terrible at math in school, so like these statistics and graphs, I'll leave that up to you. You're the smart guy. I'll leave it up to Tsunami. I'll leave it up to Black. the draft. <laughs> Let's just look at the draft. So he's just dodging every conversation. I don't know today. what you're talking about, Black. <laughs> Hey, look, they're heroes. Beastmaster, obviously still first phase banned, because what was the... It's 10% less no. on stacks? No, minus 10 damage. Minus 10 damage when you, when on you look at When you look at Lil Gun, okay, I can understand these two bands. When you look at Boom, what meta are we in? What is this? <laughs> the, the cheese Lil Gun meta. Like, the, these bands you will only see against Lil Gun. I mean, I, I just... But you see Brood and Huskar, and you're like... The two, yeah. Get me out. I mean, Lil Gun, the only win so far was with the Huskar. True. Yeah, so. true that. And the, the hero got also nerfed. Uh, like Husker actually got bit. quite a few nerfs, so yeah. less. He deserves it. Yeah. He, yeah I hated that hero. But no, I hate that hero so much. There were no item nerfs. I'm surprised that like Armlet didn't get nerfed at all. So it seems like Icefrog is content with... No, no, no. You can just nerf Huskar. <laughs> yeah. no, the thing is, if you nerf Armlet, you know, like Lifesteal wasn't super broken. Uh, Rave King with Armlet was... Like the item is in a good place, I feel like. Okay. It's, it's not H like massively Husk broken. Huskar, uh, like how can you like this hero? It just annoys you throughout the game. It annoys you in the laning stage because it, it's stupid. Later on, it's also stupid. And it doesn't take skill to play. Like... I, I'm fine with being annoyed by Tinkers and Arc Wardens no, and Meepos. No, I'd take uh, a Huskar over a Tinker. At least I can end the game versus a Huskar. How do you end the game versus a Tinker? Yeah, but at least I respect that guy. He, he's, oh, okay. he's doing yeah, that's something, true. you know. He, it, it's, not, it, it's not hard, but it's not easy. Huskar is literally, you can Press play it with one, yeah, with one hand. Now, the worst sure. part about Huskar is that even his own team is scared of him because you don't know if he's, is he going to kill all five heroes or is he going to die? Or just <laughs> <them>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
pretty much. He goes in and he's like, he's at 10% HP. Is he owning or is he about to feed? Yeah, I, I, and, and I'm and looking, <laughs> looking back, looking. And, <laughs> and I don't know about you guys, but in my pubs, Huskar players are usually emotionally unstable. Oh, yeah, so for, sure. Yeah, yeah, right? for sure. Like, they have some brain damage. 99%, <laughs> it's always the Huskar player that either kills everyone and then trash talks them in all chat or just dies a couple of times and by And then bags. trash talks the teammates. Tra trash talks <laughs> the teammates runs off it. <laughs> and again, back to the draft, you see Grimstroke, Tiny, Lilgun with their plus four Tiny. They picked it twice already, hope they're going away from that now. But they won with the core Tiny, right? Yeah. 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 So stop picking plus four Tiny. It hasn't won a single game yet. Yep. Grimstroke, Shard gets nerfed. I think it's 10% less healing, 10% less damage. Uh, but the base star didn't get there. changed. Yep. Io didn't get touched at all on the B patch. Yeah. Uh, Baden didn't get touched at all on the B patch. I don't think Tiny did either. Yeah, this looks like uh, nope. Dream of Cell Io, right? Like yep. It, because of the Abaddon, it's yeah. position four. Unless it's I an offlane, a Baden, which sometimes happens. I could be a four Wisp as well with something. Yeah. But uh, most likely it's a carry Wisp. Most likely, yeah. It's also pretty good against Io. I mean, against Tiny, sorry. Because like you have two tanky heroes that Tiny can't really kill. And it justifies the Huskar ban also, because the only core IO that we saw lo lose lost yep. to the core. I'm, I'm still Huskar. waiting to see a draw against IO. I think that's one of the hardest counters against these HP region heroes. I feel like the hero overall is really strong. Draw Ranger? Right now, yeah. Oh, yeah. She got the slightly shard nerfed. As well uh, I think 5% less move speed on Frost Arrow slows. Yeah. But my. I, I mean, that spell was kind of ridiculous, too. Like, you just get slowed 60% the entire time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can't move. They, they did get rid of all these heroes that uh, can work well against IO core, but also are good if you're a support. So, the Morphling is probably one of the better ones versus versus IO. Uh, uh, as a carry, that is, on one on one matchup. Storm as well. Yeah. Good versus support IO as core IO. Uh, interesting though, we remember Mikoto Storm in, in Division 1 in Season 1. Yep. Was Where did that go? Yeah. I mean, they played it last uh, match they had, but it yeah, didn't look as scary. Nope. It was all Dream Assault winning yeah. that game. He looked very uh, timid. The camera on the left is a little bit tilted. Up. I, mean, I, I like to just see his nose. <laughs> yeah, the, the <laughs> he notes doesn't have are a more mouth. interesting. Yeah. They are afraid we can read lips. We're going to figure out their yeah, strats. Af afraid of uh, lip reading, but notes, those you can read. <laughs> <laughs> the whiteboard. The whiteboard behind. Who cares about that? <laughs> The whiteboard says, first pick Huska when you can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's banned. <laughs> Pan out center. Yeah, uh, again, like we, we looked at the offlaners. Offlaners didn't get touched in the B patch. I was surprised because I, I, I feel like, I, I guess none of them are really OP right now, but they all seem very, yeah. very strong. Very I, I feel like yeah. offlane is in a renaissance right now. I, I feel the strongest still right throughout the major as well is still Mars. Like yeah. His yeah. arena just offers too much. Until you get BKB, it's locked in there. Just the way the, the hero works, right? Yeah. Like Spear puts you out of position while stunning you. Yeah. He scales because of rebuke. The laning yeah. stage is good for him as well. Yeah. M Mars and Pango, perhaps, but Mars is probably harder to counter overall. Yeah. And you can always come back through team fights. Interesting Dragonite pickup <laughs> very early. Yep. I do like their draft, though, overall. You can, you can flex this DK on offlane together with Grimstroke. It's a strong lane. Yeah, but DK, Tiny in one team, in so oh. like if they're both core, it's going to be a little bit... Eh. Tanky, too, too tankiness, too much tankiness. Yeah, like... And I mean, we, yesterday in China, we saw it was what, DK, Centaur, Spectre, and all on the same team, yeah. and it owned. Yeah. But they didn't really have any way to deal with it here, but they're already showing like these two tanky cores right from the beginning. Yep. I'm sure version. Boom is going to... Yeah. Some some AA something like that for sure. both of these teams it would be fine right yeah. so versus the Wisp on one side some the tank breakers yeah. as yeah. I like to call them I, I'm, I'm glad you've stopped bringing up Enigma though because you were saying Midnight Pulse but I demonic conversion got nerfed so hard I feel like we're just not going to see that here I just saw Reddit threat this morning no, Enigma is unplayable yeah you, you can't it, play this it was a Reddit threat why did you nerf Enigma like that thirty seconds idle on duration fifty seconds cooldown I can't play it's unplayable yeah. man. No. I was like, okay, I you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you whining so much? I mean, you're absolutely correct. Yeah, I'm, actually, I'm actually sad. There's always uh, those players that only play one hero. You know? Oh, the Enigma yeah. spammers. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually sad for Enigma spammers. They're going to have abandoned this game. Like, I think so. <laughs> Max, Midnight Pulse, go jungle. You can... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, you can nerf anything, but usually... Uh, Eidolons and their cooldown, they had this uh, uh, symphony of life in which 
yeah. the first Eidolons die, and then the same second you spawn another set. And then they got buffed that you could create an Eidolon right before it dies. Exactly. It's great for Roshang. Yeah, but let's say, like, like, Lich was like that for like 10 years, right? Like, Lich is going to have your mana. Yeah. Then now you can't eat the creep anymore. People got used to it after a while. True. But at least he got something else. Like, and he, got, just he got the shield, got yeah. He got yeah. the shield at least or something. Yeah. Like, he got the, the pole, the sinister gaze, whatever. Yeah. And Nygma didn't get anything the, in return. The ice, ice, ice performance really <laughs> demands <laughs> the Enigma be, uh, like nerfs. Yeah. I think it was more the plus five Enigmas they tried to yeah. counteract. But... I mean, I, I can see why. Like, it was too flexible, but you know, the, the they should have just made Eidolon scale. Way. It was a strong cure. Just like, like make them yeah. weaker at level one, and then God's rebuke. Like they already <laughs> scaled pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, the like, God's rebuke let them one shot it. <laughs> you saw the lanes like Pango plus one already just kill off yeah. all the Eidolons. It's just a ha one. very hard here to balance though. Like off lane, he has such a different purpose than safe lane. You know, like, yeah. like safe lane just wins you the lane. Off lane, he's like this black hole bot. So dun, 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 dun. They do pick up the Mars. Pango is still in availability for Lil Gun. 20 seconds left for him. Pango would be pretty decent. But that draft would look very yeah, The, the only question then. is how they want to lane this now as yeah. well, right? Uh, as I said, this DK pick, I feel like kind of too messed early, up the draft. Too early. Yeah. Yeah. too early and now uh, they, they, they don't even know they want to pick. Yeah. Nine seconds left. Can, now can they're going to do some panic out. pick. Okay, Gyro. It definitely looked like a panic pick. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like a panic pick. <laughs> Gyrocopter. Gyro DK Tiny. So, so that this has to be like a support Tiny, tiny again, yeah. yeah. Which they lost with twice already. It doesn't have to be. It can be a 5 Gyro. It could be a 5 Gyro. <laughs> taking a page out of China's book. Yeah, we've seen it. Yeah, it could be. could be. Did Gyro get any changes in 7.29? No. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, the hero wasn't... Uh, and still isn't a strong carry, right? It, it's just a I saw North America support. Envy was playing Gyro. He lost that yeah. game. I think Gyro can work as a carry, but it's like a very different carry, right? Like you're more active. Oh yeah, I, we've actually, we actually did see uh, who was it? Neon, I believe they played at uh, the major. Yeah, exactly, they played carry Gyro, and they were really active around him early on. So yeah. Here we see out. another hero with a buff, three base damage. Doesn't seem like much, but we only have forty. That's quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And of course, we spoke about tank breakers. This is one of the best in the game. Uh, DK hates playing against him. So does Tiny. Yep, so now... But what Grim is good against him, right? With that Inkswell, you can dispel the lasso, potentially. Potentially. Yeah. Gotta be absolutely sure that he's not Inkswell. Yeah, you're gonna have to predict that. Inkswole. Inkswole. Inkswole, bro. Inkswole. That's a dumb name. Okay, Lil Gun, they ban out the line. Meanwhile, Boom Esports, they actually expect the Dragonite... I wasn't flexing. So what does Boom so need ink here? Ink swollen. Wait, so it's a... Uh, wait, what? Boom needs a uh, position four, most likely, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or so maybe carry even. We'll see. Uh, you can see Lil Gun, they banned out the Lion, so they are expecting the four. Yeah. What, uh, what I'm seeing from Boom is Batrider mid, Mars softly, and Ayo carry with Abaddon uh, yeah. position five. Or if they counter the mid bat, they can still swap that up as well. Yeah, they can. Mars middle is very good as well. And you can see they ban out like uh, Queen of Pain. And oh, what does Lil Gun need? The lineup looks so weird. I know. I, uh, it looks very aggressive, though. I think they're just going to ban out whoever can go I mid versus Batrider. I don't mind Lil Gun's draft overall. It, yeah. it does I, look I, I weird. I don't mind. It just doesn't yeah. look like it wins you games. Yeah. You like put a tiny safe lane core in the current patch. Current patch only I'm talking about. Carry a tiny with Gyro 5. Yeah. Off lane DK with Grimstroke. And then you get something that lanes into Batrider decently yeah, but well. But Tiny is pretty sad against Mars plus one. Like if it's like a Mars Lino or something, you're done. And also yeah. all these heroes are very sad against Core Io. None of these answer the Core Io problem. How do you get on this hero? How do you Look, kill I, I didn't say it's perfect. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he just said he likes it. I'm just, try, tr I'm just yeah. trying to find solutions. <laughs> they, they, uh, look. There are drafts, like we've seen yesterday, when you see the draft and you just don't see the synergy between them. They can't do anything together on the map. This, this lineup, like, you have options. You have the damage and you have the initiation. Lina, Lina. Lina got a huge buff as well. She did, yeah. Fiery Soul plus two seconds duration. Seconds. Yeah, Stun, bigger AoE. And ah. less mana cost. Why always these standard things? Go Lina. It's such a good Phoenix game. It is, like, sure. I mean, it's always a good Phoenix that, game. That percentage-based damage versus DK uh, versus Tiny. And they have no tech speed Wait, either. Uh, so if they pick Lina, you would have been okay with a four-position Lina? Yeah. I think the new Lina is really good. Okay. Like, Go bigger Lina stun on AOE, Lil Gun. Less stun mana. 
Actually, yeah, Lena for Lulicon maybe, because you need an egg hitter now. I guess Gyrocopter kind of fulfills egg hitting purposes, but they are going to go with a Viper. All right. 1 0 for Boom then. Let's go. <laughs> Mid Viper. Carry. Okay, so. Offlane Dragonite. Yeah. Off Dragonite. Give me the, the rundown here, Lizard. What does Lulicon need to do to win this game? They need to kill the throne. Oh. Ah. I didn't think about that. He's onto yeah. something. I think that's how it but goes. But how, how do they get to the point where they can hit the throne? Look, th their draft looks extremely toxic in the laning stage. And if they do get out on top in the lanes, maybe they can roll over Boom Esports. But the moment... But. But. Always. But. Always the but. The but. Uh, Boom Esports, they just have too strong of a team fight, I believe. Yeah, I mean, you talk about toxic, but like toxicity gets burned out by fire. I see a lot of fire here mm -hmm. from the Boom Esports. Mass Spear can be fire as well. Yeah, I, I think Tsunami, do you want to nope. save us Core here? IO. You Core know IO. my you know my policy on old Core IO. My policy. <laughs> and and in general, <laughs> Boom, yeah. I consider to just they're I have higher expectations for Boom. They were an upper <laughs> division team. It's because it's IO. Yeah, he didn't want to talk about yeah. it, but okay. Policy? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, she said the case was over. It was making it's spirit. Pun. Pun. It yeah, was already spirit. over. So I get it, I get it, I get it. Right. Lacoste, I leave the puns to you generally. Lacoste and B Cup. Can we can we get them on the horn or no? He doesn't have a brain, so he can't get Lacoste, brain what did you think of Bolacy as a pun? Is that a good pun? Uh, it's it's okay. You know, three out of five. Uh, nothing great, nothing terrible, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> how about the draft? Terrible tiny position for okay. yeah. And I don't I just don't know how how's this still a thing. You know, you have all these heroes that are in the pool that are just ten times better than the tiny, which utilize more than two actual abilities, and uh, somehow it's still there like we see yeah. it every single day position for tiny baby i don't know what it is like after a week i think we're gonna stop with it but uh, you know sometimes you need to test it see how bad it is just to stop it all right b cup we'll let you figure this out in 7.29 b sure enjoy the cast you two thank you very much coming into the game i guess uh I'll solidify my prediction. I'm going to go Boom as well. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go with Boom. Boom just seems to have like a better team fighting oriented draft. Uh, core IO, they don't have a hero that can build into Spirit Vessel either. Like they don't have anything to reduce the healing. Like even if you have someone to build a Spirit Vessel against ABBA, could be a bit problematic. You know, he can just uh, use the Aphotic Shield to remove it. So, hmm, so they, ha they have that covered as well. Yeah, and it just feels like Boom's draft from the beginning of the game is uh, going to be quite stronger. And it's also, I don't know, maybe it's just a leftover faith from last season, but I really like what Boom was doing in the previous season. I know it's a little bit of a different roster, but I don't know, especially FBZ. Uh, on this Mars, he's been pretty fantastic. Draft aside, like, I think this is one of his better heroes that he gets to shine with. And For sure. And they also added Dream of Cell, which I think is a big upgrade from what they had in the previous season. Like, he already showed that he can be that guy to rely on. Like Mikoto from the mid lane, even if he's having a bit, uh, not that good of a time. He can carry, you know, he can carry from the safe lane. Usually it was Mikoto that they were relying on if things don't go well. Well, Mikoto Storm, Mikoto Spock will carry the game. This time around, like this whole lineup seems just, just a bit more solid. Now you could tell in last season, like Mikoto had to show up every game. Uh, he was given, it, it's a lot of pressure to always be, or always having to be on the entire time. Because there are going to be games that you know, you, you're not going to perform as well. And he wasn't really given that luxury with the previous roster, well, with, you know, the previous roster that they were holding in the last season. But now, like you said, I think he can, a, a lot of the pressure feels off because Dream of Cell can really pick up the, p the pace for everything. Yeah, this top lane also will not go well for Lilligan. ABBA plus Io, they play into two melee heroes. So Tiny has a boots of speed, will drag the second creep wave, trying to... It's very hard to body block the small camp as well while you're doing it before it was much easier considering where the camp was standing. I want to see how the mid lane is going to go. Like, they just wanted to have a hero that is not afraid of the Batrider. He has Nether Toxin level 1 to outpush the lane. He has a poison attack to slow him down. Also, Dyer's Magic Stick, of course. That Magic Stick charge is already just pops it straight away. You want to have that mana sustain. 
Yeah, once you run out of that mana, you feel pretty weak in the matchup, so you need to be sustaining it quite a bit. The thing with the, the Batrider that I'm wondering is, what are your thoughts on the change to the shard? Batrider? Yeah. Yeah, now you have two charges and uh, you get one stick in a palm, which is okay. I, I don't think it's necessarily... Like, I think it's good, but there's always going to be like a better possibly item for you to go for like you still need a bkb you need the blink dagger possibly even ether lens then you might start thinking about you know getting that shard yeah it's not the same that it was where you could lasso your allies and obviously we saw that combo from specifically ig a couple times yeah, where they were using the, the old shard. one was really you know good in certain situations we've seen them like using it on the couriers connecting on the other heroes as well mikoto he's thinking about uh, Leaving that water rune, but we'll will not go for it. Six stacks on Viper, more than enough to just say, well, enough. You know, you don't chase me. <laughs> yeah, gets to sip on some cold, fresh water. I would hope it's cold. But it, it's going pretty well for uh, X123 right now. He's he's 12 and four. Like we expect, as long as he can maintain on the mana that this matchup's going to be fine for him. But over in the top lane, not really see much action just yet. It's very hard to bring down either Abba or Io. Like, the sustain coming out from these two heroes is just a bit too high. They don't have that damage. Dragonite doesn't even have a point in the Dragon Tail. So it's very hard to kill. Just combo from Tiny plus Breathe Fire is not enough to bring any of these heroes down. Maybe with the possible back toss to the tower, but other than that, like, they should be fine. Actually, Talking toss about is Kez Cute. Yeah. And it's not going to get easier either, because I would assume Kez Cute probably goes level 3 into the Aphotic Shield as well. And then, you know, you're just able to soak that damage, absorb it, and really might not even feel too comfortable going after these, these kills if you're a little gun. It's very hard on the top lane. This is my problem with Tiny. Like, you take a lot of XP, especially if you're paired up with a hero like Dragonite, who doesn't give you that kill potential. So, like, what is your role? You can try to go mid lane, possibly secure a minute four water rune, but you can't still kill anyone, because, like, introduction of the rune spawning every three minutes and then having a water rune at two and four, allows enemy mid laner to be pretty much full HP, full mana, and this is something that uh, these kind of roaming position fours don't like. Right. I'm gonna try for something up towards top, but I mean, you could already see that this tiny is forced to go back. They've got the silence onto the Dragonite. They're outputting quite a bit of damage, and there's not really much Lil Gun can do to deter them. It's just, it, it seems like Dream of Cell really does have full reign uh, of this of this lane at the moment. Inkswell coming out, and that's going to stun up the Mars. They're going to try and get a kill on FBZ, but Ace, he's out a little bit too far. They'll get the kill under the Grimstroke. FBZ still trying to avoid Sanctity. They've also brought over the Tiny. He's under the tower, throws the spear. will oh, pop a salve and TP out, out, but the Avalanche is there, and FBZ, uh, that is a very ambitious play to try and make. Oh, no way. Tiny's right on his tail. They've got to yeah, pincer him in and they've got FBZ after a little bit of time. I think for him there, the best play is to either like try to dig deep, like straight away with the Quelling Blade, wait for Tiny to use his Avalanche and then try to TP out or just say, I'm dead. You know, I I've done my job. We got a kill and I can TP back the lane this time. He needs to walk back, which is a pretty big deal. Mid lane, Tiny. Avalanche comes in, Makoto oh, tossed Viper up into six. the air. They've got the TPs coming in to try and protect Makoto. They've done a lot of damage here onto the Tiny of Hishki. Icarus dive over. They should at least get this Tiny, and it goes back to just what is this Tiny providing for you? And, well, now he's given over a kill to the side of Boom trying to rotate. It was a decent rotation. You know, Viper gets level 6. They have enough damage, but Abba TPs first. Very nicely done, Like uh, and Phoenix TPs the second if it's the other way around. Batrider probably dies there, but then again, like, this is your Tiny, who is level 3. Like, his combo got nerfed, which is a pretty big deal on top of that. Like, you just don't deal enough damage to be able to burst people. The introduction of, like, the raindrop, the fluffy hat, and everything, you neutral items. Everyone is just so tanky, Tiny can't get a kill. Dive, 
Yeah, they're looking over the Viper who will throw out that Viper strike onto Makoto who lassos up the Viper, X123, trying to survive and send it against the kill of Makoto before X123 dies. They'll also take out FBZ. Look over and chase on to Hyde as Sanctity's got another with that rocket barrage. He's got a triple kill in that exchange. It's a three for one in the favor of Lil Gun. This is a rotation that you definitely did not expect, like level 5 Gyrocopter almost fighting near tier 1 tower on a mid lane. But in this type of situation, Gyrocopter really shines, where his rocket barrage, like, you get the most out of it. There's nothing else that can share the damage, no neutral creeps, uh, no lane creeps. So yeah, he gets level 6 from that, triple kill for him. I'm not gonna say he was struggling, but uh, my man was struggling, you know, 24 CS on that uh, Gyrocopter at the bottom lane. And now at least he got a triple kill. Yeah, that really brings him back into the game. And all that comes off because X123 was trying to steal a stack in the dire side of the jungle. He gets caught doing it, still takes quite a bit of the stack, and it ends up being really beneficial for Little Gun to react to that and Dyer's come over. Is under so some good movements there from Little Gun, helping the gyro get back into the game. Only 30 CS up to this point. Yeah, there are no stacks. Stacks are being pinged out. Tiny says, you know, I'll try to make something happen. We have a gyrocopter, we have Viper. Like, these heroes are really good at taking the stacks. Also, Gyro got a bit of a buff on his flag cannon. Attack count, like you get one extra. But the cooldown got increased. But since you're gonna max it out, like, eventually, it doesn't really matter that much. Yeah, I think, obviously, earlier, not as great. End game, way better. So, one of those like buffs that I feel like Radiant is a scan. slight buff towards the back end. Oh, good scan from Radiant. They know something's cooking. Trying to see if they can figure out what exactly is cooking. Right, Come boom. over Inks. Well, boom, might be in trouble here. They'll go after Kez Q. They've also got the Viper Strike on FBZ who's trying to TP out. They've got the homie missile coming in. They'll get the kill on FBZ. Look over at Kez Q. Sanctity now with a double kill. All of a sudden, he's 6 and 0. Oh. That was such a good play. You know, scan connects. They rotate two heroes. Viper pretty much has the perfect rune there. Has a haste. Good Dick. for chasing down. And uh, once again, Mars tries to TP out. Fails to do so. Needs to walk back to the lane. Sanctity TP's to top. Yeah, I really like that because Marvel was getting chased on, and I think Sanctity certainly feels strong enough now where he can try and turn this around. I, I, that, it, boom, they're kind of scared of the gyro after that. The damage coming out from Rocket Barrage is sick when they are isolated. Mikoto still needs 100 gold to finish off his Boots of Travel. Batrider received the gigantic buff in the previous patch, the patch that hit us today morning or yesterday, whenever, wherever you are. Plus three damage increased. Ooh, that's pretty sick. It's a lot of damage. Yeah, anti-mage also, his armor increased by one, literally, literally unkillable, unkillable yeah. at the moment. <laughs> if he dies throughout this patch, I'm gonna say that you were uh, maybe boasting it up a bit too much. That's if he gets picked. I'm ready to see an anti-mage again. Now nah, that hero just doesn't feel great in this current meta. We'll see. You know, it, it's a potential last pick if it's a good AM game. Other than that, I don't think the hero is very viable. So Mars had a really good start. Now he's sitting at the middle of the pack. Those three deaths cost him quite a lot. And, and Viper towards the top. X123 having a, a really good time. It looked like it wasn't like the best lane, but he still farmed really well. He maintained his health and mana quite a bit being in that lane where it could have been a little bit of a difficult time for him over towards top though ace he's caught with the lasso throws out the soul bind they'll get the kill into the grim stroke we'll see if Lil Gun wants to go for this they've got the rod of atos picked up by the viper and they will go after kez q look to kill off this abaddon and he'll pop the borrowed time being healed up by this phoenix call downs used as well kez q still surviving pops the aphotic shield and is able to walk away being surrounded by three heroes Pretty much unscathed. A lot of sustain coming up from Boom's lineup. You have Io healing, you have Sunray, Abba with the shield, with the Mist Coil. This type of lineup really excels at going in and out of the fights, like they want to reset multiple times. Lil Gun, we've been talking about their combo with the Grimstroke. 
they have quite quite a lot of stuff. You know, they have Road of Atas, they have Viper Strike, uh, uh, Dragon Tail Stun, which is really nice. Dragonite going into Blink Dagger. I think they needed that like initiation. He pretty much has the same amount of gold as Tiny. Like ideally, you would want to have Tiny get a lane for himself for like two minutes to be able to farm a Blink Dagger while one of the heroes can potentially farm the jungle. Hey, he's not too far off of it either, so you really would like to see him kind of get pushed for farm, that's for sure. He's also a hero that doesn't flash farm. You need to use your combo to kill the creep wave. You also consume a lot of mana, so you yeah. need to have like constant clarities running. He's got eight charges on the stick. That's about it. Uh, 435 mana. Just uh, not a lot when you're using 230 for that combo. It, it's less than two combos, the full mana. It's yeah. really rough. In the morning, you were talking about how, you know, you were good at the math before, and now you feel a bit rusty, so I'll just let you do the math uh, throughout this whole game. <laughs> like, that was super quick. Like, I, I, I was listening to you. It was pretty impressive. You know, Avalanche 120 plus Toss 110, 230, like, straight away. You just shoot that out instantly. <laughs> I try, you know. Boast about my math sometimes. Makoto getting chased by a missile, and as well as the rest of the little gun, they're trying to get on him with the ink, so they're not going to land it, but they've got the call down coming in. And with the damage, it looks like it's going to be enough to take out Makoto, who will use the lasso and still die. I know TP responses. Like, guess cute, he does not have a TP on ABBA. I guess. Like, for me right now, playing Dota, it feels like, yeah, I should just have a TP because I'm, I'm kind of used to having three TPs. And if you're not dying, uh, you kind of forgot to bring the TP out. Got to have that TP. I'm, I'm just more shocked that Makoto was willing to use that lasso. Well, I guess he was possibly expecting someone to, to come. They never showed. Like, Ayo doesn't even have a point in relocate. Like, one point in relocate could potentially Radiant's save him there. Tower is under attack. Busy farming that axe. Two components away Very, from it. Like, this is super greedy. You know, I, I guess all the cores are. He just wants to be able to farm up the most efficiently way. Smoke. We'll see if this works. FBZ does have a blink dagger to work with now, so they can throw down that blink arena as well as maybe land a spear. But both teams, they're smoked up and... It looked like Lil Gun was going towards bottom, the same direction that Boom was in. They end up holding off and potentially going through the jungle, maybe even look towards getting a tier two or pressuring that tier two up towards top if they can get this kill into the Batrider. There is Vision down for the Dire, but still smoked up. They don't spot him, and now Makoto in trouble. Blink with the Dragon Tail coming through into the Batrider. They'll use that Viper Strike. FBZ, he's TPing in. It's not in time, though, so he'll stop the TP. He'll let Makoto die, and there's nothing that they can do about it. Lugan have been playing the map really well. Yeah, they're very aggressive. Now they have two Blink Daggers, which are going to be the primary target for the Inkswall. Inkswall also maxed out, which I really like. This position 5 Grimstroke, you know, not going for any kind of uh, wave cleared. They have heroes that can clear the waves, so he's just putting one point in Stroke of Fate. He understands, you know, lowering the cooldown on Inkswall is a much better choice here. Because you have two heroes that can just go in, two Blink Daggers picked up. I still feel, you know, Boom's team fight is extremely strong if they execute it correctly. Right. Mars with the Blink Dagger. Io still doesn't have Ags. Like, this is the timing that they're looking for. Get that Aghanim Scepter and then look for a fight. So a bit disconnected in terms of timing. Just needs to farm another 400 gold. I actually want to know your thoughts on this because I was talking to Black about it yesterday. Having multiple Blink Daggers like that. Yeah, like, sometimes it's really not good because... It's 4,000 gold that just gives you mobility. It doesn't make you any more tanky. For Tiny, it's a natural choice, so he has to get one. No doubt about it. For Dragonite, sure, I, I, I still feel, you know, getting a Blink Dagger here is fine. Because I see a BKB right after that. He's not going for any, like, smaller items. Spear. Arena down. They've got the Spear. Grimstroke caught. Grimstroke killed. Ace 1-2 is Three killed. What did Black say? I, I bet he said, you know, that he's not a big fan of getting multiple Blink Daggers early I think on. It, he was saying it depends on the combination. Sure. 
Because, like, right now you also have an Ink Swall to throw on, so two Blink oh. Daggers is not that bad. Didn't line up the spear. FBZ was trying to line it up. They've got the Dragon Tail coming out. They're looking for the relocate. Viper Strike thrown over on FBZ. The call down right on top of KSQ as well as FBZ. They'll get that kill onto the bars, and that's it so far. However, Makoto, he's got the lasso, and that will lasso up this DK. They'll take out Marvel, and it ends up being a one for one. Yeah, they get uh, two kills out of that. Once again, they lose FBC. Uh, Mars kind of struggling this time around. You know, once he has that BKB, they will have pretty much the only one ability that can go through magic immunity and some right clicks, of course. But the Viper Strike still feel the team fight belongs to Boom. All they need to do is farm up their Blink Daggers right now. Bat Rider going for one, skipping a Blink Dagger, which I really like. He understands, like, I go in with the BKB. I'm probably gonna tank the Viper Strike, but other than that, I should be fine. Strip Fate coming in, but they land the Spear. They got the God's Rebuke on both the Tiny as well as the Green Stroke. Toss up into the air, but both Hishki and Ace are gone real quick. Uh, that's two kills. I don't know if Lil Gun need to be given away like that. That's a very aggressive move. You know, just invading the jungle. Dire using a scan. Not the best scan, considering two heroes are dead. Like, where could they possibly be? They were also showing on a mid lane. Arena. Link, Arena, Spear, all coming through onto Marvel. They use the rod to try and lock down FBZ, but they've got more than enough damage to get the kill into the Dragon Knight. Yeah, th this is just uh, a bit of inexperience coming up from Lil Gun. They climb the high ground, lose two supports, and then try kind of defend the mid tower. Yeah. Like, you need to be very careful about the Blink Dagger initiation. So... Yeah, Aghanim Scepter IO still very powerful. You know, the, the damage, uh, the collision damage got reduced by once it's maxed out by 15. Uh, still, the hero feels very strong. This feels very similar to LBZS's play, Magma's play, I would say maybe even Vice from last season, where the early game, the laning stages, it looks pretty crisp. It looks right, you know, good, but it's decisions like the we've seen in the last few minutes. That yeah, that's pull a, them down. That's a really good comparison because, like, all these teams that were in the upper division season one that they got dropped down. The common thing was they are playing the lanes wall. Uh, it's about that you know, you know moves again after 10, 15 minutes. What happens? Like, how do we approach a team fight? Uh, like, what's our role? Who needs to do what? But the laning stage, like, they're on pair with pretty much any other team. Yeah, it felt strong, and now a couple of missteps which have brought this game back to even. Um, Marvel uses that Elder Dragon form. They're looking for a kill. They need to use this to put some pressure on, maybe under the Tier 2. But they're not finding the success that they had earlier on. I'm interested to see if that changes, because that's, of course, like I said, one of the things that some of these teams lacked in the first season. Yeah, right now you feel... They're under pressure of doing something. Gathering around the mid lane, trying to put some pressure on the tower. Dragonite still level one. Ooh, Avalanche toss onto the Phoenix. Icarus dive away into the Supernova. So that's Oh, they're afraid they're not gonna go for it. Gun back. Yeah, I mean they back off of it immediately. They've got the spear that's onto the tiny as well as the flame break coming through. Sunray right on top of Marvel. They'll get the kill onto the DK. Let's see if Boom can get any more, because they are chasing. They've got these spirits hitting down on the bull sanctity as well as Ace. But there's the soul by Viper Strike onto two. Avalanche toss coming in, but Ace, he ends up dead first. They look over at Makoto. They'll take out the Batrider. They've done a lot of damage on the X123. They should be able to take out the Viper, who's trying to survive. But they've got the Spirit Vessel on him. The FBZ and Hyder right oh, around him. region rune. Oh, dear. Sanctity. Can he survive? Ooh, Avalanche as well as the toss coming in, but it's not a toss onto the hero. It's a toss onto the Alpha Wolf. And they look over. it will take out Sanctity. Spear hits onto the That's Tiny. Be a and wipe. it's a team wipe. FBZ gets an ultra kill. Like wow. the way this fight started, uh, Mars uses Arena on two people. Tiny gets knocked out by a flame break. Anti synergy, anti pro gamer combo. And they still get uh, pretty much a team team vibe there. FBZ picks up the region rune. Like the, the sustain coming out from these heroes, like you can feel it. The percentage based damage uh, also from the Sunray against these tanky heroes once the BKBs are down. Uh, it's just too much. The Spirit Vessel, damage over time. Boom. They just want to go in, reset, maybe lose a hero, potentially, if, if it's needed, buy back and uh, come back to the fight. Because these heroes really excel at just staying in a fight for a really long period of time. Right. No, and now Boom has a 3k lead. I mean, the shift in gold has been pretty big the last three minutes or so. 
Oh, gun. Now, watching that fight, it feels like they've kind of missed the mark. They missed the timing a little bit. Giving, kind of? giving Boom yeah. a lot. You know, Gyrocopter, he had his time. You know, he shined. He does not have a single steroid in this game. He's not paired up with Io. No one's building a Solar Crest. Doesn't have Alacrity. Pretty much nothing. This is like a solo Gyrocopter. You know, one one against five in terms of, like, how you're going to buff him up. On the other side, like, you have so many things that can uh, buff up the carries. You have this Alpha Wolf, the damage, the shields, the heals coming out from everything. And now, even Makoto has a BKB, so he doesn't have to be really uh, that afraid of going in. But we could still see, you know, the potentially really good combo. Double Road of Atos, uh, double Viper Strike on two targets. Uh, they're super slow down. Which they had in the last fight, though, the double Viper Strike and everything. Yeah. They also find Nether Shawl like 22 minutes in. It's just like five minutes late. Yeah. Kind of. I guess also my question is, because we, we're seeing Solar Crest every game. Who's building? Like, who should be building it here for Logan? Gun? I, they, they don't have the hero. Yeah. Like, they just don't have the hero that can build a Solar Crest. You know, it might sound stupid because like every single time it's potentially dual. Oh, they uh, catch Hishki trying to run it with an ink swell. BKB's been popped. They get the kill and take out the Tiny. They use the arena there and catch him off guard. FBZ now unstoppable. Yeah, even if you get like Solar on Tiny, it's not going to feel that great. I, I prefer this Lotus Orb against like ABBA, uh, against all these slows, the Silence. Spirit Vessel removal, Grimstroke, he's just not, uh, he does not have a gold to actually buy a Solar Crest. Pretty poor right now. Yeah, you can see Kez cute, Abba, he knows, like, the way I'm gonna buff up my carry, it's great against Gyro, great against some right click coming up with Dragonite. Also, Dragonite has a Dragon Scale, which is really nice. Very on, on par, on lore. I'm sure he's got more than one. Yeah, petition to rename this item to Davion Scale. <laughs> Ooh, great arena. Oh boy, around four, they've got the Supernova. They've already taken out Marvel. They'll look over at Sanctity. Down goes the Gyro. The Soulmite just does not feel like it's controlling enough in this fight. They're gonna buy back here on the Dragonite. They get the kill on a Hishki. They're TPing into the tier two, but this is not a wise TP, Marvel. I don't know what you're doing here, but you're certainly in the wrong part of town, and you uh -oh. are gonna die again. The uh -oh. buyback symbol's not even <laughs> off your screen yet, and you are gone. Oh man, that, that feels bad. This is just like, I'm gonna buy back on a Dragonite who does not, he does not have a dragon form either, so that's not gonna be that great. They're also chasing down Viper, yeah. like FPZ might catch him. Spears Spear. on point, they've got the stun, X1, 2, 3. Well, your time is over in 3, 2, 1, and you are gone. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, this this game feels uh, completely over for Lil Gun. They had their own play style, they had first 15 minutes of the game where I'm gonna say dominated, but uh, this is where the lineup is good at, you know, just constant fighting. They managed to burst down Abba before he could get uh, the ulti off, which was nicely done. But then, yeah, you killed Abba, you're gonna lose four heroes, five with the buyback. Abba's fine with dying. <laughs> Certainly, if you're the only one. I think that's one of the better feelings as a five position. When you're the only one who dies and your team just wipes. It's like, oh, you guys focus me. Yeah, this is where you all chat. You know, great job, guys. <laughs> Very well five done. Yeah, Took focus me next me. time. Like, whatever, you know, you just have to... A question, question mark. mark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Roche potentially could be taken by Radiant's Boom. Like, their top. heroes really are good at fighting near the pit. They have a ton of damage. You have Io. Almost said 10 second BKB. It's a 9 second BKB now. Gonna be hard to get used to the 9 second BKB max uh, duration. You think they add back that second in some point? In some like weird way? Yeah, after 5 years, you know, we, we <laughs> still have some Dota 1 stuff coming back. BKB upgrade. You can buy a shard that allows you to have one extra second of no, just no. BKB shard. Oh. Thank you, Marvel. Appreciate that. Ah, that that was <laughs> nicely done by him. They're they're grouped up top. 
I mean, Dream Assault and Keskude certainly look like they're ready to go after this, and they're going to pop the oh, bar on top immediately. Time. They'll go after the Abaddon, they'll use the call down, but I mean, they're already running away, it seems like. They'll pop the BKB on Sectity, they'll look over at Keskude again, but the Abaddon, he's just not being taken out. They get the kill on Marvel, they've got the lasso onto the Viper. They look over to go for one, two, three. Can they get the kill onto the Viper? They've taken out Hyde, so the egg is gone, but so is it. One, two, three, no! He survives! They'll take out Ace, Hishki falls with him, they're right around Sanctity, there's nothing that X123 can do as Sanctity falls. You may have gotten away with 100 health, but the rest of the your team is gone. Yeah, they just killed the two supports, they killed an egg, they focused it down nicely, like you have to. With the Gyrocopter you still deal some of the damage, but the rest of the team is just too much damage. FBZ on the smarts, like he deals ton of damage. Desolator, BKB, he gets on top of someone, that hero is just straight up dead. Now Io, like, it's becoming even more problematic. Uh, there's so much items on Io right now, you have a 8 second BKB going into the heart. Like, they just don't have a way to deal with it. They have nothing to reduce the healing with, no spirit vessel once again, none of the heroes have any of the abilities to reduce the healing, and this is just too much stuff that they need to focus on this time around. They try to go for a play. Focus the ABBA once again. ABBA was click on that R button. Clicks it straight away. You know, fool me once. Not gonna fool me twice. Oh, certainly not. And Marvel's just not doing anything. Like, it feels like he's in the fight. He turns into a dragon. And, you know, he's trying to get through that season one arc where you try to power up and feel like you can add to the fight. But, man, it is not... Looking like that's changing just yet. Relocate Wait. right into the face of Hishki. Avalanche toss. They've got the arena. They'll land the spear. They'll get the kill. And they look for a plus one. When you said Marvel's not doing anything, I thought you were going to say, you know, Warner Bros. is doing really good lately. You know, they have to step it up. But, uh, yeah. Solar Crest down on ABBA. So that's going to be a big buff for Io in the team fights. Potentially also on Mars, because Mars is a heavy right clicker right now. Let's see if they can even defend this. They've got the blink as well as the lasso. They'll go through with the dragon tail. They'll lock up Makoto for a second, but he's looking fine. Viper Strike as well as the Aphotic Shield. They've got the homing missile coming through on a Makoto. Call down onto these heroes with the BKB pop by FBC. He's not afraid to front line right now, and they're trying to fight into him, but this Mars is way too much for them to handle. They'll look over the supernova that's not in the best place. They'll blow up the egg. They got the kill into the Viper. It's a one for one. That supernova way too far forward, but for a kill on the Viper, the trade's okay. It's just not exactly what Boom were looking for there. If you want to use aggressive supernova, then Lasso needs to be ready to just catch that one Arena, guy. Spear He's in. Oh, gyro, Sanctity taken out. It's perfect again from FBZ. Really showing why he's the anchor to this team. Hishki trying to run away, but he is slowed up quite heavily. Marvel goes down once again. They killed off Ace. They've got two heroes to fight against the five of Boom, and it really does not look like a fair fight at all. FBZ diving in deep under the tier four as it looks over as Hishki throws the avalanche, but oh, the toss will only pop the Aegis. And that's all they get out of this. Mars is ready to go, full health, full mana, and you have to evacuate your own base to try and survive. Yeah, they just don't have enough damage to deal with the tank and as the sustain coming out from Boom at the moment. Just not doing much of anything as Makoto does eventually burn out the Viper, toss into the air. Makoto falls to Hishki, who's got the Spirit Vessel on him. I'm trying to get a solo kill on this. Keep up with this Tiny. He's able to walk away from the Phoenix. But while all that's going on, top set of racks, they're gone. Mid looking like it's next on the menu. They're going to relocate back and, well, here they are, ready to go. Take out this set of racks, Sanctity. They're just falling short in these fights. They're now down 24k. It's a really tough uh, objective here to try and get something for this Elder Dragon form. Immediately in the arena comes out. FBZ again in their face with the BKB. They'll get the kill on the Hishki. They'll look over at Marvel. Marvel just crumbles, hits the ground hard. He'll die once again. Sanctity, he's trying to fight. He's popped the BKB, but there really isn't much more for him to offer. He's dead again to Dream Cell. Hishki goes in, Avalanche toss, they've stunned up a bunch, but again, the Tiny, there's just no follow-up, you don't have your cores, they'll call GG, and boom, will take game number one in what looked at the start to be decent for Little Gun, but boom, overwhelm them and really, really come through the door hard. Yeah, it's just that Boom is a more experienced team. Uh, they know how to execute it. Yeah. Uh, it looked a bit um, shaky at the start because 
Lil Gun's draft is very good at just killing heroes, and then you can feel the inexperience kicking yeah, yeah. in. They they go in, they try to take a fight, uh, two fights in a row, it just falls apart. Like, it can work, but most of the time, lineup like this is not going to work against more experienced team, because, like... They, they will have the tools to deal with it. Uh, mm -hmm. Teams like uh, Lil Gun, they will make more mistakes, which uh, team like Boom will punish it. Yeah, so uh, Boom, the experience shows. Lil Gun, they really need to figure out what the next steps are after the laning phase yep. and uh, you know hopefully come back stronger for game number two. But a breakdown, game number one, we've got the panel. Back over to you guys. Hopefully it is looked up as a learning experience for Lil Gun because the... Laning phase did go pretty well. They were they were doing well in all three lanes. But <laughs> but <laughs> Lizard, give me the butt. Yeah. You give uh, the best butts. Um give the butt, bro. Now it, it, it's actually what Lacoste said as well. It, it, that's really important. The draft like this, it, it's good in the lanes. If you play it well in the laning stage, you can dominate. You have Viper, you have Dragonite, whatnot. However, this is probably the first time they, they break apart because and Boom pretty much breaks them down because they have this superior team fight. It isn't even that great. You have Phoenix and Mars. It's not like you have five heroes that that are that are excelling at team fighting. However, a team that's the underdog, that's not ex not really as experienced, will try to push their luck all the time. They'll try. They, they won't settle. Like you won the lanes, and you got a lot of kills. They won't settle for that. They won't stop. They won't secure the triangle. They won't amass more farm. They won't slowly choke you out like tier 1 teams do. No, what they will do is they will fight you and they will chase you to the tier 2s and tier 3s. And that's where you kind of understand that you're giving your opponent a little bit too much and too room to make that comeback, which is eventually what happened here in, uh, in this game. Yeah, I think there's a lot of uh, similarities also. Like we can see from the... I mean, we obviously did China and SEA last season, and the similarities, uh, you know, it's quite scary how similar they are. Mm. Because LBCS, Magma, same thing. Always crush the lane, then come mid-game, they just don't know what to do because, how you said, you know, they're not patient enough. Like, they don't know how to build the an advantage. Just, just a steady yeah. advantage. Yeah, like they want to go 100% yeah, all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. They, they're just betting all in. They're putting all in. They, they, yeah. they don't accept these small wins. And this game, from the laning stage up to the end, is all about the small wins. When you're playing versus someone that's as good as you, or maybe even better, you have to capitalize on, on, on just these small little advantages that you're getting. That's how Dota's supposed to go, right? Exactly. Like you have like 5k, then one minute later you have like 6k, maybe 7k, and one minute later... You don't go like 5k, 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 that's not how Dota works. Because like you also only have limited resources, and yeah, we have to see how... Ligan can adjust here. But, uh, like, but this is what we're talking about, actually, now that I think it, it it's so... Like, w when you're thinking, if you're like, let's say, 8k player, you play versus a 5k on mid, 4k, 6k or even, yeah. you're going to abuse the fact that he goes to, to ham, right? Yeah, like, of course. They always go to ham. They, they don't understand. They, they don't understand that yeah. they need to chill, that they need to trade a little bit, that it's... That they can't do that. They push their uh, limits a little bit too far. A lot of that is credit to Boom, though, because I know, like, even at a at a pub level, for the longest time, I would watch pro players and I'd be like, "Why are they holding onto their magic wand until like the last millisecond?" Because a lot of times they'll die because they didn't pop it. But it's because you want to bait the enemy team. You're like, "Oh, you don't yeah. know. I'm. You don't know what your limits are. I know what your limit is, and I'm gonna push you to the limit." And same thing here. Like a phoenix may be slightly out of position, and Lil Gun's like, "Oh, we can maybe get the supernova out of the way." But then rest of boom, it's all according to plan, and they'll immediately converge on that. All according to Kikaku. Exactly. Yep, okay, Kaku is strong with this one. But yeah, boom, you know, their draft looked much more cohesive. In the mid game, the team fights looked very easy. There's just too much damage coming out from all the heroes. Team S fight is too good. Especially the Mars getting that Desolator MVP. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Gonna be FBZ. That dude was dealing hella damage. Yeah, he, yeah. he deserves it. Ultra kill in one of the team fights, and then at the end, he just walks uphill and hits the Raxes on his own. He's like, if you guys aren't hitting them, I'll finish this. <laughs> you can go relocate, chase people around. Yeah, FBZ, he's, uh, he's been pretty much the backbone the, of this. The season. silent yeah. MVP of the team for, for sure. last season. Mikoto always had like the, the spotlight and stuff, but like FBZ did a lot of behind the scenes work. And it is so scary 
this timing you get from the Desolator on Mars. Like, from a little kitten, you suddenly become like this this hunter predator kind of guy and just one hit people. It's actually insane the power spike. Why is it not viable in more games then? What made what made Deso Rush so good in this game? Uh, I mean, just the fact that they had a like, good initiation already from a bad rider. Like, okay. They didn't need it from him. And also the fact that he just had like a free lane. Like yeah. he was the top of the network pretty much the entire game, at least from his team. Uh, he just played it really well, itemized really well. And he also went satanic at the end, I think, recognizing that they have a bad rider mid lane, they need to scale a bit more. Good stuff. Yeah, so hopefully nothing too significant. Uh, sure, the draft was a little bit iffy, but really little gun just need to maybe spend some time and cool off a little bit, and they'll get an opportunity. We're going to hop to a quick break, and when we come back, game number two. Welcome back to uh, the PGL DPC SEA MVP FBZ season two, <laughs> game number two. Uh, Verse two. Lil Gun uh, versus Boom. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, what do we even say? Like Lil Gun didn't even play bad or anything. Just Boom outclassed them. 
So outplayed them a bit. Maybe a yeah. uh, couple of different bands from from Lil Gun this time around. And Boom was like, "Sit down, Grasshopper. I'll show you the way." Yeah. And if you are li going to let that IO go through, you better have a good strategy against it, right? We've seen it in the Singapore Major. This hero is he was first banned all the time. Exactly, better first be. banned or first picked mm -hmm. because he's ridiculously strong. So even after the nerfs, if you want to play against IO, you need to have a solid strategy behind that. Lil Gun had the answer previously, but it was banned out, the Huskar. Yep. So if that is your only strategy, then you're going to need to change up your bands, because Dream of Cell, I mean, I mean I, I've, I've talked about it, it's not a particularly complicated carry to play. Yep. You, can, you can whip it out. Yeah. You it don't need perfect ball placement. I think it's very hard to support, but it's carry, not so much. Yeah, you can get away with exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much how yeah. it like is. Even if you're out of position, ah, I got BKB, I got 3K health. Yeah. <laughs> As a support, there's like from the laning stage to what you're buying to how you're playing the in, in the mid-game, the relocate saves, when to relocate, when not to relocate, oh, yeah. where to relocate. When to connect the tether during a relocate. Uh, when to connect. Uh, okay, they made it pretty simple now with the uh, indicator you know, but yeah. before it was a little bit more difficult. Yeah. You, yeah. As a carry eye, you just really try to farm some creep somewhere. That's it. Or a team fight happening. <laughs> Spectre your way in. When I was playing com IO competitively, when I just started and when I was practicing him, I, I listened to the... Obviously, you can also look, right? But to the animation, but yeah. I listen to the sound that he makes to figure out mm. when's the delay. Best, yeah, 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 yeah. When's the best millisecond to connect the tether. Ah, too late. Okay. Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> let's let's <laughs> exactly. hope that Sanctity or X123 know how to play it. Or you focus too much on listening and then click on the creep with the tether, you know. <laughs> on the wrong hero, oops. <laughs> wrong hero. I, can't, I brought up the guy with the BKB. Uh, hey, that's why I'm not playing anymore. Then. <laughs> oh, uh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, they, they do it again with the tiny. They've done, done it again. If it's a pause for a tiny again, I'm actually... Well, I'm going to have to call the manager. They did let go the exact same duo. Let's see if they pick the same heroes. What did they have last game? Um, the Grimstroke. Uh, did they turn? Uh, yeah, they yeah. first picked yeah. the Grimstroke. Okay, that crow. I mean, that's a decent, better answer. On paper, at least. In, in the lane, in the lane. Like yeah. the lane is anything percentage based is in theory nice. Reaper Scythe being able to also work off a of percentage is nice. Okay, now when the Necro is, has, is showing a steady comeback into the meta. Are we going to see Pagna come back as well? Because yeah, historically, Pagna was always kind of there. Mm -hmm. like he kind of sometimes, not as often. Yeah. 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 But versus Necro, this hero used to be like first pick. Yeah. If, if Necro is in the meta, Pagna is. As I well. mean, my favorite hero against this guy as carry is just Arc Warden. Like he, you, uh, yeah. like Necro can't play against Arc Warden in the so. entire game. I mean, AA is really good. I, I'm still scared of these early pick necros that we've seen sometimes. There, there are answers. Pagna is probably one of the best yeah. ones. AA, Pagna, AA, Arc yeah. Warden is good. But something that Boom had in the last game, I love playing versus Necro 2, it's Phoenix. Like oh, yeah. You're a natural... I mean, Batrider also. Yeah, Batrider. You're a natural vessel builder on Phoenix 2. Sunray, percentage-based, magic damage. Also, Medusa one of the best. Because yep. you actually never lose health. <laughs> you just lose mana. Yeah. It doesn't... Uh, it doesn't like uh, negate you the possibility to pick Slarks and Huskars and whatnot, maybe. Yeah. No, I, I'm with you. I think they just go for the exact same draft. Get the Mars again. It's not banned out. The Batrider is banned out, so they won't be able to do that. But yeah, Mars Phoenix, why not? Yeah. It doesn't have to be an offline Necro. Could uh, they're going to ban Matt Mars now, right? They better. We thought they would ban Io, and they didn't, so. But isn't Necro really sad against Pangolia as well, though? He has a pretty slow movement speed. He's kind of just stuck in a no, man, no man's land. Yeah, I'd be down for Pango also. It's just that I, I feel like uh, Boom was really leveraging the arena initiation. So it wasn't all on the Batrider's shoulders like, oh, you got to find a lasso. I mean, they could literally just pick Mars. Kesku right doesn't now. look impressed. He's, yeah. like <laughs> he's chilling hard. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there, there are different... Uh, layers, different types of seriousness while playing a mm -hmm. game. That's like... Two out of yeah. ten. Yeah. The guy next to him, though, he, he's looking a little anxious. My yep. favorite is the, the Ramsey's pose, or his legs up legs up in the chair, and he would just be like this. I That's how you know. I, I, I can play it there for two minutes, and it's uncomfortable. Oh, no. Like, like, usually, I, I do this. There's a lot of really? players. Yeah. 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 Lot of I do that as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. This. I oh, do well. this as well. So yeah, it's, it's like the most comfortable, but you need a big chair for it. Wait, that's cool. Is that like a... It's called Schneidersitz. Turkish split or some, some in, in America like we call it Indian style. Indian style. But okay. uh, then there's also like crisscross applesauce. Is the, the, also, I've heard. Don't we just call it the scissors? Whatever. I think that is a different connotation. 
Like this? <laughs> that's, no. not what we're, that's not what we're talking about. Oh, like. okay. <laughs> yeah, see, this, is the, this is the pose that these guys are gaming in. Yeah. And the Ramsey's pose was this. Yeah. There's a lot of players with one yeah, leg like up A lot of well. Chinese players also see yeah, like that. Yeah, Chinese players, all, yeah. I've seen that a lot on the webcams. It depends on your chair. If you yeah. have a very comfortable secret lab chair, True. you can sit exactly. any way In you want In the premium to. quality of a secret lab chair, you yeah. could sit with a 4D armrest. That is also the like first chair ever I was able to sit like this because it has a big like a base of the seat. And what? you can you can pretty much retract and move the... What, what's that called? It's the 4D yeah. armrest. Yeah. Yeah. Armrests, exactly. 4D, bro. 4D. <laughs> All Back the dimensions. You can move it through time. Through yeah. time. <laughs> you can do it. Yeah. Leshrac banned out. Lycan banned out. Lycan got a handful of buffs in the 7.29B yeah. patch, but why not just wow, go for the Phoenix again? What a surprise. Again? The Phoenix against this Necro Force. Wow. And Tiny as well. Like Both of them, no attack speed. Both of them very tanky and don't like to play versus Sundray versus all the magic damage. It's now, Come on, Lil Gun. If this was China, then I'd be like, oh, they're going to pick a Marana now. But for some reason, I feel like this Tiny is just going to end up being a four position again. What about Pus 4 Arc Warden? I don't know. Lizard, is that viable? Uh, no. With, <laughs> a <laughs> with Axe? With Axe, sure. Yeah. Fountain Camp him? <laughs> I actually, I, I've heard people, like, I believe you as well like that. I, I never liked that tax. It never... It just sounds so bad. Like, <laughs> make one spark rate and then another one appears. Yeah, but then because you cast two, it's four. So ah. every spark rate. Spark I will rate. say I trust Black more on these new things because yesterday you were advocating about how good Visage Shard was, and before the game, Lizard was just like, "Oh, Black keeps recommending Visage Shard. Doesn't he know that it's garbage?" <laughs> okay, mate. And then we watched the game, <laughs> and Visage yeah, yeah, yeah. Shard I, completely I, I, owned. I was I was proven wrong in that game. <laughs> Coming, Ready ever com happen? Uh, coming from someone that has like 800 Visage games, <laughs> I should probably know better, but uh, it, it looked pretty solid in that game. However, in the next game, it looked trash tier. Like, it didn't do anything. Sure, yeah. So it but depends it on the Visage's game. It wasn't fault. Yeah, but in the first game, I, I, I could argue that no matter... It, it, it's a good shard. It's a better than before. However, in the first game, whatever he built, he'd, he'd have it back. So. I, th I think it's just the hero, man. In game two, his team, like they, they were pretty... Doing pretty poorly, you know, but that visage was owning anyway. Yeah. So. Like I think a lot of people would pick up the serum. Position four visage is yeah. probably back. I actually saw it yesterday as well. In good uh, stuff. In people started picking it up in pubs too. Yeah, it, it's it's gonna be yeah. sad times for pubs. Man. I, in the last few patches, I played it on offlane a lot. As long as you have a brawler that's next to you, like Tusk, Tiny, whatever. Mm -hmm. There is no way no you lose that piece. lane. You just you just <laughs> you just get a couple of mangoes and you spam out versus soul anyone. assumption. Soul assumption. You just spam it. You don't go grave chill first. You just go soul assumption first, yeah. and you trade instant. Oh, you were saying centaur also for the double edge gets your yeah. instant soul exactly. assumption charges. Exactly. Very good. Oh, if anyone's lineup. wondering why we're not talking about the draft, it's because we already know what's going to happen in the boom <laughs> draft. <laughs> However, undying is a decent answer to Mars. Now they can pick up another hard yeah, carry. Snapfire to Phoenix, sort of an answer. Wait, it's so solid. It's, uh, yeah. I just want to see a mid tiny this game, please. And Snapfire, four, Necro off lane. Undying five. Yeah, they lo might looks decent enough. Don't do any I like weird it. stuff like mid Snapfire, post four tiny. No need to do that. And I would say that Undying five and tiny carry actually do quite well against a Mars. I would feel. Yeah, I mean, could be tiny carry as well. Untying uh, overall just does, don't put does really well versus uh, Phoenix and Mars. Both yeah. of them are strength, mm -hmm. so you should have. Uh, They're laughing a lot. Yeah. Boom is having a chuckle. Yeah. Actually, everyone in oh. Boom is strength right now. The no matter where you go, Undying is going to be balling. The problem with what we were just talking about is, yeah, he's strong in the lane, but later on, versus Phoenix and Mars, you don't com accomplish a lot. The tombstone looks pretty solid in this game. You don't have a way of uh, dealing I mean with they, it. They do have to overcharge, though, yeah. which is always super annoying. Like, I always just like, uh, I'm going to deal with everything you give me. And I, I know. Don't. Can't find the answer. Yeah. And they didn't pick any of the other things that we were recommending, yeah, the I, AA. I, I'm going to tell you right now, like, even though Mars is a little bit annoying, Drow Ranger looks legit here for Little Gun. They have a lot of heroes to protect her. They have a good initiation, good front line, and they have no you jump would, you on boom. You would pick her into Mars? I mean, it's, as I said, it's like not the not the best, yeah. but like you crush the IO, you crush the, the rest of the lineup pretty much. You don't see the mid laner as well on boom. They could pick some spirit that can get on top of you easily, right? Wait, boom is going to last pick this game, right? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. What could they be picking up here? 
Perhaps a storm spirit. I think it'll just ban out some uh, invoker ban. I guess more team fight. Active heroes. Meanwhile, boom, just banning out all the like they're literally banning out all the Imba, right? Like, like Huskar, Broodmother. Uh, I don't know why they ban out Lycan, but okay, they ban out that. Lycan's Imba. Timber and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's not balanced in a bad way. I mean, you've played a ton of 7.29 B games, haven't you, Black? Yeah. Patch dropped. You started grinding it out. Yeah, in the middle of the night too. Yeah. <laughs> what patch? My alarm started ringing. Wait, who, who's the that? Signal. Uh, the look, black look signal. At, look at Undying on the side of Lilgan. Literally yeah, does nothing. <laughs> no, no, he does team fight damage <laughs> and tower damage. You can see in yeah. small. Spec. How does he do that? <laughs> Yeah, not sure. With an undying ult, it gets 150 damage. <laughs> 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 the the flash call and ult right now. Uh, when was it changed last time? It was 7.27. 7.27. Because uh, some heroes, you just can't get away from him. If he has yeah. that flash goal, and I mean, he slows for like 40%. Yeah, it's, it's, good. It's, it's really it's good. It's impossible to yeah, run away from him. And the damage amp works on Roche, so you can take Roche like, surprisingly quick with And undying. the damage amp works on towers. No, it doesn't. I wish it did. That's why <laughs> like he was saying tower damage, and I was just like, wait, does undying do tower damage? Does he amplify it? That would be so good. That would be so good. On a side note, though, I had a pop game yesterday with level a tiny. Okay. He five hit the Rex. <laughs> Like, was a core tiny, he five with the Rex. Did he have the shard? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Because I was like, wouldn't he have had to pick up a yeah. new tree at some point? And level 15 also gives 15% more bonus damage. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's the casual leveler tiny it's coming so through. <laughs> <laughs> it's so dumb. All right, little gun, you got 10 seconds left. What are you going to pick, boys? You're going to pick a hero that kind of covers your bases? Oh! They go for well, it. I'll I mean, I did say that. You did say it. Post for Aqua. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. All right, so... They banned out all the imbalanced, all the heroes that can kind of take over the game and win on their own from Boom. They left one I mean, through, though. I they left the arc. So. Okay. I feel like this is just a super good Storm game. Yep. Like, pick Storm, win Dotka. 100%. And it's Makoto. Yeah. Unless if he lost it's, his it's Storm Puck confidence. Band. Yeah, Puck is banned. Puck is banned. Storm. Void Spirit's around. Storm makes the most sense. Doesn't lose lane to any of those in mid. It means Tiny is... Wop. Okay. Uh, I, I don't like that as much. It's, yeah, Mikoro definitely looked better on Storms, but... but Not this lane, season. Offlane, Necro, post for... Oh, it's a mid-tiny. Let's go, man. Finally. So, I guess, Quap versus Storm. Quap, more damage, less pick-off potential. Who do you think scales better in the late game? Because if they don't win early... A Storm would probably storm scale. Like, well, then yeah. I don't get the Queen of Pain. Yeah. yeah, I mean, neither do I, but... I mean, it goes pretty well with Mars. Like, you have a like, huge team fight now, right? Which is pretty good when you have an IO draft sure. because he doesn't offer too much it's of not that. A, it's not as greedy as Storm. Maybe yeah. it's a little bit easier to fight early on with Quap. Okay. Yeah. But but <laughs> we're going boom. But there are no. We buts here. did you just speak for Lizard? Yes. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he spoke, for, he spoke for me also. Yeah. Actually, it's, it's, <laughs> mind it's gonna be boom for all yeah. three of us. Like we we had this connection, the mind. Uh, at least their draft is uh, Lil Gun's draft is less weird than no, there's their game a chance. One there's definitely a chance. They have this arc ward, and if he rolls I, I feel out like it's control. gonna get run over though, right? Yeah. Like this IO is just gonna relocate on top of him. What are you gonna do? Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna kill the IO? No. Nope. Yeah, but Boom don't push particularly fast. None of these heroes really deal tower damage. But they die very well, which yes. Arc Warden hates. That is true. I feel like this draft is still better uh, from Li Lil Gun it than is. in the first game. They definitely did show improvement. They have good uh, scalability. But. but but let's but see what the cost But and Lacoste also have to weigh in. Peacock and Lacoste, what do you got to say for yourself? Can you weigh in, please? Well, you know, put some weight on Boom once again. I like the way they play. Lil Gun, I think they have a better chance in this game because it's a mid tiny, so it's la at least not a, you know, hero that uh, uses two abilities throughout the whole game. And, uh, yeah, Arc Warden seems decent, but against Ayo, Queen of Pain could be a bit tricky, but should be a bit more interesting game. I don't think, like, the game's just going to fall apart after 15 minutes. All right, yeah. we'll see how it all pans out in game number two with Beacop and Lacoste. Thank you very much. Coming into game number two, you know what's crazy? You had my exact thoughts word for word. It was exactly what I was going to say. I kind of doubt it. <laughs> I'm going to... Uh, next time I'll write it down, and then, you know, we can compare what you wanted to say. Okay. Well, I guess my creative writing's got to get better at some point. Do not Try to, be you know, make it sound decent. If, they, if, they, if we get a pause, I'll, I'll write a little bit. I'll get a little uh, explanation on my pick. But I'm going to still predict boom. 
yeah, just boom, just look more, more solid. Uh, this time around, they have what one, two, three, four strength heroes against Undying, so Undying should have a decent time in the laning stage. No one wants to, you know, play double strength lane against Undying, uh, so they will have uh, this mid tiny. He gets more levels, actually scales as a hero, is not just Avatos. I think Toto. it just comes down to seeing if, you know, Little Gun are going to be comfortable after that 15-minute mark. I'm wondering if their game, like, the way they were going to play is similar to last game, because their lanes were, were fine. And I'd like to see them find more success out of the laning stage, 15, 20 minutes. They don't fall behind again. Marvel taking a lot of damage. He's actually just going to TP over to the tier one of the off lane, but Hishki and Keskyu go back and forth. A little bit of damage here and there, nothing more. Again, Dream is out back on this IO. They have four of the same five heroes from the last game, just instead of Queen of Pain. They had Batrider. Queen of Pain provides uh, a bit more damage, a bit more team fight, earlier rotations possibly, especially the TP rotations. Yeah, because they're playing into Undying Arc Warden, which is a, kind of a tough lane with two strength heroes. Hyde starts with Boots of Speed, wanted to drag the second creep wave, but Ace 12, nicely done, just pulls the lane back. And, uh, you know, it's still good, but he will be able to get the DKs off, uh, try to zone them out. Like, it's, it's very hard for these two heroes to play into Undying. He has three mangoes to work with, almost level two. And he is just... 24 stolen strength right now. Feels great as an undying. FPZ only has 380 max health. Now it's back to 520, but it was 380. Now he's just standing forward. We've seen this a lot from undyings. Just put the pressure on, stay forward, make them feel uncomfortable in lane. We'll see if Ace 12 can really follow this up, follow these constant decays, because eventually. The mana is just not going to be there for you. Yeah, you've got two mangoes. You should be able to sustain a little bit if you can get yourself some, your hands on some clarities or maybe get a kill, bump up that gold a little bit. But, you know, things get a little bit more difficult where he runs out of mana. Sometimes we'll see Undying sacrifice themselves to the tower or the tier two, something like that. Maybe afterwards, they TP over mid. See how Ace-12 approaches this. Hide, he blocked the small camp. Let's see if that gets divorted. Ace... 12, he knows, because Phoenix was trying to fake it on the top lane, like, nope. uh, still, like, body block, go into the... Oh. Four people disconnected. All the Make same it five. Time. Okay. So, yeah, he was trying to fake it on top as Phoenix to be inside the small camp. But uh, this ward is going to get spotted. Because they need to pull the lane back. Like, our cordon is not going to feel comfortable playing this deep in. There is always a kill potential when enemy safe laner, like position 5, when uh, he goes to try to pull the small camp, especially if it's a stacked one, you have this like window of opportunity to just go and play aggressive on him. Unfortunately, Hyde is still level 1, so it doesn't have a combination dive plus fiery spirits. Yeah, we... We saw Hyde, especially last game, play, play pretty aggressive early on as the Phoenix. He moved around quite a bit, used that Icarus dive, got them a couple kills with the help of the Spirit. So I'm interested to see how Hyde goes about this. So just unfortunately level one. But yeah, Ace-12 is going to get this D-Ward, like you said. Over mid, Makoto Sanctity. The matchup, at least for right now, is certainly favoring Makoto. Who would have guessed? Of Queen of Pain against Tiny. I think if you ask anyone, you know, they would say it's a good matchup for Queen of Pain. And now with the introduction of the runes, it allows you to play even more aggressive, like have that extra mana sustain. Still keeping up the point, just in case, you know, maybe he doesn't need the blink to close the gap. Could potentially have another point in Scream of Pain for some extra damage. Like, it's very hard to get this bottle regeneration going. Since you're playing against these damage over time coming up from the Shadow Strike. Let's see. Ooh. Hide. Oh, oh, he's going in. He, he, he wants to deal some damage. You know, he wants him to pop that Water Rune. Water Rune plus Fairy Fire. It, it's a lot of heal. 
you know, instant heal. Maybe water rune shouldn't be like instant heal. <laughs> Once you, you, pop you it think from it the should bottle? be more heal over time? Yeah, I, I think so. It would be a bit more balanced. Because, like, you dive a hero with water rune bottled, and then he pops a fairy fire, suddenly, like, snap, you get a double kill. Right. And we'll see if that ends up being changed a little bit. Sanctuary, though, still, you know, he's throwing out avalanches, but he's playing pretty aggressive considering he's only got himself about 300 health. And before that, a little sip right there. Yeah. I'm playing on the edge, in my opinion. It seems like they're having some internet issues. Another disconnect from Undying. What they can do right now is potentially, like, Phoenix could rotate it to the top for a minute water rune, secure it, steal it from Tiny, while Queen of Pain goes to the bottom lane, and then you kind of steal it from Tiny. So you can keep playing more aggressive. No one's about to die. Like Undying could potentially suicide, refill the bottle for Tiny, but that's it. Then you're forcing a rotation on a mid lane, which leaves Arc Warden vulnerable on top. Yeah, certainly don't want to leave your Arc Warden vulnerable in the top lane when you've got, you know, Icarus Dive can come out. A, a well placed spear makes sure that if you catch it on X123, he's dead. So Undying, you've got to figure out where you can be here because if if our Gordon's game doesn't jump off the bat I don't know if it's going to be that easy for him I think he can still you know be in the jungle you just need someone to play Dota uh, Snapfire is kind of not that hero Nader is undying you also have this slow sluggish Necro Someone else needs to rotate. This hero is not good at rotating. So right. it's going to be a lot on tiny shoulders to just keep them in the game. Ace. He's getting chased. These spirits are hitting. He's burning out and will die. Hyde getting an easy first blood. Yeah, you can't spell chase without ace. You can, but, you know, the way you say it. <laughs> You're like, wait a second. <laughs> it took me a second. <laughs> 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 All right. C H A C. Sure. Yeah. You got it. Sanctity. All right. You know, I'm mean, just comparing the tinies in my head here, from what we saw in the last game and what we're seeing now. Like, it still doesn't feel like tiny. Obviously, the matchup's not good for him, but it just doesn't feel like he's impacting at all. He needs to rotate. Like, he needs to pick up a six-minute. Uh, Rune possibly gank the side lane. Ideally, haste on top. Lord Gaben, if you're listening, if you want to help out the uh, little gun, spawn it on the top. Tiny picks it up. He ganks the top lane. Because it's going to be tough. You know, you can already see. 33 11 against 16 and 4. This is the second healing salve that he needs to bring just to stay full HP. Ooh. Let's see where the rune is. It is top. It's an invis rune. Okay, at least it's something, but still very low on HP. He's checking if they have any sentries. We'll still rotate it to the top, which I really like. But the lane is uh, pushing in, so he's not going to have that much space to work with. Sanctity wants to make a move here. This is potentially dangerous if it's not played perfectly. Avalanche toss with a soul rip, and it was, so... There's the quick kill on to hide. Give Sanctity something back, which I mean, it didn't need to be a haste, I guess. Sure. The invis is also fine. Like I, I thought it said, you know, ideally B cup. No, no. I wasn't saying that at you. I, I was surprised, you know, the, the invis ended up working out because, boom, I thought had that information. So I expected maybe hide to be a little bit more in a safer position. Than well, that. maybe they were hiding the information from him. It's true. I, I'm always trying to get one back. I can't, I can't think of one off the top of my head. It doesn't have to be the one straight away. Necro is level 6, spear top. That lands on X, 1, 2, 3. Fake hype, nothing happens. But Not yet. Necro on bottom, playing aggressive. Like, if they rotate one hero to the bottom, it's a potentially a kill. You, but you need to be careful with the Reaper side this time around. A lot of heals coming out from, like, potentially Io's, Magic Wand, Abba. Miss Coil plus a Phonic Shield, and then, like, you don't get the kill. Ooh, Rita Top, and his there Spear is, again. Arena. Icarus dive over, and with the ult from Makoto, they'll get the kill. They'll look over at Ace 12. Can he survive? Doesn't look likely as the sun rays right on top of the Undying. They've got the Scream. They'll burn him out. They'll get the kill. Makoto with two. That's a good rotation. And, uh... 
really well done by Makoto. Because this opens up the lane for the Mars, makes things difficult for the Arc Warden moving forward, because it looks like they're going to lose this Tier 1 top, too. And they lose it. Tier Radiant's 1 tower top tower without, you know, heroes who have any kind of damage. They're not even playing with the Catapult. It's a rough one. You know, now Arc Warden needs to be in the jungle, farm the Midas. He's thinking about going back to lane. They even popped the Glyph. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Ooh. All right, there he goes. Like, he can't show. Like, th this is a bit problematic for Arc Warden. If someone sticks around, they have one Observer Ward that scouted the Queen of Pain getting out of the area, but still needs Avalanche to be in jungle. Toss. Because Q getting blown up by Sanctity. Now he's moving around and he's starting to find his way back. But uh, man, he's still down 1,200 compared to Makoto. Oh, digging up a bounty rune. Perfect. Not, not, a, not a bad feeling at all just to get the bounty rune. First dig. Oh, first dig bounties. Like, hell yeah. I think that also is a, a little bit of a bait because then you end up holding onto the shovel too long. Thinking that you're just going to get bounties more and more. Well, someone needs to keep the shovel all the time. Like, this item is just too valuable. Ooh, Avalanche. Now the toss coming through. Dream of Cell hit with the Reaper Scythe. And that will shut him down. But they've got the arena down on two. This is under the tower. They're looking for maybe more damage and uh, another rotation. But nobody else coming over. And these three heroes just don't have enough. You've got no ult available for Makoto. He doesn't really have a lot of mana to work with. So he doesn't make the rotation. And... The arena was nice, but there was nothing more. Oh, oh he gets he another one. Cute. This Tiny's starting to really go off, and I think Boomer kind of giving him a little bit more than he should be able to grab. They drop down to Tombstone. They've got the Spear, though. Lock down the Tiny. They've got the Sonic Wave. Sanctity, he still survives, though. Fire Snap Cookie lands on a two, and they should get that kill on Makoto and will. Icarus dive over. Sanctity burning out. Finally goes down, but it takes so much from Boom just to get that kill. And Hyde, eventually, he'll be ripped in half by the Soul Rip of Ace-12. Good rotate. Like, they already used Mars Arena, so there's, like, no real damage coming out from that. Tiny, some good rotations. Like, you can feel the difference from position 4 Tiny and from kind of a core Tiny. It's still not maxed out, you know. It's Avalanche level 4. Toss was level 1 in the previous fight. But you're gonna feel the difference. Like, he can't burst the Queen of Pain. She's not uh, a tanky hero. Even though you have a raindrop, you're still very burstable. Right. Man, if the, the Orchid timing is decent, you could see Makoto really wreak some havoc. But the more it gets slowed down, I think Will Gun could start to see them succeed more and more. He's just trying to get a stack if he can. Should be easy. There it is. Radiant just, Necro, quietly, it feels like, is top of the net worth for the Dire. Arena down. Spear lands onto the Arc Warden. They've got the Supernova. So we're trying to keep X123 alive. But they'll get the kill onto the Arc Warden. They look over at Ace-12. He's cut down to Ace-6. And now they're right on top of this Snapfire. Fire Snap Cookie, that lands on a Makoto. Marvel, though, that just puts him in a bad position. They've got the, the Mortimer's Kiss is coming in, but Ishki, he stands still and just eats the damage from Hyde. Reaper Scythe is in. Oh, it doesn't no. do anything. It actually just heals up the Abaddon. Marvel falling. Sanctity looking like he might be next on the list. They've got a Spear available. They'll land it. God Tribute to follow it up. Full Heroes here and another kill from Makoto, making it a double. And I believe a full team wipe. Yeah, it's one, it's one of those Reaper sites, like one of those spell usages where like, I better try to use it before I go down, and then you end up... I mean, Necro, he is... Well, if you read the description of the hero, it says healer, so he healed the Abaddon there. Wow, good spear. Actually connects on the hero instead of the clone. They burst him down so quickly. The also, looking perfect. at the Snapfire's build, like, she put... Extra points in Lil Shredder. It's like 113 build. That's normally. That's normally not normal. Yeah, I feel like you'd see that. Not. Nah, you don't of the see time. that. I, I don't know what the, the thinking behind. Because it doesn't scale in terms of like attacks. Yeah, you're playing against Phoenix level one. Lil Shredder will kill the egg. You can solo kill the egg, but it doesn't scale. It's just uh, no six fixed damage stacks. 
don't need it to be higher than level one. Exactly. Hmm. My house. Definitely something I'd like the answer to. And they didn't even get the egg. You know, he tries to position himself in the right way, but that supernova still goes off. I'm just looking at Hyde. He has this trusty shovel, not using it. Assassin foul, please okay, use it. Marvel in some trouble. There's the spear. It'll land. Makoto now dominating. Things started slow for him, but he's really started to pop off in terms of just the last few minutes or so. Oh, man. Shovel still available. This this is not efficiency. <laughs> oh, Come tiny on. Tiny again now getting caught trying to TP, but the centaur that's dominated from Dream of Cell will stun him up, stop that TP. Sanctity now dead. <laughs> Boom, they're all over the map now, making this really tough for Lugan. At least Tiny has a Blink Dagger, so he can be the one making the moves he needs to play with... That's my problem. Like, who does he play Dota with? Yeah. Undying, not the hero that can rotate that easily. Arc Warden just wants to farm the jungle. Like, he, he needs to be in the triangle. Necro, very slow. Just brown boots. 325 movement speed. It's like, you need a Vin Lace. Or you need to upgrade the boots on this hero. Otherwise, you, you don't feel like you're moving at all. Still gotta use that well, shovel. Now, now I get it why he's, you know, uh, maxing the Lil Shredder, because the team name is Lil Gun. So, you know, okay. all the little things. They have to get maxed. Sneak attack? Sir, there's no other skill that has Lil in it, right? No. I can't think of anything. Just a Lil Shredder. A Lil Gun. It's the collab we never knew we needed. Hide using that shovel finally. Mike problems coming in for Boom. Seems like they're communicating well though. Phoenix going into the Spirit Vessel. You've got Mars FBZ looking for BKB. You've got the Orchid now available for the Queen of Pain. Like these BKBs are going to start coming out, and I think things for a Little Gun just get really dangerous. Certainly super difficult for them to bring it back down this much already and you're gonna hit that power spike with multiple bkbs and the ags coming out from the io uh, of dream of cell yeah, i'd slow down their b cup like bkbs are not gonna come in the next uh, you know few minutes going to pain just finished orchid io still need some time to farm up that aghanim scepter like phoenix will have spirit vessel that's a big item you know that's a huge item against necro the healing the overtime Ooh, damage you know blink he blinks it aggressively and it's really far forward fire snap cookie mortimer's kisses makoto just kind of giving up his life, and uh, that's an aggressive blink with no vision to back that up. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Super unnecessary to go in that far. Okay. Uh, <laughs> especially with using a blink. Blink got uh, buffed, especially at the early levels, but still, you know, uh, a bit of unnecessary move there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So... 1150 gold needed for this Ags for Dream of Cell. You've got the Maelstrom picked up by the Arc Warden, who's starting to rise up the ranks in terms of net worth after what was a pretty a subpar laning phase. But he's got the Midas. He's recovering. Has that Maelstrom going into the boots travel, really trying to open up where he's able to farm and maybe get towards the top of the net worth. Dyer's Makoto back to that spot. I don't know if he wants to blink in here again, but being nearby, it's certainly a risk if he were to do so. Blink Queen of Pain, once again, farming aggressively, at least this time around. She has haste in the bottle, so could potentially get out of the trouble. Yeah, so it's not like an end-all, be-all if he does get caught in a bad position this time, if he can haste out and leave, or haste in and blink away. He's got options available towards him. But even though this is not a position for Tiny, he didn't start as a position four. In terms of net worth, he feels like uh, kind of a position four slash three. Yeah, I guess the difference would it be right now is the experience. Yeah, that's pretty much the only thing. But I'm not sure that's enough. And they do get the scan. But nobody committing over. I've got all five heroes here towards bottom for Lugum. 
Meanwhile, towards top, I mean, Boomer looking to take a tier two. Cut the creep wave, put some damage on. They've got these creeps in. They're ready to go and take a tier two tower. Can they take it quickly enough where they can rotate back? Bottom becomes the question because well, Gun, they've set up the same way. They've got five heroes here ready to go and take a tower pretty quickly. First TP's in from Makoto blinking back. Got more and more coming in. So they take the tower. They'll look for the relocate. They put the tombstone on the high ground. So, well gun. They're ready for this. The question is, do they make a move in or, or not? And they'll just take the tower. No team ready to or willing to initiate. Yeah, it's just going to be a trade to tier, tier 2 for Tier 2. Potentially, next thing, they can go inside the pit. Io has Aghanim Scepter done. Phoenix still level 10, would love to, you know, get that ulti to level 2 so the little shredder just doesn't kill him instantly. So let's see how this goes as the game's really quieted. Who, who does this benefit, the quieting down of this game? In terms of scaling, like, yeah, it's very annoying to play against Arc Warden, uh, Siege in the high ground, especially if you don't have that much uh, tower damage, which they don't. I want to see if uh, FBZ once again goes for that Deso, so that's going to help out. Yeah, he has that one queued up, Ace 12, getting cookied, but uh, Ooh, they're spirits? just too speedy. Yeah, get the kill onto Ace 12. And Io just can really hurt, given the opportunity. Like, Necro is annoying to play against once he gets a couple of dispel mechanics on him, like Guardian Greaves, uh, Lotus Orb. Uh, he's super tanky. The damage from the Heartstopper aura is insane in the late game. But still, I feel like, considering the amount of the farm, the advantage that they have right now, a boom lineup is just going to be super scary. You have this percentage based damage. Arena, Arena, down. Arena nice Ooh, toss. Good toss to get Hishki out of there. Is that all they're going to go for? I mean, they relocated. They're going to be relocating out. Radiance yeah, that was pretty pog. The relocate will send them down towards bottom. It feels like Boom want to make a move. Tombstone. That comes out. Both teams get an Observer Ward. Mortimer's kisses. That just gets expended and, okay. and they get nothing out of it. And it's problematic because their only stun is pretty much tiny. You can't rely on a cookie to just be a reliable stun the way you initiate. Also, if you're standing further behind, that means that uh, you can't land the good Mortimers. And if you're standing further behind, you can't use the snap cookie. Arc Warden getting chased for a split second. Wondering if FBZ is going to commit to this blink dagger. He has enough gold, but he also has Deso queued up. And there it is. Okay. Now he's got the blink dagger. All right, that works out. Now they've got another way to initiate. Don't have to rely on Queen of Pain put going into the front line. Going go inside the pit. Seems like it's not going to be contested. Dire using scan. There are also smoked, but thinking about going for a kill instead of contesting the Roche, so this is going to be a freebie. A free Aegis here for Boom. Nobody coming over from the side of Little Gun. And then an illusion shows up, but it's just that, an illusion, because there is no game plan here for a Little Gun to come over and stop this. Aegis picked up by Makoto. They get Roche, they get an Aegis, they're still up 7k. The thing that's going right for Little Gun right now is that they have opened up enough space for Arc Warden to be top of the net worth. So I still think he needs a bit more, but he they've always certainly opened up needs the map. more. The, the, this <laughs> this never is the feeling about whenever you play a hero, you never feel too confident playing. He's going into BKB next item to be able to just uh, go in and uh, make Spear himself lands. more comfortable, you know, against all this magical damage that they have. Getting outside of the arena on top of that. It's an early BKB. Like, the, this is, like, usually you want to... Oh, Arc Warden. Getting chased there. They have the TPs coming in. The Mars wants to get there. There's the arena with the spear. It will catch the Arc Warden. Hishki looking next. He is gone, and the Reaper Scythe just not going to do enough. Really doesn't do anything. They're going to go after Marvel. They should have this kill. Should be a, a potential team wipe. 
Sanctity's trying to run, but this team, they're right on your tail. Oh man, MPZ. MPZ is exactly where he needs to be. Like, even if you think you know the perfect positioning, you don't, because FBZ does. Like, this, this has just been an amazing series so far for FBZ on his Mars. 3-0 and 10 in the second game. Like, in the first game, he had a good start, died a couple of times, but still managed to recover and just uh, take over the game. Yeah. Now they're going for the high ground, no arc for them for five seconds. These kisses, kisses feel like yeah, they're just zoning being thrown kisses. Out. Yeah. A lot of zoning tools. Like there was also Reaper Sight used on Phoenix. They tried to burst him with the tiny, didn't manage to do so. Aegis plus Arcane in the bottle for Quap. Tempest double. That was um, a quick one. Effective. It's just. I, I don't know how you can justify oh, giving no, FBZ. His courier died. Mox. It was a full BKB for Queen of Pain. That's big. Two and a half minutes without it. But still, at least he has Aegis. Yeah. They know there's no Reaper Sight, there's no Kisses. There's not really much in terms of uh, what Logan can throw. Maybe they don't feel comfortable going without BKB. 10k comfortable lead here for Boom. They don't really need to be forced into doing anything more at the moment. You don't really want to give Arc Ward in more time, but I think they're comfortable at the moment considering they killed Ark Warden really quickly. Like, they have confidence to just go and fall back, take some time, and look towards the next fight, get this next item for whoever needs it. Ark Warden's still very burstable. BKB done. But the damage is still pretty limited. Like, you still need to be able to farm that Mjolnir. Mjolnir received the buffs two patches in a row, so that item feels good but still you know you need to get it and, and like just going for the high ground against the arc warden is probably the most annoying thing in dota maybe right. you can add a treant up there possibly the underlord maybe a fisher but uh, yeah you also have this like relocating ability like toss you you need to be aware of that being tossed into the tier threes possibly tier fours so I can understand why Boone does not want to go and uh, just try to like end the game considering how far ahead they are. They're respecting the the toss, they're respecting the arc warden. Yeah, I think that's very fair to do. Sometimes we just see teams give too much respect, but I don't think that's a, a, the case here for Boom. It should be fine coming into the next fight. They don't have a lot of time left on the Aegis. We'll see how they use this for Makoto, if they do it all. Because 18 seconds, can deliver that BKB over. Deso finished off for Mars. A lot of gold saved up for Queen of Pain as well. 2k more. So they're going to smoke up here on Boom, just extending that lead. I mean, strictly farming, they've gone from 10k to 13k, so they're really bringing it up. Makoto... He's looking for Sanctity, and actually blinks back towards this Necro. They'll go instead towards Marvel, get a quick kill. Ace 12, cut down again, and they're going to get gold from this Tombstone. And things look like they're going really well for Boom to finish this one off. Sanctity, there's not really much place for him to run. He does get whipped. They're going to try and speed him up. Makoto looks over now at, at this Snapfire, but they, they land the Arena. And he tries to get out. They'll still catch Sanctity. He they look over the Tempest to double. With. And there's nothing that they can do on the side of Lugan. They're trying to get these heroes out, but they're just trying to get these heroes out. It doesn't feel like they have much more than that. That being said, Hyde ends up dead. And there's the ult coming through from Makoto. They'll get Hishki, and that Tempest double will run out. Boom, only losing that Phoenix. And they're cleaning them up, but still dealing no tower damage. Like Lilgan, you can feel they are afraid. They try to get outside the base. <sighs> I can understand, you know, the situation they're in right now where you do not want to get outfarmed. If you're just holding the high ground, eventually you're going to get outfarmed. The second Roche belongs to Boom. But this might be your, like, best chance. If you leave the base, you just can't contest the team fight and the advantage that Boom has right now. Yeah, it's hard to contest what Boom have at the moment. You can see just the massive split between Arc Warden and the rest of his team. I mean, if there's four Radiant Heroes that fill that gap. 
like even tiny in the two spot like you said he felt more like a three four kind of hero in this game at the moment and that's exactly what it's come down to sanctity just not doing as much and they'll look over at kesq they'll pop the borrow time they'll get the Fire Staff Cookie to land on KSQ, but it's just not enough. The arena down around Sanctity, they'll get the Spear to land. Sunray right on top of this Tiny, they get the kill there. Icarus dive over, and a with the Supernova, egg. they're gonna start to burn them out. There was some damage done to the egg, but just not enough damage. Ace drops, Hishki gone. Three heroes down to the side of Lil Gun. They're gonna burn out all the rest of this team on, on the side of Lil Gun too. Taking out the entire team. A full team wipe for Boom. And not much to be said for Lil Gun in a fight that they started it's like pretty much the same game as the previous one they go for abba one more time they try to burst him he pops the ulti mid air they still bring him down but at what cost once again they lose all five members they also just pop the glyph this time around Grimacel going for full kaya and sanj and now getting into heart like this hero is just becoming way too tanky. They do not have enough burst damage to bring him down. Like Necrophos wants to have someone who can burst him tiny, you know, is that guy that usually works against the lower HP heroes, but against Io, I, I don't think it's doable. Arena Makoto taking a lot of damage, but they just wipe up Ace. They will take out Sanctity. They'll look over Hishki. There's not anything that they can do. They lose this Snapfire. They try to fight. They try to defend. They just don't have the damage. They just don't have the tools necessary to hold on to this game at the moment. If they didn't have Arc Warden, I would not be surprised if they just uh, called the GG here. But since you have an Arc Warden, you always have like that one extra possible fight. Yeah, certainly a possibility. The question is, can they make that possibility a reality? And you see the decays coming in, and that was effective in the early parts of the game, but not anymore. And they're gonna just dive in deep. They've got Makoto with the BKB looking over at Marvel, chasing down this Necro. They're right on top of the Arc Warden. They'll get the kill on a both. They'll buy back on the Necro, but really he's buying back just to exist because that's all he's doing right now. He bought back, he's burning out inside the well. I mean, he's just surviving. Supernova comes out. The arena is there on all three heroes and oh they will God, start to they clean, them, clean up. them up. Oh boy, and GG. there it is, GG is called. Yeah, nothing they can do in this game. Boom is, like they, they gave him pretty much the same heroes. Four yeah. out of five exact same heroes. They tried for a different approach. Didn't work out this time around as well. A little gun. I think they're focusing too much on the laning stage where like you need to see the big picture, how you're gonna be able to make the ganks going post the, the laning stage. Like uh, th this lineup is just not good at no. um, moving around where you have like mid tiny, if he gets shut down and he was like, who's gonna be the playmaker? I don't know. Yeah, there really wasn't a playmaker in that game. I mean, the tiny for a split second, it felt like he was doing something. Yeah, that, those couple of that kills on the bottom tower, like uh, he had the blink dagger ready, but again, he doesn't have a hero to play with. Undying, not the hero that likes to move. Snap fire, yeah. very limited, uh, very burstable, like considering the amount of heals, the sustain that Boom had, and also Necro, super slow hero, like you need to rotate to his lane instead of Necro rotating to the different lanes. Yeah, it just didn't work out there for Lil Gun. Boom looking good in a good, clean 2-0. To break down the series a little a bit more for you though we've got that handsome panel we're gonna throw it back over to them that's what they call me host of the handsome panel i got one one handsome person on here you two can decide which one it is welcome back to uh, uh 2 for boom versus lil gun nothing too surprising boom having been in an already upper division mainstay versus lil gun who got promoted for the lower division but everyone's looking good Everyone's looking good. Lil Gun. Lil Gun, not so much. Maybe not now. Yeah, they looked all right, but uh, not good enough versus Boom. The, the draft that they try to pull off is something different. Yeah, you focus on the laning stage, but then you also have an Arc Warden, and this hero uh, doesn't really accomplish a lot early on. Did which, they focus on the laning stage? I feel like... Uh, they, they tried to with the draft, <laughs> yeah, at least. Sure, they tried to. It didn't really work out for them. Ended up losing the lanes. And when you play behind as a necro or the, just the lineup in general like it's very it's very do? slow very slow draft you you don't have any playmaking uh, no, options yeah no synergy yeah. also if 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 you do kind of get out of the laning stage in that 
12 to 20 minute mark if if you survive it then perhaps you can you can do something later on with Ooh. with yark but uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. is sad enjoying themselves a little bit there <laughs> i mean it the build on arc warden as well getting that maelstrom straight into the bkb afterwards it's like not Maelst what you want it, it's not it's really not what the hero wants to be doing yeah I, even not upgrading the maelstrom early on it's just it, it's rough yeah unfortunately it didn't really look very competitive today Boom. No, and I'm, I'm looking through their bands because i'm saying like okay so a big portion of the previous draft from game one was able to make a reappearance. Io, I mean, four of the heroes. Four of the oh, heroes. Yeah. yeah so, <laughs> like, they, I, I don't know what Ligon thought. They banned out the Puck and Beastmaster first phase. You have to ban out Beastmaster if you're not getting first pick. So, although they did have first pick, so yeah. I actually don't know why they banned out Beastmaster. Maybe they're not comfortable with the hero. I'm not sure. Okay, fine. So then Io gets picked up. Io Abaddon again. They they picked up the tiny first, which at least they turned into a core tiny. So that's progress. And then they pick Necro. I don't think Necro is the answer to Io. No, especially over the the bad there yeah. as well. Yeah, it's something different. And it's they, way they too early to, also. Yeah, they try to find different answers. Obviously, th what what they've been playing so far hasn't really worked out. I besides mean, the Huskar, playing the DPC yeah. is not the best uh, sort of environment to test to out test how out to stuff. beat an IO, especially if you're already down a series. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's something like. that uh, I also noticed with, with some teams, not necessarily Little Gun on only, but uh, playing without a coach is rough, like not having someone that's going to it is. analyze it's a huge and, find advantage. and find the right strategies for you, especially if you're a bunch of youngsters, like let, um, moving away from the regions just from the fr for a little bit. Where's to Spro? Topping the region, playing extremely well in the DPC, but then in Singapore Major doing absolutely nothing, and they don't have a coach. And their attitude is like, we don't need a coach. You do. If you're picking Kunka in Singapore Major <laughs> meta, you need a coach. You need someone to guide you at least a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you know, not getting a coach saves you a couple of bucks here and there, yeah. but it's really worth the investment. Like, a good coach, we have seen it so many times throughout the Dota history, what it can do, like yep. strategy-wise, just they're mentality-wise, yeah. there everything. Are, there's a lot of players right now as well in, in EU that are retiring or Free have agents. became analysts. Ah, yes. Like some, some players like before that would, wouldn't even ask for a lot. Like EPG, would you be interested in coaching? Yeah, like I would. You would? I would. I, would I, I, felt, I felt that way even a couple of times when I was playing in my teams. <laughs> Felt more like a coach than a player. <laughs> okay, really. yeah. And there, there are some like ex teammates of mine also that have stopped playing, like Mitch, that's been in in the game forever. Yeah. Also searching to be a coach, but isn't okay. isn't picked up. So there's. Wait, why well, I always associate Mitch and DNZ together? What team they, were they on? They played together for a while. Spider pigs. Or whatever? Spider oh, pigs. Maybe that EPG was EPG as well for a stint. I, I, he he was also coaching. I think Penta at some point, something like that. And while DNZ was in Penta. I see. Yeah, so uh, there, there, there's some connection there. Well, it's not DNZ that I'm interested in. It's FBZ that I'm interested in because he's going to be the MVP again, back-to-back, -back, Mars performances, stellar the whole way through. I, I originally thought that Timbersaw was his signature, but I may need to add Mars to the list of ban heroes that you really need to ban against Boom. Yeah, especially if you let the Mars Phoenix as well again. Mm -hmm. And uh, even without the Phoenix, I feel like the way he plays Mars is pretty solid. He just dominates uh, the lane later on. He's always in position. If you think that you got that egg, you're wrong. You don't. There's an, an arena covering it. Just what, what was his score? 10-0-19. Yeah, yep. that, that's pretty much MVP worthy. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't die again? Yeah. All right. Death is not something this guy likes to toy around with. Of course not. Yeah, always yeah. going for those perfect games. I mean, his, uh, uh, okay, GPM and XPM is literally carry worthy this game, but when you're 10 0, it, it usually feels that way. I guess uh, so now this is going to make Boom look pretty strong now because they, they beat TNC. They beat Little Gun. They, they beat Execration. They beat Execration, yeah. right? They beat Execration. And so. I, like we said, these initial wins, they're very, very valuable in, in this yeah. league format. You it need to pick them up. Yeah, but they haven't been tested yet. Yeah. It already puts them out of danger, I would say. Because yeah. if you're looking at the whole uh, region, uh, probably Execration and Lil Gun are the ones that are uh, scared for their survival. Mm -hmm. Boom, meanwhile, they still aim to go to the Major, but still have to... Yep. 
at least fifth place is somewhat yeah. secured. True. And the other Ish. contender that may need to be afraid is Omega, especially now that they're going to be being tested up against a major attending team of T1. But we're going to see that in an hour or so. So whatever time zone you're in, get a breakfast or a lunch or a dinner, wherever you are, maybe or a midnight supper. snack, yeah. supper. What's the difference between supper and dinner? Well, like in Asia, at least, you know, supper means they're going out at like 11 p.m. midnight. Supper's later than dinner? Yeah. Oh, I did not know that. Okay, good to know. Well, we are covering the Southeast Asian region, so get a supper. It'll, it'll do your body some good. We'll be back in one hour with T1 versus the other team. What was it? Omega. Omega. T1 Omega versus Omega. Boxes. We'll be right back. <laughs>
change of angry back everybody to uh, that heavenly chorus presenting the PGL DPC SCA season two also brought to you by the top level support of secret lab chairs. Welcome back I say because there was an hour break but we're here now with the second best of three of the day between T1 and Omega Esports and I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it because T1 I was not impressed with the major, and I was like, this is not what I wanted can, to say. Can I just talk about that chorus a little bit, sure, that music? Sure, please. 10, 15 years ago when you were young and upcoming... 20 years ago 20, when, I was, when 20, I was young, okay. 20 <laughs> years ago, you, you're, you're playing, let's say, a DPC league. Does that kind of music pump you up? Do you feel like, you know? Yeah, I mean, uh, I was always, when I, even when I was playing, you know, I was always you were listening, listening, listening to music, music oh, yeah? but like uh, super quiet, you know, I just, yep. need, maybe that's why, you know, I didn't succeed because I was listening to music instead of my teammates. What, there was, <laughs> <laughs> what was your go-to hype track? Did you have one? No, I didn't like have, I, I didn't want, you know, anything uh, too loud with too much bass, you know, I just oh. wanted to... Uh, to vibe out. Chill, you know, just, okay. just to have some yeah. kind of music. I had some, when I was like a kid, 12, 13, I played in an internet club, always music while playing Warcraft. Mm -hmm. I had some dude come up to me, like, uh, trash talk me because I was singing or whatnot. <laughs> I must have a beautiful voice, Liz. You, you <laughs> want to show it? You're like, uh, we're, we're down. Like, you want to sing not. something? <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't bring the garmoshka to yeah. LAN or anything? Yeah, uh, I did to one, but it was stolen. <gasps> yeah. Heartbreaking. Did you win? Oh no, this was the talent years already. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> <laughs> this was a long, long loss. Yeah, yep. but uh, speaking of teams that were losing, T1 at the Singapore Major, of all three teams from the Southeast Asian represent representation, I was not expecting Neon to go the furthest. Obviously, Fnatic, having been first place, I had the highest expectations. T1, sure, it's a roster change, but 23 Savage is still a very, very highly regarded player. Yeah, for sure. Like, 23 Savage with the addition, like, 23 Savage, when he was standing in for Boom, you can feel the difference how team just plays better. I would say the same thing for T1. Unfortunately, for the Major, they did not have Cuckoo. They had 4F standing in. Cuckoo couldn't make it. Uh, they ended up 2-8. Uh, in the major, yeah. which is not impressive. They lost all their games, except they won 2-0 against Nygma, which is okay. You know, Nygma also didn't uh, look too good yeah. at the major. I think what they needed was leadership during the major, and Cuckoo is the one who's calling the shots. Yeah. So kind of missed that. I think the team will be much stronger here in the Southeast Asia. But as it goes for like competitive scene, uh, playing against different regions, this team still needs a bit more experience. You know, they are ready to play against Southeast Asian team. When it comes to like international teams, uh, they will need to step it up. The the problem for them, I feel like they're actually playing uh, the international meta. They're playing the same meta like everyone else, and uh, it, it, but they're not playing it as well and, as everyone else. However, um, like Lacoste said, if Neon perhaps had Scam removed from their like position, right? Like if he wasn't able to make it to the major and they had to make a stand-in for him, then it would have been most likely a completely different story because Kuku is the driving force of T1. Yeah, these shot callers are critical. And I guess that, that is a fair point that we can put a, put a little bit of an asterisk on T1's performance. And as for Smart Omega, they were another one of our lower division promotees, and they were able to pick up a victory versus Lil Gun. But it was a 2 1, so it was still competitive between them. But, yeah, but I, this is much more well known players on Omega. On Omega. Yeah, definitely. They, here you have 
what you have CML, you have Sam H as well. These are accomplished players in the SCA region. They've played under uh, big names. I think uh, Sam H also played uh, under T1 for a while, TNC before too. So mm -hmm. these are all, not all of them are accomplished and known players, but they definitely do have uh, what it takes to fight against T1s and the big dogs. Are they the favorites? Definitely not, but uh, not pushovers as well. They'll need to bring uh, their A game in this one against T1 for sure. You know, it's Southeast Asian region, so anyone can pretty much win against anyone. Take the game off. Still heavily favoring T1 here. Just, to, you know, the experience, the caliber of the players. Also, like Omega, they played against the Lil Gun. They also dropped the game, so, you know, Lil Gun doesn't look uh, too solid. We've seen that uh, in the previous series where, like, the team just kind of falls apart after the laning stage. That someone like T1, they will take advantage of that. And if you struggle against uh, Lil Gun, then you're going to have bigger issues against T1 because, you know, the, the, they, they have some experience, uh, you know, in the international level. But this team in Southeast uh, Asian region could not, shouldn't have problems. Like the, this team, once again, I believe uh, this season will be able to probably go to the major. Yeah, yeah, probably yeah. better than in the last season too. Even though, like, if you think about the, the changes that they've made with 23 Savage coming in, Jackie was fine. He... he is he on the same level? That's yet to be seen. But he wasn't the problem for them, let's put it that way. I mean, they qualified with Jackie yeah, for they, the most they part. So. Exactly, they qualified with him. Yeah, it's, uh, it was definitely, I think, part of the intention of the whole DPC system was to encourage more roster stability. And so T1 got a penalty because uh, they, they went for a roster swap so late in the game. Deserved. So well yeah. deserved, yeah, yep. exactly. And so now this is going to see if it pays off. Uh, the bar is set at at least getting second place at this league, so that's a pretty high bar that you have to meet. Although, still, first place is yet to be determined. Will it be Fnatic again? Will it be Neon mm -hmm. taking their major experience? So a lot of question marks yet to be answered. How about for, I guess, the T1's expectations in this patch? Do you think anything changed in yeah. like 23 Savage's hero pool? Not his, but a lot of the heroes that they like to play got nerfed, like Enigma, Monkey King, oh, yeah. Lycan, Timber. All these heroes got uh, struck by a nerf hammer. Like some other heroes that they like to play, like Pango got a, got a buff. Uh, Lashrak also got some of the buffs. Lion, in terms of Shard, also a buff. Uh, uh, Phoenix, still a viable hero, you know, a bit of nerfs, but yeah. they, these are the heroes that they like to play. So we'll have to see how they adapt. 23 Savage Phantom Lancer got nerfed tonight. Like la la right. yesterday during the night, I woke up, I checked like, well yeah, well. Phantom Lancer, like he got struck the hardest yeah. from all the heroes. I'm not sad about that at all. Like, no I, one I likes to play against PL. <laughs> PL, Huskar, Broodmother, these heroes, you know, Arkward and Oh, Nipos. but your, your cheese heroes no, are fine. No, they're the same. They're in the same oh, boat. Oh, okay. I just say that Huskar is probably the worst one. I, I put him in, on a different level. That's my personal most hated hero yeah. to play against because you, it doesn't take skill to play Huskar. That's all. That, that's my biggest problem. Broodmother, at least you have to micro. You, you need to armor you know? toggle. You, you need, need to be <laughs> able to <laughs> armor toggle. That's it. You know, press that key twice and that's it. Um, yeah, you said Broodmother got nerfed. Uh, Broodmother in the last patch, the one that uh, we got a couple of hours ago. Uh, you can't lifesteal of hitting your allies. True. Yeah, but she got buffed <laughs> overall, right? Yeah, because yeah, uh, yeah. Spiderlings used to be 3, 4, 5, and now they're 4, 5, 6. Yeah, I didn't even spawns. know that it's a thing, you know, that you can lifesteal of yeah. hitting your allies. <laughs> Like, let me just, you know, hit you. You're playing there, against Venomancer. Um, I'll get that sweet HP off back. Well, I mean, it's it more for denies, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, but yeah. I mean, 100% that's how it happened. Someone noticed it while <laughs> trying to deny, right? <laughs> and talking about, you know, the cheese picks, uh, Omega's mid laner is called Mac. Maybe they can use some Mac and cheese, you know, picks. God damn it. Look <laughs> us. I was getting bolacy off of black <laughs> earlier, and you come in here with mac and cheese. Is this an improvement? I, I guess it is. Ah, this is a huge upgrade. I this is say. an upgrade <laughs> a little bit. At least. <laughs> so, back, but what, what were you guys talking about? I don't about know. You again? derailed the whole conversation with your pun, Lacoste. <laughs> I'm hungry also. I'm, my food's getting delivered, and we're going to have to have to listen to you talk about lunch. What did you eat, anyway? I just had a breakfast. I didn't order yet. Oh, that's right. <laughs> you and I were both struggling with the ordering. Yeah. <laughs> well, someone uh, struggles a bit more than the other, but <laughs> yeah. You had a kebab. How was that, Lizard? It's the game is starting soon. Don't worry. We're just bantering for right now. Uh, it, it's fine. I don't order a lot, but... Uh, I'm, you I'm order often. You order <laughs> like five times a day, but <laughs> not, not a lot of food. Lot. It makes sense. <laughs>
uh, yeah, as, as long as you have those free delivery coupons, you know, that's what matters. That's how, how was the food in Singapore for you? It was fine. It was all right. I know that Lacoste enjoyed it quite immensely. Yeah, yeah, like the, the one in the hotel was really good. Yeah. Like the, the dining, once we're done with the day, you know, order some uh, quality food, relax, watch some Dota, yeah. good stuff. I, uh, I had a small complaint about the portion sizes because I like, you to, did. <laughs> I like to eat <laughs> a little bit more. That was a good story, more. actually. Tell the story about your portion size, Lizard. Yeah, so there is a, there is a compartment in, in, in the delivery app in which you put... Special requests. Special requests, like allergy... No, not really special Dietary requests, restrictions. Just, just dietary restrictions. You said double it. <laughs> <laughs> I said I'm allergic to small... <laughs> <laughs> allergic to small portions? Small portions. <laughs> and then they, they, they actually started doubling my portions, so it worked. It's good. Yeah, I was baffled that you managed to pull that off. Meanwhile, I was... One night I come back after I had dinner and there's another dinner <laughs> waiting for second, me. What about the sure. second dinner? You're like a hobbit. <laughs> We've <laughs> had one dinner, but how about a second dinner? And he's a growing boy. Exactly. You can see exactly. those muscles don't feed themselves. What can you do? Okay. Good news, everybody. I'm, I'm not worried, you know, about the muscles. Like, well, well if uh, muscles take everything, you know, what about the brain? Brain also <laughs> needs to be fed. That's it. It's all about the muscles, man. <laughs> 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 There's nothing left. Were you a jock <laughs> in, in school? Were Actually, no. The opposite. But You were a nerd? Uh, yeah. But oh, man. Later on, I I've made the transition. <laughs> <laughs> now you're super nerd or what? <laughs> <laughs> Now, yeah. ner nerd is exactly. a good term. We're all nerds here, you know. We're, we're, we're just older nerds, pretty much. Nerd is not a, not a bad word. No, it's, no, it's no. like a... Especially a since, invoke. you know, it's we have Superman yeah. also coming out as a nerd. Like. He's Clark Kenting every day of his life. All anyway. right, so draft started. <laughs> Io ban, Dazzle ban, you better ban Beastmaster. Okay, T1 better pick Be okay, Beastmaster. Di different, different bans, definitely, than in the first series. And uh, Brood, Huskar, Beastmaster, all of these heroes. Grimstroke. Grimstroke. Grimstroke as well, yeah. I still think Beastmaster's priority number uno. What, it was 10 damage less per stack in the B patch? There you go, the Grimstroke. 10 damage yeah, less? Ten da yeah, 10 damage less. That's nothing. There you go, smart. Literally nothing. <laughs> Literally nothing. Nyx Assassin also got nerfed. His uh, Carapace talent is minus 3.5 second cooldown on oh, Carapace. Oh, it's a buff. It's you it's thought it was a buff? A, it's a buff. Instead. Because I saw that you can perma stun with Ags. If Wasn't you that posted tonight? I didn't check when was that posted. It was, it was before the nerf. It or was before? before the change. So the change is, what, 0.6 seconds longer on Impale. And it used to be minus 3.5 seconds cooldown on Carapace. Mm. I'll, I'll check that for you. So level 20 talent changed from minus 3.5 seconds carapace cooldown to plus 0 0.6 stun. Well, sometimes that stun could make a difference. Maybe, like someone needs to do the math. Is that 10? Tell which it's 20. 20. 20. But you get more stuns more frequently with minus 3.5 yeah, seconds on carapace. Yeah, but you get like... If you die, like getting one stun off before could make a hell lot of a difference. Okay. Uh, it depends. This, this <laughs> series is about <laughs> the character. It's like, what, what, like, what, what, like late what, game, yeah. definitely care based. Meteor Hammer build, I guess, Impale Talent Meteor is better. Also got at level nerfed. 20, I think yeah. you're probably care pacing more. Yeah. I consider it a nerf, but still a strong hero regardless. So picked up with the Beastmaster mm -hmm. and T1, get a jug to pair I up like with their. I grim. like the jug as a pairing with. Uh, Grimstroke, and even though you can say a roar versus the the spin TP is good, or in general versus spin, right now Jug is kind of fine versus Beastmaster because you have this hero that doesn't care about the wild axes as much. So you have a way of uh, getting rid of the stacks. You have a way. You're kind of elusive in the fights as well. Because yeah, axes, a lot of people probably don't know, is magical damage. It's yeah. not physical anymore. Exactly. So. You have magic immunity, doesn't go through BKBs. And it be, uh, the stacks can be dispelled, so Swift yeah. Slash, Omni Slash, they'll all take off the Th stacks. That's pretty much it. Like, I've played a quite a bit of Beast, and Jug is probably one of the carries that felt like the worst to play into at the moment. Um, when you're playing versus these TBs and Drows and whatnot, you really don't care. You just keep your distance and you destroy yeah, them. Yeah, just don't get hit by axes. Yeah, just don't get hit. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that easy. It's really not easy to dodge those axes. <laughs> like, Beastmaster, I still feel like this hero is the first pick material. I thought it's going to get nerfed harder, but okay. for some reason it didn't. Uh, and the moment you get... First, the talents uh, go so well in hand with the axes, like you said. If you remember, I told you about this soul ring and metallic. Yeah, the mana region It's talent. too much region, even. It really is. Like, when you get the mana region talent, too, 
the moment you finish uh, up to the axe, okay, it takes some time if you're not mid to get it. The moment you get it, every single item comes like that. Your, yeah. your flash farming ability is insanely fast. Um, okay, and the centaur now from Smart Omega. This is a probably an offlane that we'll see way, way more often now. A centaur just feels so good. Every single ability got a buff. The biggest one was Stampede, 90 second cooldown on all levels, and indirect buff, Vanguard. Is just such a good item. We see centaurs going for Vanguard and a hood first. You know, especially if you have this initiation coming up from the next assassin, you so you can't afford to go for it. Like seven minute Vanguard, what are you gonna do about it? Like, how are you gonna kill me? Yeah. It's, it's pretty impossible. It's a good old centaur. Yeah, a long good. time ago it was. Rush that Vanguard just stand in the lane. In NA, I was seeing Axe also be picked up. It, Axe has been a dead hero, but Vanguard being so dirt cheap is starting to bring a resurgence. And we have uh, Sky Rats, actually, from Smart Omega. We've seen some Sky Rats at the start. Like, it looks good as a position four. Nothing significantly changed for Sky Rat. Like, yeah, this was the team that picked the Dazzle mid with their Sky Rats. Sure, sure. Let's not see that again. I hope not. Dazzle yeah. didn't really look that great, especially on the mid lane. Yeah, they had Io, Tusk, DP, Sky, and Dazzle that time around. A bit too much, like heroes that don't scale like mm -hmm. they had uh, like this momentum but that's also kind of want to buy uh, this time around they need, uh, this time they need something to close out their draft in a late game potential way, yeah right Give me because a good old-fashioned one position yeah. this is a beast mid centaur off so morphlings banned out uh -oh. Agnes is banned out. Oh. Uh, okay that's, no, a, that's core tiny. a core tiny core tiny it's a core tiny let's let's chill All that's fine. mid tiny right then should be mid -tiny. safely in mid tiny or maybe off lane tiny most likely mid but these are beefy boys and besides he, he can't burst yeah. like beastmaster he can't b burst centaur nix assassin can't get the carapace off so potentially you can't get a kill pretty much the only one you can burst it's from sky. 100 to zero is sky yeah. yeah so it doesn't feel that great and if you're playing this tiny in mid lane you're not going for the new build because you have to max out the the nuke right like you have Together to get the boars no, I mean, you have to get uh, both nukes so you're actually a playmaker. Yeah, but uh, I, I, yeah. Like Beastmaster on the mid lane might get the point in boars or not at all. Like sometimes I've seen b mid Beastmasters getting 302 build and then get like a point in roar, go back to the axes and then max out the hawk for yeah. the vision. They, they do it because um, right now you, you still can go with the boars to dominate the lanes, but if you're yeah, playing. Yeah, level one boar is kind of. Yeah. Exactly, and if you're playing the lane, you want the axes because you stack exactly. the ancients, yeah. and then you just uh, farm up the camps. You get it's the too much faster. mana consuming yeah. if you go for both abilities. And at least there's uh, also a lot of soulbind potential: double hex, double spike, double finger. So the support duo checks a lot of boxes. Tons of stuns, tons of team fight. Yep, and they have this frontliner in a way of tiny, at least a little bit, not. Not necessarily the level of Beast or, or Centaur, but it's Look at something. the offlaner. Uh, we saw a lot of Underlord in the first few days of this league. Legion Commander is banned out. Mars is banned out. Timbersaw is still an availability. It's Maybe not against Sky. Nah, it's, it's Sky uh, a bit of Nyx a problematic well. against Nyx. Like, he can just set things up on you. He doesn't have break anymore, but uh, still very good to just setting things things up with the carapace with the stun mana burn something that pretty much no one likes to play into but uh, like some specific heroes like tibber saw like where he feels vulnerable so they need a position one that can match up against the juggernaut they don't have any kind of save uh ursa is banned out right yeah, yeah ursa okay. and troll were the last bands by t1 and smart omega ban out death prophet so they cover both bases i guess it's an off lane ban with leisure commander only knight Omni Knight. <laughs> three Omni? Omni. Omni yeah. yeah, three Omni. Okay. Okay. I, I, I've seen it All pop right. up in pubs a bit more. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <laughs> so, seems good. I've seen it pop up in pubs a little bit more often now, but... Uh, Sniper! I called for I called for a sniper <laughs> yesterday. It like uh, yeah, versus the DP, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause, but like this that. time around, like they have a tiny to close the gap. It's only one hero. Like, I don't mind, like, Sniper, like, his shard is actually super dope. Like, it's, uh, yeah. you have another way of saving yourself. Uh, his, um, what's it, what's it called? His ability, like, he, he received Take the buff M? in the A, in the A, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. It was, like, that's the kind of MKB. You have MKB, right. you have a stronger, stronger second ability. I haven't seen Sniper in such a long time, I forgot the name of the abilities. <laughs> <laughs> Sharp headshot. Shooter. Yeah, Shrapnel, yeah. headshot, take aim. 
concussive grenade is the shard, which is actually quite good, and assassinate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Is he good in this draft? It's good. I think it's a good sniper game. They like the only thing they have, like Grimstroke, he can't get close to sniper. They have a good front line with the Beastmaster, with the Nyx, and also Centaur. Uh, one of the best heroes to defend the high ground with as well. If like if things don't go well, you can always kill the healing ward uh, in the team fight. Uh, I don't know, man. I like the sniper pick. Okay. Is that I'll, an Omega? I'll, I'll go with Omega. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep things more grounded. I'll still go with <laughs> T1, but they, they can buy a couple of Blink Daggers, get on top of that sniper, even though he's playing with the Centaur, which might prove to be uh, very crucial. I think Beastmaster and Centaur are both really, really strong, but I'm going to give it to T1 just because I think that I have higher expectations for them. Yeah. So I uh, will... You guys uh, are just going with an easy answer. It's, like it's game it. one, it's game one, and we'll find it out how it gets casted by B-Cop and Black. Thank you very much, Tsunami. And what are your thoughts on this on these drafts? Who do you, who do you feel? I mean, is gonna win if, this game? The, if the teams were in my head, you know, on an even level, I would actually quite like the Omega draft, but simply because it's T1. You know, last season they let me down a lot. Ooh. They can't possibly do it again. Like no way. I'm gonna go with T1. All simply right. because in my head they're a better team, should be more structured, you know. And the sniper potentially is gonna have a tough lane. Because his Omni Knight got movement speed buffs. If it gets on top of him with the Degen Aura, could be a bit tough. Just seems like a weird little draft from them. I don't know, based on what we've seen them play before. Obviously, things have changed. Them as in Omega? Uh, no, T1. T1. Okay, yeah. Sure. I feel like Cuckoo. I don't know. I, I expect him to be on something different than Omni Knight. Yeah, it's not typically here you would associate with Cuckoo. Yeah. But I'm sure you can play it. I mean, how hard is it? You know, like you repel your tiny or juggernaut. You press R. All right, I did my job. How many nights sometimes a hard hero to play? There it is. I mean, positioning is still key. They have a lot of silences and stunts and stuff. So, I know for my brother, it was a hard hero back in the day. He uh, was getting chased. I was playing with some friends. I introduced my brother into Dota. I was trying to have him make a good first impression. He repels the opponent timber saw. Nice. My team dies, and I think that was the last time my friends and him played together. Not surprised. <laughs> Dota destroying <laughs> friendships since 1999. A long time. But yeah, it's. Uh, I, I gotta admit, I really feel like Omega's draft is, you know, quite a bit better. Like it's gonna be super hard for him to play the mid late game here on T1. Yeah, I, but I, my boy 23. You know, he's 23. Forever. And the Jug still, like, it didn't get a big enough nerf where I think Jug is, like, still not super good as a hero. You don't like Jug? No, I think he's great. Why is he really good? Yeah, I yeah. think he's really strong right now, and there wasn't much changed. Yeah, not much at all. And they're also playing core tiny, not support tiny. And he should have a pretty decent Ooh, lane against Bottom the lane, monster. Sam H taking a lot of damage. Fake hype, sorry. Blade Fury was on him the entire time, thought he might die. That's what happens, Blade Fury. So, how do you feel about Carl on this Tiny in this situation? Last series, we saw Tiny in the 4, we saw Tiny in the 2. Both times, it got devastated. Um, it just, do you th believe that the Tiny's going to have a better matchup here? And, like, what are you expecting from a Tiny? I mean, it's a decent matchup for Tiny. He should be able to get a fast, uh, probably blink early on and make quite a bit of space. He will have an Omni Knight to play around with. With that, like, 34, I believe, now, extra strength. How much is it? Uh, 32 extra strength from the Omni Knight. Heavens the Grace. Like, he's going to be super tanky, really hard to bring down, and it's going to be causing a lot of chaos here. Once his blink is up, the sniper can't really feel safe anymore. Hmm. Yeah, we'll see what this sniper can do. I feel like I haven't given a prediction, but I'm going to go with T1. Just, I, I like the Jug, you know? I, yeah, I, 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 I have a, a lot of faith in the jug and the jug omni combo seems like it could be really strong to me but it is because it also indirectly amplifies or rather directly amplifies the healing ward because you get more health region if you have more max health 32 strength is 640 max health which is quite a bit and then on top of that like we've just seen lion like throughout the major we saw lion and shadow shaman be very strong mm -hmm. and like i still expect that here from the lion to be strong, like that hex is just so crucial. I feel like when you eventually, I would say Zephyr, when he gets that blink dagger, can be in a spot to really open up the, this game for them and, and make them feel confident in making jumps. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a 
somewhat of a tough lane game because they have the Hawk, they have the Vendetta. Right. They have a couple of silences, even the Stampede, you know, could cause problems. But yeah, he definitely has the potential to make a lot of plays happen. Tower toss. Well, Carl is in front of Mac. I don't think he's got the damage right now, though. No, nah, he tossed him into the tower, just dealing uh, a little bit of damage. But of course, bottle meta. Everyone is going to be full health again in no time. No. Yes, so far, looking pretty decent across the board. Very even. Even for the most part, yeah. I mean, the supports won a piece even there on all four supports. <laughs> yeah. We really have to wait for the B6 and maybe time to pick up a good rune. Juggernaut, a little bit of trouble here. And he did not skill healing ward. But of course, Whitemon. He's a nice, good fella, you know. I'm going to give you my gold. Carry me 23. Solving him straight back up. Yeah, seeing if 23 can be the carry that they need. He was, it was the switch from Jackie, right? To 23? Yes. And 23 had a bust stint with Boom in the last season. Then he went to T1. And, and admittedly, he looked a lot better in Boom. But of course, the competition in, in the Major was also much higher. Yeah. Much tougher. So it'll be interesting to see how he performs throughout this season and really what he brings to the table coming in. Avalanche used, pick up that water rune. Carl gets control of that. But both mids picking up a water rune, sustaining pretty even overall still. Actually, perfectly even, 22 and 2 for both of them. Yep, as always. It's just a matchup where there can't really be any kill happening. Ooh, first blood oh. coming out. Cuckoo yeah. getting the kill on a Tino, and there will be a trade. CML takes out Zephyr, and it will be a one for one, but you lose that sniper. I mean, that's what we said, you know. The Omni Knight with boots gets on top of you. You're not the fastest here. You're sitting at 285, the Legion are at like 260. You're just going to get run down, no problem. What's the what's the build look like right now for an Omni Knight in terms of like the skills? Are you going heavy in the D-Gen aura earlier or? Yeah, probably going to be 4 for one Okay. Or maybe... So this is the value point that's already yeah. there. Yeah, exactly. Like D-Gen aura level 1 scales the best, 10%, then 8% with every other level. But you just want to be the support hero that really just empowers your tiny. Right. You want to have the level 4 grades up ASAP. Another tower toss, Lion yeah, TP as well. Yeah, they've got him. Very well done. Good TP here by Xephyr. It's always the case. Like you post four dice. More often than not, he will TP back to the mid lane. You know, refill the bottle, try to get a kill. And they got it right there. A little bit of a mistake by the Beastmaster getting tossed into the tower. And I, I really do think that both fours on these teams can really make movements over towards mid. But it's certainly going to feel really strong when Lion comes over, has the Hex, has the stun, all that control available to make things really difficult for for the side of Omega, especially, you know, uh, very difficult for Mac. Definitely. I mean, there, there's still a lot of combo damage available here with a Skyraf, 1c6, has Centaur to set up, has Nyx to set up, and has the Roar to set up. So it's going to be a very big and important piece here for this Dire team come mid-game. Excited to see if we see something different from the Tiny, because I just feel like both games, I was disappointed with, uh, you know, the, all this hype on Tiny. It's hard to make him work. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Like, you need to have a pretty good game to really make it work on Juggernaut. Whoa. Oh. Okay, he spinned out of an auto. There was a little bit of panic, you could tell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh. That was a late spin after the hit already came through. Yeah. I mean, it was an auto attack anyway, which doesn't, you know, the spin does He was nothing. fine. Yeah, exactly. Like, but healing what up, so it's going to be fine in no time. He's given a tango, so he's going to have that extra bit of heal. And he'll be able to sustain a lane. It's scary. I mean, yeah, you can see a little bit of uh, yeah. a little bit of fear. A late Q and all of a sudden, Four might not feel bots. comfortable. Yeah, they're going to go in. Carl with Zephyr over here going after Shanks. They get the kill on the Skyrath. It's Inkswell after the kill. I don't know if what they were really looking for. They don't get the Centaur, nor do I think that should be their target going bottom. I don't know if they'd have the damage to get the kill right away. He's very tanky with that hood first. Sitting at 1200 health plus the hood active. And even the fairy fire as well. Oh, they're stealing the stacks here on the Beastmaster. It was a triple stack. One more axe should do the trick. Yeah, you really need to try and control this. Mac getting away with a lot. Ooh. 
cleaning up, and he's really jumped up at stack now, has him at 59 and 3. His net worth is 3, 600 ahead. Yeah. And we have seen this power of Beastmaster so many times. You get his fast agonims, you just take over the game. And yeah, I mean, th as I said, this Dire Draft looks really, really scary. And like, once they get online with all the items. Sniper, okay, going to the Shrapnel now. You need that to really flash farm on that hero. Right. I was a bit worried as he went two in the passives. <laughs> yeah, the 2-2-2 two, two, two so far. Avalanche toss coming through with the ink swell. They've got a lockdown on a CML who will throw out a stun but miss everyone. Goes Spike Carapace. The chase is on. One Cuckoo punch. trying to help out Carl. They go to the Stampede. CML, he's getting away. The Primal Roar was used. Zephyr goes down. They will finally get a trade, a one for one. Not sure that was exactly how they thought it would go for T1. A little sloppy on both sides. A little sloppy, yeah. Scarif here. He didn't Carl. silence him up in time. Avalanche toss and Shanks is just dead to Carl. Yeah, I'm very surprised he didn't silence him. They had vision on him. A uh, little bit of a slow reaction from Shanks, but Carl's going to be very happy about it. Yeah, for sure. I, I I guess I have the same expectations on Omega that I did in the previous series with Lilgun. Uh, can you bring more to the table? I, I made the comparison last series of, you know, LBZS, Magma, uh, Vice. Can you get past that 15-minute mark? A lot of these teams that have been in the bottom end or, you know, have come up from promotion or close on the cusp, they've gone from, you know, good laning phases, but then we just see a big drop-off after that. I want to see if Omega can break the mold and show us a little bit more past that point because they've played well up to this point what we have seen so far from them they look a little bit more sophisticated than like little gun and execration so i'm gonna give them a lot more credit when it comes to the mid game but it's still t1 you know like they're leading by 1k right now it's gonna be a test either way yeah however they're setting themselves up for success already up 1k soon to be 2k doing a very good job for themselves Getting closer and closer to the Ags on Mac. You've got Blink Dagger being built for the Tiny. If Carl can get to this quickly, I, I'm scared Omega might get shut down if the proper movements come from T1 now having that Blink when he gets it. Yeah, he really needs to snowball starting with the Blink because his Beastmaster is farming away a storm already at 4.8k net worth. Looking over, Zephyr has the Finger. hex out of the Nyx Assassin. They'll follow that up with a stun. There was a stampede used. They're bringing over four euros towards this fight. They're trying to get into Carl. He's taking a lot of this damage, but they've got the Primal Roar. Ooh, Omni trying to help out Carl. He's going to get assassinated and Omni. killed off. Omni Slash, there's the finger. Mac drops. The Nyx Assassin gets away within the Vendetta, and another trade, one for one. Yeah. Mid laners have been traded out. They're even Radiant traded across the board. Yeah, I mean, you could you could see the, how long it took them to kill the Tiny. With that Repel on, or Heavenly Grace, rather, sitting at a good 2.1k health. Good status Radiant resistance, very hard to kill. But, you know, killing the Tiny, he's the pace setter of the game. Very far away from his Bing, still Dyer's over 1,000 gold. Sniper went for Midas, actually. Okay, it's going to go into the cooldown reduction talent then. Three coming over mid. Push away, Cuckoo. Question Everyone becomes, here. they want to fight. Yeah. Five heroes mid. You got to give up this tower. It doesn't look like they're going to move over and try and defend it. Yeah. Tiny still has TP, but just doesn't seem like there's any possibility to really defend this. Vanguard hood on the Centaur is also very rich. This early game is looking amazing for Omega. Yeah. They've cut down the tier one mid, the tier one bottom. That's the proper steps. You know, it really is going to squeeze this map. You don't have a Battle Fury yet for the Jug. He is pretty close to it. I guess the question is now, what can T1 do to keep that space open for 23 and make sure that once he gets that Battle Fury, he can really exponentially move forward in terms of net worth? Yeah, I mean, he needs to uh, blink the on Tiny first to be really able to get some kills in combination with the Grimstock and Lion. Until then, they're a little bit limited in terms of mobility. And maybe, you know, I should have just been like Hoss, do the analysis based on the draft rather than the teams. But we'll see what pays off in the end. We'll see who gets there. We will. 200 gold until he has a Battle Fury. He's, he's still really damn rich on the Juggernaut. Minute 13, Treads Battle Fury is very farmed. Yeah, he's keeping up with the Beastmaster, like, neck and neck. 
But yeah. all three cores on Omega are farming really well. I've actually never seen him. Well, not never, but it's rare really? that you see all three cores going up at the same speed uh, in terms of net worth and still beating out the other side by quite a bit. Yeah. Little efficiency error here on Tino. Using the Midas before skill and the cooldown talent. Disappointed. 15% efficiency gone. B cop. 15%. It's a lot of percent. It is. There's only 100% to play with. Exactly. 15 is. 15. 15. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we were talking and gloating about our math before, so yeah, we're really on it today. Yeah. Going pretty well. 3k gold in now. They're getting so much more out of the map here on Omega. They really are. Gotta start making a move. With a newly picked up Blink Dagger, and they are. Finger available as well. They're gonna run into the Centaur, though. They cannot kill this guy. Like, he is right now unkillable. Inkswell, maybe going after the Nyx Assassin. They've got the Avalanche Toss and the Inkswell popping. All Finger right. used, Finger not in the face. sure that was needed, oh, but it does get a stack. Get the stack. Stack secured. Ags picked up now for Mac. They're gonna move in, try to come through mid. Omni behind them. Breaking that smoke, Primal Roar, as well as the Mystic Gone. Flare. Look at that damage just come in. Shanks, he gets credit for the kill on the Cuckoo. I, I, you know, you lose Cuckoo, he did pop the smoke. But, I, I, I mean, that's a good enough kill for them to be happy happy about getting. Yeah, I mean, you just see the crazy amounts of damage coming out here from this lineup. The Ancient Seal, it's upping pretty much all the damage from the Axis, from the Double Edge, from his own ult. Like, it's a super good Skyraf pick. And this Juggernaut matchup against Beastmaster is also very scary. You know, you're getting the raw through the spin. So you're always scared, no matter what time. Cuckoo going Solar Crest, first big item. Yeah, just buff up the Juggernaut. That's all he wants to do this game. The question is, do they have enough time? Like, you're going to get the Solar Crest. The timing on that's going to be fine, but you still need a couple things here for the Jug to probably feel comfortable. And they're looking to get a Tier 2 really shut down the map for you. They definitely need to start to try to defend this tower here, but they have no finger. Omni Knight doesn't deal the most damage. And Grimstroke didn't even level ult yet. We'll say they are putting the pressure on Omega, but they have left 23 to just kind of farm the other side of the map and farm their jungle. And the problem is they're not pressuring any towers while Omega is just hitting their tier 2. Like, they're not pushing in any lanes because they're probably afraid of the Centaur or Beastmaster TP. Catch them out of guard, but they really need to start pressuring towers. So if they want to give up this tower, you've got to hit the mid or top tower. Yeah, and soon it's going to get a little bit more difficult. Sam H soon to pick up that Blink Dagger. He'll be the initiator with a Stampede, potentially being what is used to start that off or even, you know, use that as an escape. But there's so many ways that that skill can be used to really give you an advantageous position. So uh, I'm worried for T1 who aren't really forcing Omega away. Omega kind of have their way with this game right now. Yeah. I feel like if they want to play this style, as I said, the Juggernaut needs to be hitting the top tower right now. Just to force some TPs back, then take the fight with a number advantage. Axe is getting thrown forward. Dealing a ton There's of damage the as always. Yeah, that nerf was very small. Like 10 damage less per Axe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Why not? Still feels fine. Yeah, still deals about 300 damage per. Or they might be trying to catch out a Juggernaut here. This is where, if you catch them, it, it, I think it spirals the game pretty heavily in Omega's favor if they can catch 23 out. Yeah, they smoked here. Vendetta also popped. He has to be so careful here. And you can tell he feels it because he's where he's farming, right? Trying to pull the Ancients over so if it, just in case. The Battlefield can cleave him, though. Like The Battlefield cleave can stun him through the Carapace. So he has to be very careful here. They've got Hawk Vision on him. Yeah, but I think they he sniffed it out. Ooh. I mean, it was a very obvious move, and suddenly all five heroes are gone from bottom, so not netting them any kill. And the counter smoke here, five men. Nyx Assassin in prime position to break the smoke, and he did. Well, they already saw it, I believe, with the Hawk. True, they did. They also saw the ward already with the sentry ward, so yeah. D ward soon. It's movements from T1, but well countered by Omega. They, they've played the map, and I, I think I've said this two times already in the last like three minutes or so, but they, they're playing the map really well. Um, uh, the point here now is Zephyr's got that Blink Dagger. It's something I talked about earlier in the game where 
I think this could be a big moment for them if they use this Blink Dagger the right way to start off a fight. But again, I, I think your counter to that was, well, what about the Centaur when he's got a Blink and, uh, you know, he can really ruin your initiation and he's got that Blink, he's ready to go. Yep, he also has a Stampede. It's going to be quite difficult to take teamfights now. They just have a lack of damage on the Radiant. Like Centaur very tanky, Beast quite tanky. Even Nyx is not the easiest hero to kill. They really got to find the Skyrath Mage, who is like now a big portion of the damage in the Sniper as well. Juggernaut needs to be careful that he doesn't get roared. Axe is flying in, and that'll force the Blade Fury right already. Away. And look at the damage coming out of White Bond. Purification. Avalanche comes through. Spike Carapace is there, tossed up into the air, but they get the kill on a Zephyr. The look over is the primary one is going to be thrown over on a Cuckoo. They get the kill to the Omni Knight. So now two heroes dead. Carl just running away. Omni Slash is bouncing. They only get one of this in CML. Silence with the up. Ancient Seal on a 23. They toss him away. That might keep him alive, but the blink as well as the stun comes out from Sam H. They take out 23. Down goes White Mon. Ultra kill for Mac. Wow. Just the amount of damage he can get out. How could I ever doubt this Beastmaster, man? 5,300 damage done by by Mac. <laughs> That's insanity. Yep, never bet against Beastmaster, and this could potentially... Oh, Skyraf, okay, good picker, but they still have to forfeit the Roshan. Ooh. He's snatchy, all right. It. The finger comes out, but they... Okay. They, they killed the Rosh. Wait. And it's snatched by Mac, so not bad. Can see the replay again. White Monk cannot be out of position like that. Like he had to repel the Grimstroke, which can never happen. Like you need it on the tiny. There's just too much damage coming out from the Skyraf again. And Beastmasters, look at the X's. More X's. More, more X's. X's. <laughs> I mean, he kills the Nyx with the Omni Slash, but more X's. Another axe. With that Ancient Seal, it deals so much damage. It gets amplified by a good 40%. Man. Whew. Beastmaster, man. Finest creation. 9-9. Nine, nine. Close in kills, but not close in net worth in the moment. And you want to know what's crazy about it? Because we're talking about the Beastmaster. We're praising him because he's playing perfect. Soon it's, I mean, soon you're going to have a sniper that's built up and farmed. And he doesn't even need to be close to the fight. Oh, Grove Bow picked up on sniper as well. And Blink Dagger. Like, it's going to be very easy for him. To position. to position himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's going to be super easy. And, and when these dishes are quite a bit of damage already. Yeah, and when you've got... I would say three heroes that can frontline for you because Nyx Assassin wants to go in with the Spike Carapace as well as the Vendetta. You've got Centaur, who's naturally tanky, and the Beastmaster, who's in your face with the axes anyway. Uh, Sniper, where where does he fit into the equation for T1 of being the hero that you need to be able to kill? They almost have a perfect RPG lineup here. Good frontline, good backline DPS. Yeah. They're just lacking a healer. But if you have enough damage, who needs heal? Heal me, heal me. Lost? Can I get a lost? Can't die if you just kill them. Yeah. They just don't have a healer. That's how but it works, man. You don't die if you don't get damage done, yeah. Well, bottom to two should be forfeited here. Juggernaut pushing on the top one. So he's got the Sanjin Yasha. Yeah. He's working on the Ags and mm -hmm. then the Scotty, which, if he can get to the Ags, I think Sent that's okay. That keeps him safer. Oh, he's going to get Bunk on. Bunk, blinked, and he's caught. But not dead just yet. Inkswell trying to get him away. TPs are coming in, Soulbind used. That's going to connect the Skywrath over to the Centaur. But for nothing. Maybe keep Omega back from chasing. However, Sam H, he's got Stampede. They can close the gap. Mac has a Blink Dagger as well. Is he going to try to go in? He has Aegis, so he can be a bit more daring. I'm but a little surprised, surprised on the lack of aggression. aggression. Yeah. That's I mean, giving him an out. They just want to play the game slow and steady. Can't blame him. A lot of teams that keep rushing to do things, you know, they end up losing quite badly. So, 6k gold lead, steadily building upon it. And they're really rich on those two cars. Yeah. The Tiny's falling behind quite a bit. And he's going full support as well. Looking rough for T1 here. We have not seen of the three games with Tiny the maybe the damage viewer we were expecting. Yeah, I thought he was going to itemize into damage too, but. Well, potentially he hit for staff, and oh, he blinked on him. Couldn't get the Radiant's toss back. He, he just lost the vision on top of the stairs. He tried. That yeah. was a good attempt. It almost. Honestly, I think Smoke. T1's not upset with that because with the team there for Omega, that could have gotten him killed anyway. So he gets out of it. It's an interesting smoke by T1 again. Carl. Inkswell on he him, doesn't but doesn't make the move. In. He's scared. Yeah. He has Heavenly Grace on him and Inkswell, but he's like, ah, guys, I don't know. It's usually a bad sign if, if you're tiny with Heavenly Grace and 2.7k health with a fade to go in. 
And the Solar Crest help. And the Solar Crest. And the Omni Old. And the Inkswell. And Primal War is going to be used up for the Green Stroke. Over. They look over at White Mon. They'll get the kill. And yeah, I, I mean, the Dire are moving in. They're going to try and cut off Cuckoo as well as 23 at the He's pass. Him. <laughs> Ooh, Silence. Stein, 23. Boy, oh. be careful. Wow. He just took so much damage. I thought Real the fight fast. was over and he just walks in. Tower he just got saved. Yeah. Good job on Cuckoo there. But you can just see how how hard it is now with this net worth disadvantage. Three Avalanche goals. toss, but this is on the Centaur. Is this the hero you really want to get? He's taking a lot of damage. He's All right. Dying. Finger in. They kill Sam H, but that was a trade for Carl. I do think he expected to get out of there with the four staff, but he just got taken out immediately by the next assassin stun. So again, not a really favorable trade. Gold build. So slowly but surely building. 7k gold soon. Okay. And when is this Juggernaut really going to be in a position to kill anyone? Like, he's going Aghanims, which doesn't really give him damage. And he's going into Blink Dagger, which doesn't really give him damage. But then after that, he's itemizing up to damage. So, like so yeah, the, is the, the question becomes, does the, is he, what he's got it queued as, is that going to be the way he gets it? Probably. Like, you always want to have this axe. Like, we have seen a couple of people, especially in the Chinese region, kind of forgo the axe after the nerf. Just itemizing to, like, butterfly, just damage overall. But he still favors the, the Ganims. So, we have to see how that plays out for them. Because right now, he is the only damage that they have. Would you rather see him go to the Crystalist than the Blink finish off the Daedalus after? To be honest, I would rather him not go for Axe at all, just like maybe Butterfly into Blink, just to be able to really threaten heroes, you know? Like your Omni Slash needs to kill at least one hero, best case scenario two. Like you jump on his beast, or they kill. found Carl. Again, just gets blown up by the Skyrim. Yeah, the Mystic Flare is doing so much, and it's only level two. I mean, that combined with the Ancient Seal, of course. And the Double And, and the Veil. Yeah, it's an insane amount of damage. This is a problem we have seen repeatedly. Oh, good dive, but nothing comes of it. Like a lack of damage can just mean that you can never initiate a fight. Yeah, you don't feel confident going for it. Yeah. You can just see how hesitant they are here on the radiant side to ever start a fight because they know they don't have the damage. And this item build of Jack, as I said, doesn't really allow for that. You know, it doesn't give him damage. Almost 10k ahead. Yeah, just gonna get rougher and rougher. Honestly, I did not expect Omega to keep the down, uh, keep the game as well as they have. You know, like I thought they were gonna break apart in the mid game. Sure, strong showing the early game, cause of heroes you pick, but then the mid game you fall apart. But not at all. I guess that also comes from what we've seen from the other teams that have been promoted to the ones towards the bottom. Like our expectations just aren't there. But they're, I mean, this is great. They they're breaking expectations. Omega is playing really well. Yeah, way exceeding my expectations at least. And a series like this, this early in the season, is massive. Yeah, especially against a team like T1. Yeah. Like, one of the top dogs. If you can take them out down early, not only does it solidify your position, but it also, you know, could potentially eliminate a very strong contender. For sure. See him out coming over? I'm not betting against uh, Beastmaster anymore, that's all I know. Yeah, that, that might be the mistake that we've all made. They're going to go through. They've got the Blade Fury looking for the finger. <laughs> not going to throw it. Dead before, and that was the swift slash used for the first time that gets the kill out of the Nyx Assassin. But it's little things like that that do let T1 have a breathe, have some breathing room, and maybe get more. Yeah, they need to convert that into something else. Though. Like if they can kill the Nyx into maybe killing one of the important cores, that would be really good. But the way it is right now, the Nyx kill itself doesn't really do much. They still lost the top tower, or are losing it at least. I think the only thing that that Nyx kill does is. He's usually your mobile ward, so yes, they'll sure. go for the tower, but they might not go for the kills. Yeah. But again, like all these two towers are gone now. Yeah, and that's big. Map is tiny for this tiny. Hehe. <laughs> 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 Roche back up in a minute and a half. BKB being built for that tiny. You've got. Uh, did he? Is, is he going for the blink dagger? He saved up fifteen hundred gold, so I assume yeah, he's gonna go right into the blink. But he's also got Basher queued up, Daedalus. Yeah, all sorts of items. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he thinks there's eight slots. <laughs> but yeah, like this Radiant team is funneling the entirety of the net worth into the Juggernaut now. Like Tiny is not really taking much, Omni, not really. 
So Juggernaut will have to carry this. And he will need at least one more item after the blink. But as you said, the damage is very lacking right now. Yeah, it's like a one carry us all. Yeah. He's even taking the the quiver because he knows he needs some more burst damage. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I mean, like I was going to say, it's got one carry all against probably three heroes that can carry this game for Omega. Yeah, so the good thing is Sniper in this game will never be able to survive an Omni Slash. No matter if they what get time on him. it is. Yeah. Like if he gets on top of him with the blink, he's gone. It's just can he? That's another question. It's gonna be tough. He's got the pike. Yeah, and they got Hawk Vision. They got like three frontliners as we said before. Man, even the Skyruff could like just pre-click a silence, you know, you blink <laughs> in, get silenced, you're gone. I mean Mystic Flare when it's level three. I mean even now at level two it's doing so much damage. We yep. saw it just blow up Carl. Scary prospects. Double damage picked up by the Omni. So Roche will respawn right now. Will be the next point of contest here. Smoke used. Next point of contention. Always want to widen our vocabulary. vocabulary. Oh, exactly. There's a lot of young people watching. Smoke breaks. CML, he's up there. Uses that spike carapace. Inkswell, 23. He's going to go back for the Nyx Assassin. Goes and Blades Fury right on top of him. With the finger being used, that's the fourth stack for Zephyr. No spin, they have to be careful. Oh, yeah, now they've got the stun on the two. Soulbind comes in. Avalanche as well as the toss on a Mac, who's going to pop a BKB and go after Zephyr. But the focus is onto the line. The Omni Slash is going to be used, but it's not going to be enough damage to get the kill on the same age. They'll look over as Cuckoo just gets that Guardian Angel off. They lose Zephyr, they lose White Mon, but White Mon. He doesn't have buyback, Zephyr does, and he used it. Cuckoo, he's got he's 50 dead seconds Lion. dead. And Lion's gone too, wow. I'm, I'm That's a so buyback and dead so fast. The Juggernaut committed the whole Omni Slash on the Centaur, he didn't even drop to half health. I feel like if he used it on the Beastmaster, that guy's dead. Would be a much better target for them to actually be able to win this fight, but now it's a 4-1 four, four trade, basically. Nick's bought back as well, sure, but they're getting another Roshan. I like, like, I hate to be that guy, you know, but told you so. There's just no damage. Who do you give this shard to? Sam H. Beastmaster is, I mean, not Beast, uh, Sniper is a, He's already he already bought his, his one. Okay. Yeah. Skyrock. Nyx Assassin, okay. What does God, that do? it reduces All the enemy magic yeah. resistance. Oh, Jesus. Okay, sure, why not? <laughs> 40k <laughs> head now with that shard as well. Hmm. Moving at 536 movement speed. So T1, ever since they added 23 Savage, they went into this 4 Protect 1 style. Not digging it, not liking it. Yeah, it's, it's a, a big difference to the play styles they had. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan. Like, Dota is not played as a single core game anymore. We can see why. I just, it's not a cuckoo here. It's not what I'm expecting. Primal War is going to be used. They already dropped the Mystic Flare. He popped the BKB. Inkswell, four staff, all the way out of the hands of Omega. But Sam H, it's looking like he wants that moment to just go in and blink stun. He grabs the stun. It hits onto 23. They'll follow it up with an Earth Spike. That lands onto the Centaur. They'll use that Swift Slash. Finger Double comes finger. out. And that lands. CML is the only one who dies, though, to start this one off. Sam H then falls afterwards. Cuckoo and Zephyr are gone on the side of T1. Avalanche comes out. That hits on the back for a second. Does it send them back? Is this enough of a deterrent? Seems so. They just want to play safe, wait for the support, wait for the offlaner because he's one of the more important pieces to really protect the sniper. And Omni Slash is just off cooldown again. Oh, he's going into a Scardi actually, like... Hmm. That's not damage. Yeah. It's going to be tough. I, I don't know if 23 can do it himself. And we you were talking about how it's not single core. You know, it, you don't really benefit a lot from single core lineups. And I have, I just, I, I said at the beginning, Omni Knight doesn't feel like a cuckoo hero to me. Doesn't. He's more on scaly heroes like Legion Commander and stuff. But I, I still do hope that heroes. he changes his mind on the Juggernaut because otherwise I can't really see a silver lining for them here. Because they're just getting more tanky on the dire side. Sniper building into the Daedalus now as well. Once he has that, he's actually going to hit like a truck too. Oh, more like a poisonous mosquito, I guess. Except he's not poisonous, he's just... Those don't exist, do they? Mosquito. Don't they? I don't know. Do poisonous that. mosquitoes? Poisonous bee? Maybe? Poisonous octopus? That's actually... Those exist. Good. I so believe. Covered my bases. No, maybe I'm thinking of the jellyfish. I don't know. 
Yeah, no you're idea. a pretty big jellyfish. That is true. 13k gold eat now. Lotus Orb picked up on the Centaur. That means they could potentially go to Omni Slash City together. Ooh. No, they're just having a good party, a good rave you know, all by themselves. It turns into basically Dragon Ball Z. Basically. For where like where they don't show seconds. anybody and then they show up for a second and then yeah. they go back out of frame. Just not the cool sound effects. Yeah. Right, Beastmaster now Octarine Core picked up. Means massive raw range. Roar now has a 26 seconds cooldown, by the way, because why not? That's I don't know why he has a level 20 talent that reduces the raw cooldown by 35. That is just ridiculous. It should not be here. It's that like a 25 so talent. Yeah, that really is. I mean, do you want that or 30 boar damage? Uh, I don't know, man. I think 30 <laughs> boar damage is pretty damn valuable. <laughs> but yeah, like... Uh, is Be it? Beast will get a change soon, don't worry. The 10 damage nerf did not... Quite impact him. I mean, yeah, B came out today. <laughs> where, where is the C patch that shows that talent getting moved to 25? All right, they're smoking up. Okay, he went back into a Crystallis. Let's go. There's some sort of damage now. But Omega, once again, prepared completely. Counter smoke. In the right spot. Yeah. Oh, they find the sniper. That could be a big one to get. Oh, they got the sniper. avalanche as well as the toss. They ink swell on when, top him, but it doesn't pop. Out? He doesn't go. 23. He's on the other side of the fight. He goes into the Nyx Assassin. They'll get the kill on the Nyx Assassin. They look over at Mac, but Mac's going to heal up, and that's just not enough damage. They got the kill on the three. They take out the Lion as well as the Grimstroke. Omni Knight fought back. 23 by himself. He's gone to Tino. That they did it. not focus on the Sniper, and he gets to survive. He gets the output, the, all, all that damage that he's been building. I don't know. I, that seemed not coordinated from T1. Yeah, not I mean, the way we've seen him in the past, that's for sure. I mean, he's still at Aegis, so sure that kill might be a little bit risky, but if your team goes in, you got to go in as well. Like, you've got to be on the same page if you want to mount a comeback. Yeah, and that was certainly split. Yeah, and now Jug is dead for a minute. They're probably going to get one or two sides here. Without the Jug, no chance of killing the Centaur ever. And he's, look at the range of those axes. It's just barraging them at the tier fours. And there's nothing they can do about it. You can't jump him. You don't have your jug. He, do you want him to buy back? Like, he, you, I guess you have to see whether or not they go for something more after the, the set of racks. Yeah. Snipe a little bit timid. But yeah, they're probably going to choose to play safe or arty. Avalanche? That's forward yeah, for Tiny. He needs to be, yeah. The, the raw is already off cooldowns. 20 seconds. I was so surprised by it yesterday when it just got brought twice in like a minute. Jeez. <laughs> it doesn't seem fair. To you me. survived long enough to get roared twice or did you buy back? I bought back. Oh my and god. And then I died to the same way again. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay. So Omega's playing it very, very calm, which is good. You know, then no rush whatsoever. Sniper, Daedalus soon. And that fight near yeah, the Roche pit just wasn't even close. If, if there's no proper communication, these fights aren't going to be close. I, I want to say that there is an opportunity for T1. They win a fight and they get Roche. The timing's line up. Definitely. That's your way back I mean, in. They can still win. Like, a six slotted Juggernaut is still a damage monster. Yeah. If you can get there. If the game doesn't end within like the next five minutes. He still has a ton of support behind him. Jesus. But you can just see like, like the mentality of man. Radiant is very... Very fearful, you know? Anything they see, oh, it's Wait for you to get out. Let me, yeah. yeah, now that's been since the beginning of the game. We yeah. saw it. Oh? They can definitely feel the pressure. Like, kudos to yeah, Omega, you know, to be able to make T1 feel the pain. Can't feel the fear. Yeah. And it's pre daedalus Sniper really hasn't been touched. They're going to blink it once again. Avalanche toss. Primer War comes out. But he pops the BKB. They'll get the kill on the CML. Now they're going to look for more. What did he BKB roar? is going to run out in just a second. I swore he roared Carl there. But it was gone instantly. Yeah. Like as the BKB came out. Yeah. He didn't get heavenly graced. But he, he has a status resistance talent that he didn't skill. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I definitely heard him scream. Yeah. I have to look at it after the game again. Yep. There's the Daedalus. And a very manly Jack stream. Timeless Relic. Okay. All right. 
Luckily, not for the Beastmaster. <laughs> a lion, here you go. Oh, Panda Edge Sword, good as well. Top tower is under attack. That's, yeah, that's a, a, a nice neutral to have. What's the best for the beast? Build? Is it, I feel like Timeless Relic is better than Spell Prison, probably. Mm. Just to increase the damage of those axes, the raw duration. God, he's got an E-boy too. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Um, Timeless Relic, please. Yeah, yeah. Your time was so okay. And then Spell Prism. Not actually that necessary for this deity. No, I mean, always nice to have, but... A tiny one into a Dagon. Okay. So right tick tiny got buffed a lot. Not magic tiny though, but he's, he's going into the... They almost have Magic this, damage. This Dato is for Jug. Oui, oui. Omelette de fromage. <laughs> Dexter's laboratory quote right there. <laughs> I mean, Juggernaut is still, you know, keeping up in the net worth chart, but. BKBs get popped again. Mystic Flare was dropped, I believe. Solbon comes in. It's an illusion over to the center. They're trying to get to the back lines. Bleed Fury away. And it already looks like T1 want to disengage from this. Was he throwing the axes or looking for the Primal Roar? Either way, he doesn't get it off under the tiny. Carl escapes. Yeah. So the problem is, if Juggernaut commits, it's all in. Like, yeah. the entire team needs to follow up. He's not getting out unless he kills them. I think the BKB was early, so now you got to think about, exactly. can Carl survive? Can he do anything? Can he input to this fight? And the answer is no. So I think that shows just the good decision making from T1 but still they're down 21k and mm -hmm. I mean it's a decision like that that makes it possible for them to come back. It's, it's a very hard like jug game to make decisions this oh, game on. because as soon as you go in as I said you are committed 100% like your team has to follow up. No oh, where this time. is Carl? No by the either. That was completely out of position. Yeah I okay. Level on schnipper. Okay. <laughs> Sniper turned into a machine gun guy. Yeah. Radiance bottom that, that's a, a good one again. That's they got promoted. Sure. And especially when you're sieging high ground, right? It's like super timely. Think swell, jump forward, blink away, and nothing home. <laughs> nothing home for T1 just yet. Yeah, he's keeping his buyback on Jack. I would love for him to just buy out, get all the damage he can, because at this point, it's the only comeback avenue to the game. Yeah, I don't think two lives is going to be more effective. Inkswell once again, and they've got the stun. But where's the damage? CML looking to make a jump and a stun happen. It just doesn't. Well, mistime after ranks. the Rex was gone. Yeah, T1 is a little bit flustered here. Omega. You is know? the 25 going to be enough here for Jug? If he doesn't choose the health talent, it could potentially make a difference. Because plus one second Omni Slash duration is quite potent. But the, the problem is Beastmaster has a very long range E Blade now for that sniper. So even if they got on top of him, killing him is not going to be easy. Got it. He's got his level 25 talent, the plus 4% wild axes damage amp per stack. Yeah. Daedalus is finished now, so there is damage on it, Omni Slash. Oh, what is the damage going to come out? And he'll go to the Swift Slash, Blade Fury right on top of the Nyx Assassin. They get the kill on his effort, they're going to take out the Lion, as well as this Grimstroke. Both supports are gone, Primal Roar is used, that's out on a Cuckoo. e -blade thrown, tossed back, they're trying to save the Omni Knight. With BKB, the Guardian Angel comes in, and they will save these three. They haven't bought back on their supports just yet. I'm trying to maybe draw Omega in. Double their Sniper. God, double damage, has the extra range from level 25. And he's Swift got leveler. Up. Yeah, he's going to have Swift Blink in a second. <laughs> yep. The armor of yeah. Looking good. Looking very good. Now going on the Nullify on Jug, I like that. I just got to max out on damage now. But Roshan is already gone. Oh, it's the third room. 27k, 28k. Should be an Agalims as well. Unless it was the refresher shard. It was uh, the shard. What? Centaur also got Agalims except I didn't realize that before. So minus 30% damage as well. Uh, where does the... <laughs> you get, congratulations, you got damage. But I well, got damage now reduction. I've got damage reduction, yeah. yeah. And I got an E-Blade. And they got all sorts of ways to mitigate your damage. Good luck dealing any. Centaur's going for overwhelming blink. Sniper. He's oh, got cool, cool. coming out. Be careful. They found him. They, yeah, they caught him. There's the stun. There's the kill. Easy does it. He's got buyback. But it's just not where you want to be.
I'm actually really impressed with Omega here, the way they play. Like, they don't rush anything. They play it very calm, collected. They always get the pickoffs before they start going high ground, so there's no split push coming in. They know, like, perfectly how to finish this game. Like, we have seen so many teams in the past, even higher caliber teams struggle with that, you know? Yeah. Om Omega doing a very good job here. This is a big check mark. Yeah. But once again, my trust in T1, not getting rewarded. They're breaking my heart I'm, over I'm and over. Pretty sure we both said Omega. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> I think it was only the cost that went for T1 for some reason. Yeah. Mac moving forward. There's the blink as well as the primal roar. He's in between the tier fours and he just doesn't care. That's wild. He's used the shard. He's got another primal roar ready to go. Wow. Had to use the refresher at least to get out, but forced two buybacks. <laughs> yeah, simple buybacks. And look at the damage on the 23. He just gets stunned up. He with the he now, Primal up. Roar. He's gone. Buys back. They'll use the Guardian Angel. They're on top of this Centaur, and they might have the damage to get the kill, but it certainly takes a while. And he does have buyback. And he's going to TP right over to the outpost. Cuckoo trying to run. Mules up into the air. Hit with the Impale. Lands on the Lion, too. Zephyr hit with that E-Blade. Oh, Soulbind with Sniper hexed up. Do they have the damage to get the kill here? He still has Aegis. So even if you get this kill, I don't know how much it's going to be worth. CML gets low. The Blade Fury's there. Three heroes dead as they're going to get one back from this Aegis. They've got the Primal War out of the Jug. They look over. Lotus Sword stun again. Out of the Sniper. There's the Avalanche and the kill on a Tino. They're looking forward, looking over at the Beastmaster. Matt trying to team with the BKB. The damage just isn't enough. They just bought back on Sam H. There's the Earth Spike from Zephyr. They've locked him down. They've killed him off. And he is gone for 114 seconds. There was a ton of buyback expended for Omega here. And they still lose the team fight with an Aegis even. Now this is the sign that we all were looking for. This Juggernaut dealing a ton of damage with that Omni Slash. And the talent coming in. Woo! A little bit out of position there from the Sniper. Because he wanted to kill the Omni Knight. And wow. I... That's a big, that's game changing. If Sniper is out of position, he still dies very fast. You know, now that leaves a lot of time for Radiant to get some building damage done. You can see it here again in the replay. 23 getting caught out, getting blown up immediately. Had to expand the buyback. But if you just look at the Sniper position here. As they're going deeper and deeper, he's moving in, inching forward. Does he blink in? I don't know how he ended up there. Oh, they found the Grimstroke. Lightmon gone for 100. Yep. Making it look easy. And Raw still up. 23 has to be careful here. They're just trying to cut the creeps, but the tier 3 low? Eh, half health, alright. Jug doesn't have buyback for 6 minutes. Like he needs to be very careful. Okay, so Refresher Orb, Octarine Core. Yeah. That's double Raw. That's like three roars in a fight. <laughs> oh, four. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> What's the cool on it? Uh, still 26. He doesn't have any cooldown reduction item. With Spell Prism, that goes down to almost 20. Carl? Caught. CML, he's here. There's the refresher. Another primal <laughs> roar. Oh, Guardian Angel was used. Guardian Angel for this all magic damage. Maybe didn't read the patch notes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Carl's dead. It was He had a spree. No? For uh, what it's worth, he was getting it done a little bit. No, I, uh, he will definitely have to buy back here unless they are fine playing against Mega Creeps. Right, there's the buyback. But Sniper is just barraging the Rex. Lion's Finger does a decent a chunk of damage. I would love to see him get an axe. He's got seven stacks. Like, it could be a game changer. BKB blink in on the Tiny, amounting to nothing. They just can't reach. Like, you can just tell T1 is very desperate here. Megas. Can they defend against Megas? I... They can. Yeah. They can still go battle through and Jack. It's just. You know, pushing high ground against Sniper or Beast is yeah, they a nightmare. So really, even done that yet. If this game is ever going to end, it will be like at minute 900. Ooh. Alright, buckle in. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. I mean, if it's going to end in T1's favor, rather. I'm still buckled. I'm buckled in too. Maybe we get to see minus 60 items. Ooh. What could be game changing here? Fallen Sky for sure. A good old pirate head on the sniper. Or Ballista on the sniper. Why not? <laughs> We've got 13 minutes. <laughs> we got some time. It feels like this game has been that long though. Okay, look. Look, Ben. Either the game is going to end in the next three minutes. 
or 900. Okay. So either the 50 minute mark or 900. And you know he's serious because he called me by my first name. Yes. Buckle down. 4K health juggernaut. It's good at your tanky. But can you deal the deeps? So far, the answer is no. Yeah, he's not rolling in the deeps. Definitely not. He's rolling in the health, though. And again, this wouldn't be a problem if you had a second core. Don't pick four protect one lineups and pups, guys. Is Tiny going to do enough here? Nope. Dagon five? I mean, is it double Dagon with Grimstroke ult? But and finger? Centaur, you know? Burst damage is there. If, if Lion gets an axe. In That's what I think he should do. In 20 minutes. But he got a Shadow Blade. Look, the scaling is infinite on him, okay? If he gets 700 finger stacks, he's going to be at 30k health. I mean, he's got, what, seven now, so an extra 280. That's hitting for... No, it's it's not 280, it's 490. Seven stacks? Yeah, for 70 per stack. True. Why does it say 280 here? That's I bonus damage. Ah, oh, right, 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 right. Sorry, sorry. I was talking about the health. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So once he's I, was 20, I was talking about something else completely. I completely just missed the mark on that. Okay, nice. That's why we're casting together, you know? We always... Making sure we got uh, we take good care of each other. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Sorry, I was talking about the damage because I was talking about the dagon, double finger. Yeah, but he needs an axe for that. Then you have the Grimstroke hold plus saying. double AOE finger, the the my special. Yeah. Would you, would you get six stacks on that on that uh? Yeah. One six finger. On one finger. Yeah. That was legendary. I'm okay. making take a lot of time. I'm a little surprised, but they could be waiting for the next ages. Yeah, I mean, they need, don't need to do anything. Sniper still has a slot to go. The probably going to wait for the Roshan, which may respawn in five seconds. If they're really lucky, it respawns instantly. You see how lucky they are. Oh, Eagle Song. Not very lucky at all. 2 minutes 30. Or Jack Loss's Eagle Song. Yeah, and that's which, for the which shop? Blank. The bottom, right? He went to the enemy secret shop? I don't think so. Well, there was a swift blink on. That hurts. Because it's worth being actually adds a lot of damage. Right. How much is it? Attack speed. So that is another 25 Agi, 50 attack speed, and 50 damage that you lose. They actually don't even have all four tier fours yet on T1. Yeah, yeah. They just can't get out of base to get them. <laughs> I mean, this could be a valid winning strategy, you know? You wait till they're 60. You get all the items, the enemy can't get them. You lose a fight somehow. Juggernaut gets a pirate head, suddenly you lose. Sniper has AK gold. Yeah, and the Moonshard already in his inventory. So he'll just buy the MKB, eat the Moonshard. Now the question is, why is he going MKB? Oh god, CML. Way to do it, just do that perfectly. Break the smoke, make this difficult. Primal Roar, that comes out, there's the Refresher. And he's got another Primal Roar to use. That's going to be used on a Cuckoo. They get the kill on a White Mine as well as Cuckoo. They both are dead without buyback. And Omni, as well as the Swift Slash, both used to no avail. They've got the Nullifier as well as the Dagger coming through onto the Nyx Assassin, but they lose Zephyr. It's a three for one. Nyx is dead for 115, but you are fighting 2v4. And what is Tiny going to do? Look at the range coming in. They get the kill on a Carl, and it's 23 against the world. Four minutes, not three, but you're basically on it. Basically. Yeah. But yeah, I would. Primal Roar. All right, Mystic Fire. <laughs> yeah, he just gets blown up. All they have is the Grim Stroke now, and Omega seal up this game. And they still have GGing out. Oh, there no. it is. GG. <laughs> I, mean, I would have put a bit more energy in there if the outcome wasn't clear for like, oh, already like 20 minutes or so. Fair enough. Props to Omega. Yeah. I did not expect them to play this well at all. They played a very calm game, won the laning phase, won the mid game, won the late game, really didn't make any sort of huge errors. Yeah, they won everything start to finish, which was uh, impressive, something we've yeah. really kind of yet to see from the promoted teams and or last season with the teams that maybe felt like they were on the cusp. So, I mean, that's a great showing. It's only game one. It's only game it one. It is a series. There is a chance to bring it back. Difficult yeah. to win, yeah. But game one? Kind of sold me on them, you know. Yeah. But it doesn't mean I will go with them game two, though. Unless they pick a Beastmaster. Yeah, we'll have to see about that. Yeah, so we'll see uh, what they pick for game two and the breakdown game number one. Again, it's that handsome panel. Back over to you guys. I'm blushing. You're too kind. Yeah, Omega Esports, or um, Smart Omega, exceed expectations. 
And part of it is in due in part to the fact that Beastmaster is still quite broken. It doesn't really matter if you take off a little bit of damage off of a stack. I don't, I don't really think that's quite enough. It, it, it's like I hear in my voice, why did I bet against Beastmaster? That's Who's controlling the game. Sniper isn't even the problem. It's like I hear someone saying that. Oh, it's... It's, it's, bl it's Black. It's still <laughs> Black still talking how Beastmaster is uh, imbalanced. You guys are dum-dums, you know. You're betting against uh, Sniper. Uh, it was a good Sniper we're game. We're betting against uh, Smart Omega because we're dum-dums. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there, there we go. Uh, I think, like, it looked like a good Sniper game. And not a big fan that they, you know, put him on the safe lane but he only died once and then still managed to get a good amount of farm power threads plus hand of midas with the cdr talent like you can feel that goal kicking in uh, they were prioritizing beastmaster because they know beastmaster is still you know a it's super so stupid <laughs> the zero is <laughs> just so stupid it's I, I, I don't know it's just not it's anti-fun like the, <laughs> this thing should not exist because oh. all he does is just spam the axes they come back he uses the axes uh. keep repeating it it's just like axes uh. keep repeating it oh my yeah. god <laughs> nether shawl e blade the damage you know the magic resistance coming out from the sky it, it's just insane like you you can feel in the end like the, whoever they get a roar on but we can also, you know, talk about good itemization. I liked itemization on Sniper this time around uh, with the introduction of the uh, grenade uh, plus a blink dagger plus a hurricane pike. Like, you can catch him. The only gap closer pretty much is Juggernaut with the blink, but he's not afraid of that. And also Tiny, they have ways of saving him with the with the Centaur Stampede if, if necessary. On the other side, to talk about more about itemization, this Tiny, he decides to go for... Uh, not right, like Utility. right click, right click, tiny got buffed. I don't see the reason why this hero should be played as position four, or you know, mid is also fine, but, but you want to get mid. this. He was yeah. four here. It's, it's you want to still get the tiny. items yeah. that you can scale with. You want to get that crit, you want to get that agonims, you still want to get the shard, you want to be able to scale this time around. Like you're building items that your supports are supposed to buy. Like he, he bought a four staff, a blank dagger. These are two gap closing items, a lot of gold, which doesn't give you any kind of damage. So that's like four plus thousand gold, 4.5 actually. You put all their uh, eggs in one basket and that's it's not enough. Savage. It's, that's it. it's like, just gonna backfire. Let, let, let's power him up and let let's me, let me Let me just finish Lizard, you know, and because I didn't come but to I'm the- But I'm angry. My biggest, you know, my biggest problem here is but. also, but uh, Omni Knight getting Yule Scepter, second item. <laughs> Like, you're yeah, playing for yourself. You, you're, you're not actually, you know, playing for the team. If you want to get a Dispel mechanic, you just get a Lotus Orb. It's great against Sky. Or Graves. Great against, sure, even better. Like, why don't you get these two items? Like, it's super. If you're putting all, as you said, eggs in one basket, just put that Lotus Orb, put the Solar Crest on your uh, uh, Maybe he on your was Omni. playing the Long Con. On Juggernaut, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. Rules into whatever the hell that 7K... Wind Waker. Wind, Wind Waker. Waker, exactly. Sure, it's you, you can buy that later. It's like a cheap <laughs> item, but it's... Uh, um, Lotus Orb is a bit more expensive, and it gives you so much more. No, I, I, I don't like the Omni overall as a pick. I went with T1 mostly because of the name. Lesson uh, learned. Lesson learned because... You don't bet against Beastmaster, not right now, not in this meta. Omni Knight as well, Solar Crest, Yules, Phase Boots. You just don't feel the presence of the hero. He's not really accomplishing a lot. And Tiny, that you picked to be your mid laner, your playmaker, went for the playmaking uh, items, but he feels like a support. He doesn't really feel like on what would you rather have, a Tiny or a Beastmaster mid lane? Right now, in this meta, it's Beastmaster 100% of the time. That's why. I think this is the build to go for because like the cast range from all other heroes got removed So you kind of still need ether lens to not get so close to the fight But be efficient you want to be using your ability these multiple times in a team fight I like that also getting a glimmer cape not going for like a greedy route, you know I'll rush Agon Scepter or uh, anything Skyrath mage. Yeah, Sky yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah definitely. 
the glimmer also just shows that he's selfless. Like you see, so many sky rats just go Aether Lance or Aethos instantly. No, I mean, it's not his job. They to had do a damage. setup. Yeah, no, they had a good setup. You know, they had multiple stuns, so he doesn't necessarily need to get that Aethos, which is also dispellable by Omni Knight. So, like, really, really good choice from Sky there. Yeah. So they share the MVP a little sure. bit. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but that Ultra Kill on Beastmaster. Osfrog, please. That per patch that just happened was not enough. This is the thing that I first checked when I woke up. You know, there's a new patch. I get the, the update information. I open it up. Like, let's check the beast match. I don't care about the other things. Do you ban him every game? Do, do I ban him? No, I still ban techies. I still ban techies. <laughs> Fair enough. Your priorities are in place. Yeah. I agree with it. Well, we can find out who they'll ban after a quick break. Top level comfort in sponsoring this event. We will be back with more T1 with Smart Omega right after this. change of Welcome back to uh, Boom, oh, no, not Boom, T1 versus Smart Omega. I'm thinking, I'm putting too much brain power into this Smart Omega thing. They did get boomed. Bo by the boomstick of Sniper, that's what you were thinking about. Of course, yeah, I mean, there was more Beastmaster that I was concerned about, yep. which I hope they ban. I don't think that, whoever whoever has first pick, you know, uh, you got it. don't pick Grimstruck after, instead. Yeah, after that first well, game. What's Grimstruck going to do for you? 
Grim, man, Grimstruck is just losing games. I've been paying a Shoot, tell me the numbers. You you found out the numbers of cost. Uh, at know, least as of yesterday. Uh, you, you checked the numbers for me, didn't it's true, you? True, I did. So, so yesterday, Grimstroke, despite being first phase banned very, very often in upper division and lower division, in all upper divisions, it was 37% win rate. But if you include lower division, then it's a 53% win rate. So lower division winning you know. with Grimstroke. Yeah, but the upper division, they're they don't, like they don't get yeah. it. We're focusing on the upper division. I mean, they're here, they're right? too busy uh, uh, getting these uh, no points in Soulbind until level eight. These upper division kids think they're think they're so hot. I, I'm not, I'm not really sure how you come up to that idea when you have a lion in your team. Like if you don't have a good, co it's like almost as bad as if you had a lich Grimstroke and you don't pick, uh, you don't take Soulbind. It's Peculiar. It yeah, it reminds me of the good old days, you know, the good old meme where you buy Aghanim Scepter but you don't skill ulti type of a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Which hero was that most viable on? Zeus, uh, Zeus, I don't know, Lina before, you know, it's an old meme Luna now. Luna ulti without Lucent Beams. Oh yeah, that's oh, a yeah, classic. Oh yeah, the classic one. <laughs> that's actually viable versus Rubik, right? Like, don't give him, <laughs> <laughs> give him a spell to steal. Here, go take this Eclipse. <laughs> Well, right. we have our draft number two, okay. Smart Omega versus T1, and lo and behold, T1 have learned their lesson. Oh, Smart Omega ban out the Puck and the Luna, T1 ban out the Io and the Centaur, and T1 learned their lesson. They're like, oh yeah, Beastmaster, forget Grimstroke. Okay. And guess what? You can get Grimstroke now if you want. So Smart Omega, they definitely showed how strong they are in uh, Division 2. However, in the lower division, that is. If they take this game, if they manage to win against Beastmaster, uh, they earn the respect. They're the yeah. gods. Uh, they'll, they'll gain the respect. That's it. Agreed. Uh, Rubik, this might be the answer for the Beastmaster with the cast range, possibly Ether Lens. You know, steal that. Get your own Aghanim Scepter. Get your own Ags and then just spam it. Also played against Rubik with Beastmaster. I played a few Beastmaster games. Like you need to get the axe. Though. Yeah. That, that's the point. Okay, here we go. Like, it Oh, no. Oh, man. Oh. You thought oh. playing against one Beastmaster is bad? What about two? Yeah, this is and it's the same debuff that stacks. Yeah. That's, that's, so that's the best mor part. So Morphling axes and Beastmaster axes, it all looks the same in the eyes of Ice Frog when it's debuffing an enemy. So wait, right now all you need is three heroes to entertain Smart Omega. Like some frontliners, right? All you sure. have to all you have to draft is just someone to make noise while you're sitting in the back and throwing those axes. Damn, this thi this is a really good this idea. This is a you know must have Aghanim Scepter game on Morphling. Eventually, not a, not it doesn't necessarily need to be a rush, but you could potentially and just be annoying with the axes. I wouldn't mind seeing that. Maybe like a Dragon Lance. A Dragon Lance is a very potent item right now. Once again on the Morphling. So they reduce some aspects of Aghanims on Morphling. It still gives bonus cast range. That's not as much, right? Yep. And the exactly. mana cost reduction thing was that removed or is it still a part of it? Because it used to reduce the amount of mana on all the spells that you were casting while you were in Morph. Was it removed? There's so many patches. Yeah, there was uh, like a bunch of aspects of the Aghanim Scepter that I can look it up. Yeah, you can look it up. I'll talk about the Morph. Meanwhile, you know, the things that I know sure. that they were changed. You a, know, is so a his counter ad to him? Sure. Well, his adaptive strike is uh, 50 mana. Uh, his shift is much better now, even though it costs 10 mana. So playing into any kind of mana burn, which they have an Ex-Assassin, uh, looks... Good, you know, Nyx Assassin just feels good against Morphling at pretty much every stage of the game. You have that Carapace, Mana Burn. Let's see what they decide to ban out. They banned out the Bat Rider. The bottom row knees up, the bottom, the upper row knees down. Different, different uh, approaches to the seating game. Yeah, this is a bad posture. Yeah. Like you, you need to sit differently. <laughs> Posture it's check. it's Come good, on, you know, in twenties, but when you reach twenty five, thirties, you know, I can it's tell you, yeah. yeah, you you can feel, you know, that you did not sit well when you were younger. So better, you know, get some water, stay hydrated. Especially if you're uh, hard carrying your team, your back's gonna hurt oh after yeah. all this. Okay, so morph you the the scepter also used to reduce 
uh, the cooldown by 30 seconds. Now it reduces it by 20 seconds. It used to give 600 cast range bonus. Now it gives 300 cast range bonus. And the mana it's loss enough. reduction is inherent to the no, spell. It's with not the a part Beast of the spell. Master Axes, the 300 is just enough. Oh, you just, just you barely. You, you, can, you can barely touch You really with don't it. need any more than that. <laughs> it, it feels good enough. And they ban out the A, they ban out the Drow, some heroes that might be a little bit problematic for the Morphling and, and the Beast Master. Yeah, I mean Drow Ranger with the Shard, uh, yeah. HP, and. Uh, Lifesteal reduction, also like AA, of course. Uh, Phantom Lancer, Mana Burn, something that Morph doesn't deal well against. Uh, Dragonite Rubik, I've always been a fan of these two heroes paired up together. You have a Fate Bolt, you have Breathe Fire. That's like so much damage reduction, it's insane. Unless you're just throwing axes. Sure, <laughs> like sure. if you, you don't the, in the lane though, In the lane though, <laughs> it, it's definitely strong. If they lane together, it's uh, one of the better lanes with DK. They go with the Tusk on T1. Um, th this is something that they played on 4 and as well on 5. Uh, it's a decent lane with the Morphling, can secure that lane. Also gives you that tag team in case Dragonite is on the off lane. You'll have some damage to deal with him. Meanwhile, Enchantress oh, now... Not sure why. Yeah, exactly. It's it's It was the counter to the Beastmaster, but isn't anymore. You, you can't, uh, you know, enchant one of the axes while they were flying. <laughs> it's not doable. Because Beastmaster, he does not care about his boar anymore. No, and I don't really think there was any way that T1 were going to like pick a Dark Seer in this situation or anything. If you were on the off lane, right, uh, maybe they were, they were considering, because you have Tusk, and then you put Beast mid, Morphling safely, and it, it's, it's doable, but uh, yeah, I think they picked Enchantress to counter the Beast, and it's not really a counter anymore. Maybe they just want to have like some super, not necessarily wait, wait, super wait. late game to secure things for them. Hey, 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 it's a core it's Rubik. A core it's Rubik. a core Rubik. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's oh, yeah, you're right. Did, so they're going to lane Rubik mid against the Beastmaster. He gets farm, gets that Etherlands, gets the Aghanim Scepter. They have no heroes with the attack speed whatsoever, so they can't kill the egg. Good Phoenix game. Makes a lot of sense to put the Rubik on mid because uh, he is the counter to Beast uh, in a way that he can steal the axes, but he needs axe. And Th for that, you need farm. This reminds me of the 628 patch where... OD was extremely powerful, uh, so people kind of started to play Rubik sometimes on a mid lane to be able to steal the Astral. Well, you Astral me, I Astral you, you know, I have a better Astral overall, so you have better axes on top of that. Mm, not sure I like it, you know. These heroes are very squishy, Enchantress, Rubik, so this is most likely going to be offlane Dragonite. You just put Morphling there, like, you don't threaten a kill. Dragonite cannot kill Morphling, it, like, even if it's a Nyx Assassin Dragonite. It's a lot of stuns, but he should be fine. With Ether Phoenix, uh, Ether Tusk, it depends wh where they want to shift it. Like, Morphling should have a free farm in this type of a lane. Yeah, and if you look at the draft of Smart Omega, it doesn't look very solid, does it? You you, you don't really have team fight. You can kind of brawl it out, but it all comes down to this Rubik stealing the important spells. But he will be focused on stealing only the axes, so... I want to see something like a Slark, possibly, for Omega, where he goes for the mana burn. They have, like, no real stuns. He can get out of anything, pretty much. The only problem with Slark is he, you can still hit him in ax with axes. Yes, right? like no matter that's what he correct. Does. How about a uh, Bristleback? But you can dispel it, also. So yeah, that's, yeah. That's it, nice it's thing. not, it's not, it's good versus Morphling overall, so I can see it working. Good attack speed versus the Egg, too. Bristleback... It doesn't matter. For you mean for uh, Smart Omega? Yeah. It doesn't matter how tanky you are. Those axes will go straight through you eventually. So. The longer you stay in a fight, no. the more damage you'll get from the axes. Because Beastmaster, he doesn't <laughs> <laughs> run out of mana. <laughs> or cooldowns. Yeah. Like, you're literally using no mana. With the talent, the plus three mana region, you're full mana throughout the whole fight. Yep. You're not losing it. You need to have a diffusal carrier against... They have mana burn. They have Nyx Assassin this time around, so... Yep. Either death or maybe, you know, any... I, I like Slark. I like Slark a lot here. Um, sure. Possibly like a Naga Siren, maybe. This Phantom Lancer just completely... Phantom oh, he's no, he's bad. He's bad. Like, it he would be a good PL earlier. game. Yeah. It would be a great one. Because they don't have too much against illusions. Of course, except uh, Axes, because Axes do everything. Then how about Naga? Yeah, that's what I said. Oh, uh, it's, okay. it's like Naga and Slark are obvious options, perhaps. Let's put it that way. Versus the Morphling versus the Beast. They, they yeah. Actually, yeah. they go with the Bristle. Yeah, I, I kind of like, like Slark here now. Yep. Definitely much better now when you're playing versus a Bristle. It gives you 
a hero that's decent versus him in the lane too. Also a Silver Edge carrier if you need it. They're uh, I'm sure like you can't. All these built-in BKB heroes aren't great versus Morphling as well. Like your Nikes, Jug, they really can't play them here. Slark it sounds still like the best idea. Is Jug available? Yeah. Yeah, but then you risk giving Blade Fury to I know. Morphling. It's just like you have Punch, you have Roar. Uh, I think it's a Slark game. I, maybe I'm just not seeing too many heroes right now, but feels like this is the only win condition they can pick right now for yeah. Smart Omega. You're thinking about the hero that's strong versus Morphling, but also a hero that can dispel the axes. Because of that, You Slark. can dispel Goo, yeah. like you can dispel Fiery Spirit. And spirits. you're strong versus Bristle. In the l well, not necessarily too strong, but you're decent versus Bristle. And you're, you're not as strong like yeah. as people think, you know, in, in the early game where you're like, yeah, I'm just going to hit Bristle back. Well, he's going to hit you back, use some cool sprays. Uh, it's not that easy for his couple of levels. Same goes for, like, uh, Batrider, let's say, where, like, I mean, it's it's good for Slark on, on the mid lane, but on the off lane, like you just don't have the cooldowns ready to just constantly dispel things. It's just that there are worse heroes to yeah, play against yeah. that. That's all. You're trying to find something that can actually somehow deal with it. All right, they're showing through their time. They're not sure as well. What do you think, Tsunami? What carry would you pick here, Naga? Yeah, I prefer the illusion-based approach as opposed to like a team-fighting Slark-based approach. Because Diffusal Blade is great against Bristleback, great against Morphling. Uh, you also have another mana burn. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, yeah. What yeah, his shard is good. The thank you you get, his shard is good eventually. You know, you he might get it, but... Uh, I think I'm going to go with uh, T1 here. <laughs> and the only reason is I see Beastmaster. Mm. <laughs> yeah, Possibly even seeing two Beastmasters. Yeah, if you, if, if, you, if you go with one Beastmaster, what about two with Morphling? There is Sounds even better. 100% T1, a team to go for here. And not only because of that, but uh, Omega Esports draft... Uh, if they win th with this, they, they just gods. go gods. That Invite them straight yeah. to the Major. Exactly. Yeah, uh, give me a T1 also. Give me the Beastmaster mainly, because seeing T1 in game one, I was underwhelmed. Uh, especially seeing Cuckoo back, I was uh, having high expectations. I was like, oh, you know, it was a standard situation at the Major. Lacoste is also a T1. Yeah, give me a T1. Give him a T1. But, yeah, I don't know, his Omni Knight was kind of underwhelming. And I guess it was somewhat of a difficult Omni Knight game. Oh, but wait. all games are difficult against Beastmaster. Mm -hmm. This is Beastmaster beast offlane. Off yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. Cuckoo's playing it. And Carl is playing mid. Mid Bristleback? Yep. Okay. So the, I, the reason why they swapped it because they saw it's a mid Rubik, so Beastmaster will not even go for the eggs. Like, this time around, I think it's much yeah, more. Yeah, but then you're playing versus Enchantress, right? Sure, but you maybe you can, more. like, get axes, get one boar, possibly, yeah. uh, but you don't... I don't know. Maybe he doesn't need to get the eggs at all. Do why, why not still play mid? Then and to take boars and put bristle. We're changing edge. my prediction. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, yeah, <laughs> it's not, fine. Not it's fine. We're still T1. No, offlane. I got a bit confused. Offlane's yeah. a yep. trick, but it's fine. They have the morphling. They'll figure it out. B cup and black can also figure it out for game number two. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tsunami. <laughs> they Appreciate didn't it. realize that it was an offlane beast mid bristle. <laughs> Do you think they made the wrong pick? <laughs> no. No. Okay. I mean, this Blatzika last pick is just. Yeah, it doesn't sound that good against the uh, Morphling, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, we were they were talking Naga on the panel. You I were thinking Anti-Mage. Anti-Mage would have, like, if they picked AM, it would have definitely gone Omega here. Because I think it's a free AM game, pretty much. But then they went Bloodseeker. They went Bloodseeker. So I'm going to go against the Grain. You're going with Omega? I'm going to go Omega. I think, it, you know, 2-0 statement. Sure. Maybe. I have nothing I would like to see it, then. man. You always told this, man. You want it? <laughs> you guys have been doing that in the green room a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> it's our special. Early so, morning Bristleback impersonations. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm streaming way too much Bristleback games. And the cost and I, we play a lot together every time right. I play Bristleback. <laughs> I, I think I think names. you need to do uh, Bristleback cosplay. Me? Yeah. Uh, he's very short though. 
So you just hunch over. You got no, you get, you get a shell on your back. That's, that's gonna lead to back problems, man. You don't have to do it forever. I'm not saying this is like a forever thing. Why? But even if you just do it half a day, you're gonna be like, "What is happening to my back?" I don't know. You have bristles on your back. You'll be fine. Can I also spray them though? Yes. So if you attack me from behind, you go. Psh. I don't plan on attacking you, so it's okay. Okay. Fair enough. So Rubik against Bristol. This matchup should just be a farm fest for both heroes. Don't think either of them can really kill each other. However, maybe Carl is not as comfortable on Bristol back. We have to see. Wait and see. But then they wouldn't pick it in the DPC game. But maybe I'm just thinking too much. <laughs> 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 I, he, I, the lane went pretty evenly the first game. It did. Obviously, that's a completely different matchup. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing else. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's nice. Oh, yeah. So he still goes for access, of course. Initially, I thought maybe this is the kind of thing where you just don't skill access at all. Like some ODs wouldn't skill Astro against the Rubik, you know? But he's going to go skill access. They'll have two Beastmasters throwing access. I'm sure two Beastmasters will still be the one Rubik, right? Like You'd he like to think so. Where does a Bloodseeker find success in this game? Uh, you give your Q to the Rubik, who throws more damaging axes. Already, they deal 26% more damage. And you give him the bonus spell amp from the Q, which is another 30%. Whew. How much is that? I don't know. I was expecting you to do the math. At 56%? I, I, I already <laughs> forgot the numbers. Yeah, 56%. On the axis, extra per axe, and then it stacks up even more. <gasps> Adapt to strike with the tag team. Yeah. Trying to go on a CML. Great shards. That could lead to first blood. Breathe fire. CML surviving long enough, and he's going to walk away from this one. If he had an oof instead of a bracer, he would have been dead there. But choosing to go for the more defensive route. Are you more of an oof person, or? I like oof. I think it depends. There was a point where we were seeing it on, like, every undying in the Chinese region. Yeah. I mean, Oof is just very, like, it's a very potent item. Like, it's, a lane can snowball because of it. Right. Like, I wouldn't mind this Bloodseeker to build an Oof, for example. Or even an of Corrosion, maybe. Nice two-man stun. Yeah. 23's got to be careful. He didn't exactly have the best performance last game. Um, I think obviously there was a lot on him to get done in yeah. game number one. The biggest thing I could fault him for is his item build, I'd say. Because if you play a four protect one, your one really needs to deal all the damage. Right. And he went quite against that uh, line of thought process. And he's going to try to steal the bounty rune here on Carl, but it's not an, an impale kill him here. Carl getting hit by the impale. Mac trying to stay in front of him. Carl, one more shot. There's first blood for Mac. Rubik already a thorn in the bristle side, which is weird because he's got a hard exterior. Uh, another very cocky play coming out here from T1. Like, oh, gosh. They just look yeah, very different. It's not the same, it's not the same style. Yeah, for it sure. really isn't. Like, I, I, yeah, Beastmaster feels more cuckoo oriented, that's for sure. He's going to TP out top, get silenced, taking a lot of damage. But he's not farming top, like, not well at all. Yeah, and that's a full TP back to base, too. Yeah, and Bristol getting pressure a lot middle. Like, I play a lot of Bristol, and Rubik is not a matchup where you should really feel pressured at all, but he already died. You know, like, I'm sure the game from now on should be quite easy for him because they don't really have good heroes to kill him, but, yeah. Like, already not off to a good start here. I, I w wonder what they're going to do to hurt this bristle. Like, where, where yeah, it's are gonna, they? It's gonna who, be tough. Is somebody going to pick a break for them? Like, yeah, in, in the mid game, it's going to be really hard to kill him. Like, once he picks up his Eternal Shroud... Maybe even a vank on top of that. Yeah. I mean, incredibly tough kill. Which is also why they're landing in middle. Definitely feels like it, this could be a, a bit of a problem for Omega, if not handled precisely. I'm just really worried about his top lane here. This Beastmaster against Bloodseeker is not fair at all for the Beast. And Bloodseeker should be free from here completely. Whereas Morph... I guess Morph against DK is also really simple, so that should be fine. 
It's supposed to be simple, but it feels like a 23 is taking a lot of damage. He's kind of struggling with the lane. It's not like the easiest morph lane we've seen. It's not the easiest, but it's also not the hardest. They don't, they don't really have any good stuns to kill you. Ooh, As I say that, the wall, if you got a stun in the face there. Whew. Yeah, if they had just had the plus one, potentially, of uh, CML, that might have been enough to get a kill. Yeah, but he's stalking middle. Wants to make sure he secures that rune at minute six. They're coming over mid again. They've got the telekinesis. Carl might be in trouble if CML can land this stun. That's exactly what he does. But you look at the quill sprays, and it's enough to push them back. Yeah, but Max got health. his own quill spray. Like, this Bloodseeker is already running at 5.30 MS here. So, Morphing is usually very low health. <laughs> now your Bristol as well. Got to get that health region up real quick. Rubik is going to get the minute six rune. Unless Zephyr can steal it. Ooh. Oh, he got it. Got it. Very important. That haste refill could have been big. Yeah. Could have also just rotated top of that one. All eyes, again, pretty much on 23 Savage here. Is it the same scenario, though, where it feels like one has to carry the entire? No. Like, we'll have to see what item build Beastmaster goes for. He's going for the Dominator, okay? But Bristol generally is considered a quite strong hero as well. So Sam H has to be careful here. Getting but chased. Tag team's doing a lot with the help of 23. CML coming over. Lands the stun oh, on 23! Oh, no! Everything <laughs> is falling apart for them. That's the aggression being the, the problem for them. They really feel confident going for, for the Dragonite. Completely losing track of CML. Yeah, and the Enchanter stole like three big creeps away from the Bristol back. Like everything is going wrong here for T1 once more. Tino's coming in. He's level six. He's got Rupture. Carl, how far can you run? Carl's gone. Oh, yeah, he's just going to die here. They've got the Rupture. They have the control. And they're going to leave it for Matt. Wow, that is... I've... It's certainly not something that's going to happen to my pubs. Sam H, he'll get run down. Finally get something going. Much needed here for T1. It just seems like Omega has the number on all lanes. That they're always outplaying them, outmoving them, outmaneuvering them. Cuckoo has to be careful. Yeah. Ooh, he might be in trouble. Just an impale onto the boar, though. So Bristolback is not really here and likes to play from behind. His net worth is still looking decent, though, so it shouldn't be a big problem just yet. But if he dies another time, or maybe even two times, you know, it's going to be... Like, every death on Bristol hurts much more than your usual hero would. Zephyr finds Shanks. He might be in trouble. He has no heal. TP. He's dead. No way. Oh, he was trying to get a stun out, but yeah. there was weird reactions coming in from that exchange. Level 5 now is Zephyr because of that. I'd certainly love to have the Enchantress getting a little bit more out of this. The Nyx Assassin, you really... CMO, he's been in, involved in two kills. They need to find him six. That's a big part of this lineup for Omega. Definitely. He's going to be mobile ward, setting up for a lot of kills here. And they know that, so Mac is just going to the jungle with that cool spray that he just conveniently picked up from the bristle. <laughs> One of the best spells to farm jungle with, of course. Even better if you're Rubik. Ooh, Arcane Ring. That feels great. Actually, Rubik with this, like, every quill stack gives 41 damage. Actually, pretty intense. Because the spell amp. Did the math? Doesn't have Bristol back, of course. So, is he going to hold on to Radiant Quill Spray? The like, not the entire time, obviously, but it's good for him right now. Would you rather see him with something else at the moment, though? No, at the moment, it's fine. He's just rushing for his axe to be able to get the access from the Beastmaster. That's really his power timing, this right. game that they're looking for. That's why they instantly picked it against him. Would also be nice if he can steal the shift from the Morphing, just to be sitting at, like, 2,000 plus health. With those Beastmaster axes, it's going to be incredibly hard to kill him. And he's just farming up his decks right now. Going after Shanks. Catch the Enchantress Gone again. well far out. That's just a plus five dying again, though. The gold lead still 2k in favor of Omega. Beastmaster really struggling here, not even 3k net worth. Which is what we expected. Like, Bloodseeker just one of the strongest laners. Rough. Tino, he's he's got the Maelstrom, he's just got to get it combined. So that'll come out, Damn, he'll have so the Maelstrom, fast. and yeah, it's good farm for him. And on top of that, great farm right now for the Rubik. Yeah. He's been on it. 
I he's farming super efficiently. Yeah, yeah, with that quill spray, a lot of stacks coming out from the supports. He's already level 10. Out leveling the clock is always Radiant's a good thing. Bloodseeker also completed free farming. Pre 10 Maelstrom is insane. Yeah. And his uh, Rubik is still bigger than him. <laughs> and he's, look at this, from, from camp to camp. They have so many stacks. Stacks to stack. 3k gold now. Like, yeah. And he's using strictly so farming. Much more yep. Same score, but 3k gold lead. I always get called out for being like fake hype, but I, I for me, stacking and like efficiency on taking those stacks mm. to me is one of the most exciting things. I know that's pretty Radiant stupid, but it does take a lot to put that together. To be able to make sure that you can efficiently get everything, for me, it, it's just, I don't know. That's one of the most exciting things for me. I, mean, I definitely agree. Like stacking is oh, CML. super good. He needed to hit that stun. Carl thinking about chasing under the tower. Mm. He's not quite that strong in terms of damage yet. If he had maybe two plus on that, he'd go. But you had White Mana away and Zephyr backing Dude. off. I just thought of something else, man. When you have this axe on Rubik, you steal the the goo from Bristol. 950 Ooh. AOE. That can potentially be a teamfight winner. Because the AOE is massive. Yeah. Uh, wow. Rubik this game feels pretty damn good. We haven't seen a explosive Rubik game in a while either. Shanks. Snowball over to Shanks again. This is Both on to an and Yeah, that's... How did you hit him from like 500 range? <laughs> <laughs> Monkey King range right there. Uh, even further than that. Seriously. Monkey King Penta Edge. <laughs> Sam H, Hood, Falcon Plate, Treads. He's so fat compared to the uh, Beastmaster 1500 gold behind on Has the Goku axe. here. Axe already completed, yeah. What's he gonna steal? He stole cool spray. spray. Okay. Fair enough. Helped him all his way. Why not just keep it? He definitely wants those axes though, which are right now. Only level was effort. They see him. They should be able to get this kill. And there's the vendetta hit with the stun snowball. All right, Zephyr. He's still dead though. Walrus punch onto the DK. They're coming through. Mac trying to output as much as he can. He does have that cool spray to work with, and it's starting to pile up and be a problem for this T1 side. I mean, they lose Cuckoo, they lose White Mod, Tino's running in, they look over at Carl. They just can't commit. Mac not feeling as strong just yet. They're just getting mauled. He's is, is Mac in trouble Mac? here? Mac, nah, he's fine. I want to see him take the viscous nasal dude. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Still didn't cast it though. But yeah, you can just see them, they're getting mauled here. Like, they will definitely need a good team fight on the back of this egg. A good roar, a good egg. Dyer's they need to be able to take a team fight. Attack. Omega's just outpacing them so much. Yeah. Two games in a row. First game, okay, you know, maybe it's a flu. But if they do it again here, which they are right now, there's some impressive stuff going on. And again, it, and I know we were proving that they can do it last game. But it's another one of those tests. Can you work a good laning phase into a good mid game and finish? Right now, it looks like a pretty big yes. They're coming bottom. They probably want Tino. They need to wait for this E blade here on the. Uh, They've the got morph. the vision. They might just go. Tino knows. Or oh, does he? Yeah, he does. Or maybe <laughs> going back and forth. Does he? He might. I don't know. <laughs> Possibly. His movements are certainly showing that he has an inkling of a feeling. Yeah. And he's just kind of going back and forth, like, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Am I here? Are you not? While Dragonite is pushing middle, tower almost gone. 200 health left. I say Chantress has so much farm. Shanks, who's been killed three times. I, I, I say so much. For the five position, coming in and, and getting, uh, or for the support and just getting that sword pretty quickly, that's fine. Icarus dive, Zephyr. All right, Icarus dive, Walrus Punch, Sun Ray onto Sam H. They'll go to the Supernova. They're going to try and run from this. Snowball charged here. up, and now the Primal War is even used. They're going to try and turn this. They've got the Rupture on the Carl. They finally get the kill to Sam H. Omega, though, just don't have the damage. Here comes the Morphling, turns into the Nyx Assassin, looks over with an adaptive strike on a Tino. Mac, he's still now holding Fire Spirit. He takes attribute the Attribute Shift. shift. See how much he goes into the Strength? Of course, and uh, now he he'll stole the goo. steal goo. Okay. That's max eight charges, or eight stacks, rather. Well, let's go. I want to see him use it. Me too. 
but at this point he didn't yet. And he didn't actually go much into the strength at all. He wants to keep his attack speed, his armor. Fair enough, I suppose. Sh should have gone all Angie. Should have. 400 HP Rubik. <laughs> Getting him one shot yeah, by. What's gonna kill him? <laughs> There's almost e here on Morphling. That's the really strong time from T1 here. Yeah, and that wasn't the cleanest fight from Omega either. It was not. Beastmaster still struggling. At least he got a medallion now. Mac really wants these quills and nothing more. Yeah, I mean, they, they really just picked it to counter the Beastmaster axis, but he's just not scaling them. Level 1 axis. No, he doesn't have to in this position. No. I wonder if he's ever going to max them or just keep it that way. Because you kind of sabotage the Rubik if you don't max it. But it also feels good to max if you get axe. It does. Kind of makes a hero feel like, yeah. Yeah. It's the jump. Oh, Arcane Rune. Let's see if Bristleback makes a move with this. Tino, soon to have the BKB. The question is, this with the Maelstrom, is that going to be enough with the e that they're going up against on the Morphling? Like, Morphling came into that fight, and it seemed to disrupt everything, and, and they really didn't have an answer immediately. They still have a lot of damage going through BKB. If it gets raw, the Morphling right clicks hurt a lot. Yeah. The Bristol back right click hurts a, lot, hurts a lot, and they still have the punch as well. Ooh. So it's not like an auto win. Phoenix on straight refresher. Interesting. I mean, they don't have the best egg hitters, I suppose. I mean, Bloodseeker is pretty damn good. Especially with the BKB, it's kind of risky to go into a straight. Double Supernova, like if the first one dies. I thought maybe Halbert would be better into the refresher. And Halbert him before you Supernova and then kind of keep yourself safe that way. Stealing quills. He really likes those quills. Yeah. Like if he keeps quills the entire game, he should be somewhat of a non-factor to be honest. Yeah. He, I, he doesn't want to run in a quill. No. It wasn't doing a lot in that last fight. No, it wasn't. He actually stunned himself because Morph turned into the Nyx and carapaced him. He has to be really careful about that interaction. They're going Roche. They're going straight Roche. Right. E-Blade picked up. Let's go. Down 3k. Like, Omega, do you have anything Wait, for this? Are, are they not aware? They're not aware. There's a free Roche. Or maybe are they aware? Okay, they're aware now. Yeah, they've got to know. They've got to know. See him out. Stun, but wave four. All right, what are they going to steal this time? They've stolen the attribute shift again. Got the other dragon though. form. They'll hit the stun onto the bristle back. They're looking over as these impetus shots are hitting on a 23, doing a decent chunk of damage. Tino. They've got the shards. There's the snowball coming through with the BKB being popped by this blood seeker. They go after White Mon. They've got the steal on the walrus punch. Okay, and they walrus punch Carl from a distance. They've got the blood right down. Doesn't land, and Shanks is dead. They're still looking forward, trying to go after Sam H. He's stolen the axes now. This bristle's too much to kill. They and can't can kill he him? throw it out and do enough damage? It doesn't look like it. I mean, it's constantly coming out on the Carl, and it just doesn't do enough. They'll take out CML. Here's the problem we spoke about previously. They don't have the damage to kill this Bristleback, who just stands in their face. Yeah. Especially with the Arcane Rune, spamming out Goose and Quills. Off cooldown, just way too much damage and slow coming out from him. Easy Roshan for the Morph. Game is suddenly looking very good for T1 here. Yeah, it's certainly a sign when you can't even tickle this Bristle. Yeah. Good damage control. And then converting it into strong timings, getting that E-Blade, forcing a fight at Roche because they know they're stronger. It's good stuff. And Bloodseeker didn't really feel strong. very impactful at all, right? No. Well, he got focused, hit with the Walrus Punch, puts you up into the air, and then I think by the time that that was done, he started to walk away. Yeah, I mean, he also ruptured a Morphling, who... You know, Morphin doesn't really care much about that. I don't think that Bristle really does either. He does not. The only way to kill Bristle is if they stun him with like a DK while he's facing them. Which is not easy. No. And I mean, the stun is only two and a half right now. Yeah. I think you can follow up with Take other the stuff. ages, okay. Wait, how did he die? Oh, the Nyx killed him. Full Agi. Never go full Agi, guys. They even had a sentry there. Huh. Wow. Uh, yeah, and that ends up being a kill, and uh, it's just... A very important kill. Like, with that Aegis, the next team fight should have been pretty damn easy for this uh, T1 side, but taking it away from him is big. Smoke. Instant smoke up, okay. Max stole the one axis. <laughs> they just do no damage. Ben, really wishing you had something else. 
Yeah. Uh, Ruby just feels pretty lackluster this game if you can't get the axes, to be honest. I mean, they're still stacking up quite a bit of damage here. Uh, yeah, Dragon Toe comes out, and all of a sudden, they've got the impel to follow it up. White Mon? <gasps> oh, the axe is almost enough, but there's the waveform coming in as well as the E-Blade. They've got the telekinesis out of the Boar Fling. Can they follow this up with anything enough to get the kill out of the Boar? He's stunned 23, himself. he's stunned. He's in trouble. Mac from a distance. They've got the axes. They'll get the kill on a 23 and White Mon. Oh, dear. Way too far forward on yourselves, and you get caught out and killed. Big mistake here by 23, going all in onto the Ruby, couldn't get the kill. Got himself Carapus stunned and uh, ended up dying. Wow, this is where this Aegis pickoff really comes into play. Like, if he had an Aegis there still, that fight goes into T1's favor. But yeah, even his level 1 Axis seem to be <laughs> stacking up quite a bit. I, I, I don't know if he's going to up those Axes. I... After, after that fight, do you? No. I think if they lose this game because he maxes his axes, his team is gonna have <laughs> a potential pizza rhymes. party. <laughs> Already? Yeah, that's how it goes. We told you not skilled axes, you skilled axes. See ya. Here's your pepperoni slice. Yep. Blink dagger picked up for the Rubik. Mjolnir now also done on the Blood Seeker. He's, he's farming at an incredible rate. Yeah, shot is very good. Kind of counteracts Morph's Morph ability because, of course, the more you morph up, the more max up you have, the more damage he deals. And that's just the math. That's just the math. You're sitting at 4k health, 2%, 80 damage extra, plus all the other stuff. It's going to be a lot of damage. Or as the guy from the commercial would say, that's a lot of damage. I thought you were going to go with a different commercial. No. I don't know if you have it by you. For the guy that's just like, that's a good price. <laughs> I don't know that one. <laughs> Carl. Oh, he's got the dragon front. tail. All right. But damage. All right. Silence. It's there. Do they have the damage? Icarus dive over Stop at hitting the him from behind. Stop hitting him from behind. Yeah, they need to find a different position to hit him. Behind's probably not the position you want to Stop hit. Stop hitting him from behind. <laughs> <laughs> God. Now, Nick's assassin. He's dead. And the snowball comes all the way over. But uh, now you're in a bad spot. White mines. Okay, still See turned out okay. 23 though. All right. Still Wave forms just again. 2.2k health on the Ruby. Man, one more Quill and that Bloodseeker is dead. He just refused to run in front of him. <laughs> yeah. They were just hitting him from the back. And then CML dies. That was so close. Like one more Quill. He goes back to full health and the Bloodseeker is dead. Yeah. That could have been dangerous. Yeah, And also almost the uh, adaptive e combo on the Bloodseeker. Didn't quite get it out. If they adapt to strike lands, he's dead. Dragon Knight also picked up the shard. He's got the fireball. That's what you think of that? Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. I can decipher what you mean from that. Oh, actually, pretty well. What do you think about that? You think it's bad? Yeah, but what do you think about the shard? I like it. 1,400 gold. I mean, you can't cost by anime, I guess. Fireball! <laughs> I don't think it's that bad. If you've got the lockdown, it's not that the, bad. The damage per second is pretty nice. But is it better than a BKB? That's a good point. We we'll have to see. But Maybe that's also is. the confidence. You hear, you think you're up enough where you can mitigate or not mitigate, but um, extend how long you want to not have a BKB. Sure, that's fair. And he has been a pretty tanky boy in all his engagements. He's gone full strength gain now. 3,100 health for this Rubik. It was 2,200 before, now it's 3,100. Not bad. No, not bad at all. Blink Tiger picked up for the Morphling, Sanjin Yasha there for the Bristleback. It, it's, it's kind of deceiving the whole tank he is because he only sits at three armor. So, sure he has a lot of health, but against physical damage, not that much. True. Against magic damage, Six armor. very good though. Now, four. Now, four. Soon, five. No, soon nine. It was nine for a second. Okay. That's because he stood under the tower. Yeah. <laughs> but it's back before. A right, big smoke up here. That's without a blink on Beastmaster, so finding an initiation. On the air. CML is always there to break the smoke. He every really time. is. But he didn't actually break the smoke, so. He's close, though. Right, Carl, <laughs> I don't think Carl was smoked, right? He was not. Yeah. CML also, he's close to the spirit vessel. Platzika. They're looking for him here. Still Viscous Nasal Goo. Okay. 
Oh. Still with Axe, and that's level four. Snowball. Snowball coming in, they're looking over. Walrus Punch, BKB, nope. White Mon in trouble. Telekinesis up into the air, they'll use the Supernova. Sunray, right clicks coming in. CML, he's gone, see you later. Support for support once more. But Supernova used. Yeah. They just can't really find a good angle of initi initiation here on the side of T1. He stole Walrus Punch, but it's only level one. Yeah, and Morph went for a Blink Dagger. Why do you think that? Gap close? Yeah, but he can't kill the Rubik anyway. He has way too much health. Morph into something else, get the gap close. Not a big fan of the Blink Dagger. I feel like what you want is right click and BKB. Like if you, if the Bloodseeker cannot fight you, this is what wins you the game. I mean, is he getting that Blink Dagger with the expectation that he's going to turn it into a Swift Blink later on in the game? I mean, sure, but, but at then this then point, you get don't it want it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Because you can't kill the backline. Like, even the engine you have a hard time solving. There's a Glimmer Cape, 1600 health. This engine is really and huge. And untouchable level 2. Yeah. This Rubik, 2000 health, not killing him. He morphed he, back. Oh, he up morphed again. back. Yeah. Disappointment. Same. Bristol back. Finish the Saints Josh. I mean, he's a beefy boy as well. I'm just a bit scared that the Ooh. Dragon Knight and Rubik will stop scaling, you know? Shanks. Not getting good a little bit. Oh, but there goes your man. Yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 like you, yeah, he was like, all right, I'm going to chase this Enchantress, and then, well, now you have no mana. Yeah. And that still is another level to get. Tell me, though, if Rubik and DK don't scale because they don't really itemize the scale, who's going to deal damage? Same problem as game one for T1. Because mm. right now, Rubik still feels very strong, but come minute 35, 40, he's he going to get less and less impactful. I guess. I mean, he's going for a Hex, which would be nice. That'll be great against the Bristleback. Yeah, but damage. <sighs> yeah. Disables, sure, they have a lot of disables. I'm just I guess it becomes afraid. who can clean them up afterwards. Yeah. And I, the spell stealing... Can Blastica do it alone is the question. Maybe. I, he's farming well enough. He is. He's got the Lincolns to feel a little bit more comfortable. I guess just my point is, like, the longer this game goes, the more I'm favoring T1. Simply because they have, like, two or three... Maybe even four in the mid late game, tanky boys. I guess, but that also could depend on Tino's itemization, right? Sure. I mean, he's itemizing in to Lincoln's Lincoln's BKB. I hate it. You know what I think about that? Double defense. Are they giving up another Roshan for free? That's a shard. Yeah, that. Mm, and that's going to be shard probably for Bristle, I would want it, right? Yeah. Hairball's nice. Wait, who got it? Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. Actually, Phoenix They, they did it. gave it. No, they gave it to the to Carl. Really? Oh, okay. I thought Phoenix took it. But Phoenix bought his own. So Carl, now the hairball. Hairball's nice. It's pretty disgusting too, though. Yeah. When you think about it, the way it comes from and stuff. I mean, I was annoyed when my cat would have a hairball, but. I, I think we had this conversation him. before, but where does he get the hairball from? I think we we did have this conversation before, because he's not... Not a cat. Yeah. What is he? Where Dyer's is the hair coming from? Is under he's an armadillo, right? Well, is he? I don't know. I have no idea. I know Pango's a pangolin. Rupture and blood right. Ooh, nice God, a lot of save. damage, but the snowball save is going to be on a Sam H. He's got the owner shield on him. Walrus punch up and in the air, but now Papa the BKB going the other way. They've got the right clicks. Can they take out the super? No window? they can. Cuckoo surviving for now, and behind them is trouble. Matt coming in. Not sure though. He can really add a lot to this fight. They get the kill though on a three, and they're looking over now at 23. And Carl, Carl trying to survive. He's quite tanky. He's been a problem before. Lincoln's gets popped. 23 goes in, throws the breathe fire right out on a Tino. He's, look at this. They just don't have the look damage to Carl. kill Carl. Carl's going to try and do this 5v1. He gets stun up again. They just can't kill him. They have five heroes here against one, and they literally can't kill this Bristle. And Morph set. Bye-bye. Tipping out. I... Wow. All right, T All right. T1 is playing pretty sloppy. Like, Morphing has been hitting the DK for about 10 seconds in the team fight before focusing his attention on any important target. I feel like if he just tries to kill the Rubik, or even the um, Bloodseeker under Raw or something, you know? Like, like, don't focus the guy that doesn't do anything, basically, is what I'm trying to say. It was a good initiation from Omega. And, uh, yeah. Like, T1 needs to step up quite a bit here. They have this Aegis, sure. They're going to make good use of it. Morphling, I thought he might die there, but I think the focus went to Carl for a second and, like... 
they were just, if we kill Morphling, we might stay here too long. Yeah. I mean, it's not happening. Like, we spoke about it. This Bristol sitting at 2.6k health. Very painful. And he also hits very hard. Like, Bristol is not a joke in these kind of games. Maybe Tino is going to be looking to go into a Scotty. Yep, he got that queued up. Maybe even a Silver Edge after that. Wouldn't mind seeing that at all. Because then you can really kill him. You can really break him. DK, BKB, and it looks like Silver Edge. I oh, so he's going through the Silver Edge. Okay. I still wouldn't mind too, honestly. Yeah. But one Silver Edge is, uh, especially against St. Jasha, three seconds. Can work, but you need to be on top of him right away. I just don't know if they will be. And his farm priority is not that high on this DK anyway, so... We'll see when he ends up getting that. But now BKB finished on him. And I wonder if they're going to shift that because... Ooh, dust, CML. shards, CML. Hits the stun. Impetus damage coming in. Not a lot of mana left on Carl. They'll still get the kill on the CML. CML, more like CYA. S uh, Sia. Sia. Oh, yeah. I tried, cause I tried to... <laughs> That's what I said before. I was like, I couldn't put it together. Yeah. Carl. Playing oh, with shanked. fire here, literally, because he's getting sunburned. <laughs> his impetus damage is just not doing enough. And look at the E-Blade shot the damage. wave for him. Mac is getting slowed up. Yeah, they've got the telekinesis, but they have the stun onto the Morphling coming around the side. They've got the front board that's going to hit on the Mac. And the it's a good Look at the damage. That's going to kill off Mac. They've got the kill onto three. These heroes are going to buy back onto two. And they'll take out the egg, but four heroes gone. The buybacks don't look like it's going to be enough, but they look over. And Tino, Tino is just doing so much damage. Going after 23. Oh, takes out the Aegis. Carl's going to try and turn this around. The impetus shot's coming in. It's Justin to go to his back. They really need to rely on Tino. The Lincoln's gets popped. The right click's coming in. The waveform is there. Tino ends up dead. Shank on the run. This could be a full team wipe, but he's not going to go under the tier 2 tower. Tino, he really salvaged that fight. And you say salvage is still a very big win for T1, but yeah, like that triple kill on the back of some good Mjolnir procs, I did not think he was going to be able to kill all these heroes. Suddenly, he got some 10% health back to full. <laughs> this is part of plot seeker there. Yeah. But still massive fight for T1. Cut the gold lead from 8k all the way down to 2k. A lot of kills hurt. for the morph. Yeah. Oh, shanks. Ah, he's fine. I hope. Uh? Oh, he's like, oh! Max is like, <gasps> relax, guys. He's lagging. Take a breather. All right, chat. Question. Put one in the chat if you think he's going to die, or put two in the chat if you think he's going to live. It's going to be a one. The choice is yours. It's definitely a one. Because look you, at the respawn timer. Now look at the respawn timer. Card is about to Boiling. goo him up. Boiling. When he's gooed up, Wolfram will go, spish, spish, spish. And he's gone. What skill is that? Right Just thing. the right clicks? Yeah. You, can, you can listen to it when it happens. Okay. Because it's water really hitting you, right? Yeah. More like a water ball, I guess. A pretty solid water ball. It's like when you get blindsided at the wave park. Yeah. At the wave pool. It goes right in your eye. Like, ah, I'm blind. Knocks you over. Yeah. Yeah, you literally do like a double flip in the air. <laughs> <laughs> like, what just happened? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> so funny, dude. Uh, that water pressure, I feel like for that to happen would probably take off your head, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We back in? No, not yet. So he's going to get hairballed. He's going to get good. He doesn't have a whole lot of mana. Or. Or. He just walks away. No. He even has morph and able to, uh, like, in order to slow him. He's not getting out. Go when ready. Try. Sorry. Bristol's not there yet. Wait, Carl's still lag. Boiling rage. Boiling rage? That's what Morphling said. But it, if Morphling boiled, yeah. he, he would, would steam up. Yeah. Condensation would kick in, and he just disappeared. Yeah. So why does he want to boil? All right, now All right here we go. Do we see it? They've got the dust. He's under the tower. Shanks. Nature's attendance. It was a one. Why would you doubt me ever? I wasn't doubting you. I was yeah, yeah, not please. it wasn't doubt. Explain it yourself. was it was support for the enchantress. I was backing the enchantress more than doubting you. That doesn't mean that you didn't doubt me though. No, it does. CML up at the vendetta here, scouting him out. Is he full in Agi? He's pretty high in the Agi. Not anymore. He still has two thousand health though. I mean, if you consider 2,000 health high in the edge, then. Oh. All right, there's the stun. Well, Damage coming in, and 
Ah, he's gonna survive. All right, five thousand health. <laughs> oh, he grabs the bounty rune as well. He's like, ha <laughs> ha, fools. Just a casual five k health. No problem. <laughs> yeah. Blink for the tusk is gonna be nice because we've seen how much that walrus punch really makes it difficult for Tino, especially. Definitely, actually, the BKB. Also, what I really like about Morphling now that the, it costs mana to shift. Like the the balance between health and mana and the fountain is more even, you know. Like before it was always real low health, full mana. Not anymore. It's more aesthetically pleasing. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if you paid attention to it before, but you should. Dyer are scanning. I try to pay attention. Okay, thank you. I'll do a better job. I feel like Satanic, Scotty, and this morph is gonna be unkillable. Mm. And then like this blood ticket just won't be able to fight him anymore. Although I say that, he got a triple kill last fight. He did. It's just every time it seems like Carl and 23 are the ones that they can't kill. Yeah, but that Scott is going to be a massive pickup against both the Bristol and the Morph. And we'll have to see how much he that ends now. up doing. He has 4k health himself. Why does everybody have so much health? <laughs> Rubik 3.4k, Dragonite 3.2k, Nyx 2k, Ench 2k. Is this what Dota has become? Okay. I have about 2.5k. IRL? Yeah. I'm, I'm sitting good at like a 15k. <laughs> be cool if I had a health pool. No. And a respawn. Then I wouldn't be able to bully you. I would always go down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nick's assassin. He does have Vendetta ready to go. Yeah. Roche potentially in 45. They, they do want to wait for the morph Scotty because, of course, it counters the morphing, but it also counters the blood because he heals less. And he's almost level 25. And healing less means that you heal less. 25 almost there for the Bloodseeker as what well. What is he going to go for? Dyer's of course, the Thirst Mass. His thing is the only thing that can break the speed threshold limit. Is that right? The Thirst? Or is it also capped at 550 now? No. Uh, it unlocks maximum speed. Oh, yeah. Because like in all these heroes, they... We're nerfed down to 550 now. Card is getting massive himself. He's an AC soon. He's been unkillable for a while. He's level 25. He's got the extra li spell life steal. Yeah. But he's not going full meme. He didn't go for Bloodstone. Max go BKB. He needs it. But that's what I was saying. Like He's 4 one ten, but you don't really feel his impact in fights. Not like, anymore, no. Like, he has no access to work with. He actually skilled on level 2. But th that's it, he's level 18, level 2, he missed click probably. He's like, ah! ah. <laughs> Don't order that pepperoni <laughs> pizza! Yeah. His, his team is like, ah, what was that? They have a 3k lead, by the way, T1. They were down 8k, like, what, two minutes, five minutes ago? Yeah, definitely a very good swing of fortune for them. And Phoenix, we didn't oh, talk about Oh, they want to go for the Morphling once again. 23. He is pretty high in agi here. Yeah, he is. Ah! Got this stun. Did he get it off? No, he didn't. He's probably going to die here. Oh, BKB just in time. Why He's still the heavy in the agi. He's the room Mac, oh my god, gets taken out. Warriors punch on a Tino. They're going to go to the Elder Dragon form Ruby and try to turn this for something. They've bought back on Rubik. Snowball. All right, that's going to pull him towards Sam H. Tino needs to be careful. The Lincolns gets popped. He looks over at Carl. The right click's coming in, but they're just not doing enough damage onto the Bristleback. They'll get that kill on a white bond. They'll take him out with no buyback. They'll continue fast. to chase. They've got the speed. Blink forward. Sam H. BKB turning it around. Sunroom with the Supernova. They need to get out of dodge. They'll pop the BKB on Tino. They'll look over at Carl, whose BKB is only going to last a Morphing second longer. Back. Okay. Well, he just got the BKB off in that exchange. I wasn't sure he was going to get it off. There was a massive turnaround. There was just a Sench Yasha status resistance. Yeah. So good. Reducing all the stun durations by a fourth. And Bristol again. Like, they brought him to half health, but just can't muster the damage to kill him. Do, th do they have to save him for last? Bristol? Yeah. I think him burst him if they get him from the front. With like a good couple of stunts. They've got the shard on Rubik. Yeah, I mean Radiant You can see the problem I was talking about, right? Like it feels like game one again, where they just don't have damage. Glatzik is the only one that can redeal or do anything. It's going satanic next. No. Roshan is up. Are they straight going into it or are they looking for a team pad first? It's got an axe. Yeah. Gosh, I feel like you need to go here. Axe would be great, double rupture. Or even Double Elder Rupture, Dragon yeah. form. Or AoE Vicious Nazal Goo. Yeah. For the Bristol, of course. 
and they're not going into the Roche yet. There's a very fast Roche into smoke up now if they want to make it. Yeah, Might too be too late, late already. Sorry, too late. It is. Who's going to get the axe? Is it Morph? Who does he morph into if he picks up the axe? Oh, no, it's Carl. Oh, Bristol with the AoE goo. My man, he knows. What's up, mate? You want it? <laughs> <laughs> now everybody gets it. Man, I... They do have three BKBs, though. So, no, they have two BKBs, sorry. So it's somewhat mitigated, but it's still very annoying to deal with. It's not even like Omega really let this game go more than T1 brought it back. T1 did a really good job in some of those team fights for sure. If anything, the draft was designed to kind of end it in the mid, in the early portions of the late game, but they were not able to do that. Now Bristol Morph, very scary heroes. I think if that fight up towards top, they kill 23 or Carl. Very different game. I think the game is massively different. Yeah, for sure. CML, scouty, scouty. I've still not seen the Helm of Dominator level 2. The new Helm? What is it called? Helm of the Underlord or something? Something like that. Carl? Okay. They've got vision. Do they want to do anything oh, Helm that, of though? the Overlord. <laughs> <laughs> that does sound like the sound that it would make if you control someone. Yeah, right? I told you I should be the guy behind the scenes making all the sounds. I said that you should have a sound back. Right, so like, now he's got the AoE Viscous Nasal Goo and he's using it. A Mac, I mean. Mm. That means it's very good. It's probably the best you can get at this point, which is not great. Well, axes are still level two. and Oh, no, they're level three. Okay. Cuckoo is steadily maxing them. I think he's misclicking, actually. He doesn't want to skill them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because otherwise it would be maxed already. Or maybe he's like steadily increasing. He's like, ah, I'm getting away with it. Oh, they're going to go into the Mac. They're looking in deep. They will go over and look at the Viscous Nasal Goo coming around the horn. They'll get the Supernova down, and I don't think they're going to be able to break it out as they use that Primal Roar. They've got the Walrus Punch. They'll get the kill here on the Sam Age. They look over with the Waveform. Can they get Tino? Yes, they can. He's got buyback. They've already bought back on Sam Age. The Snowball going over on the CML. They'll get the kill onto the Nyx Assassin. It's the double Supernova that kills off Shanks. All these heroes buy back except for the Enchantress. Zephyr ends up dead. Can they get anything more from this? They've got the Telekinesis. They're right on top of the Bristleback, but he pops the BKB. So Carl, he's going to start to run. Look at the Viscous Nasal Goo just going around and hitting on everybody it's on so Omega. Good, right? BKB's about to run out. He gets hit with that whip, runs a little bit faster, and out of the hands of Omega. They just cannot kill the Bristle. Yeah, this AoE Goo makes it so hard. Yeah. Like, on max stacks, it's like 100% slow, pretty much. Like, even with all the speed that Plastica has, he will be running at 100 movement speed. Scary! Very. They do not want it. They definitely don't want it. And they're going high ground again without the Bristleback. I mean, Morph is still very strong as an Aegis, but the Phoenix is still there. Yeah, Sam H, BKB, Dragon Tail out onto the Morphling, and they hit the Impale. They've done a lot of damage Satanical. here on the 23, but it's going to pop the Satanic Hook to turn this around. They've got the Telekinesis. That hits onto three of these heroes. Again, the Vistus Nasal Coup going around the horn and hitting on a CML as well as Tino. Fuels up into the air. Silence onto the Morphling. CML dies to the, the Quills. There's nothing he can do there. He doesn't have buyback. He's dead for 86. They're going to take the Ceterax mid. The power of Bristleback. And you cannot kill him, and you can't win the game. The power of letting the other team get three free Roshans. That is... Dragon Tail in. Morphling low. So and he's hit. gone. All right. First life gone. Can they get the second? Tino? Okay. Not even involved. Not even in the base at the they moment. They can't move. They got the kill on a Sam Age, and now Tino's in the base. I don't know why he was so far away. They've got the telekinesis on him, and they're going to throw him back towards the Bristle, but he's just stunned up, stun locked, and killed. He bought back, so he's dead for two minutes. They'll call GG. I don't know why he was out of the base at that point. Yeah, it's... I mean, at that point, it's really... It doesn't really matter what he does, yeah. where he goes. The game was pretty much decided after the third Roche, I'd say. Like, after that mid-team fight where they got four kills, yeah. the gold went from, like, 8k in Omega's favor way. to 2k the other way. Yeah. yeah, and that was really the game-deciding fight. If yeah. they kill that Morphling twice there, you know, the Bloodstickle lives, the game is very different. But T1 bringing it back after a rough early game, yeah, yeah. somewhat living up to expectations, but still, you don't still expect sloppy. these problems, yeah, for yeah, that team. Maybe getting cleanest. warmed up. That, that, that's true. I, c I could see that. You know, maybe yeah. getting a little bit of uh, rust off and trying to do something a little bit more. It's not the best game from them, but still a win. Omega, though, 
they're looking pretty crisp. Yeah. Like, I, I game think they three well. is not decided at all. Yeah, for sure. Hey, I think we'll see how the draft comes in Beastmaster, whatever team he's on. I guess that's the answer. Yeah. Hey, it could, pretty it could crisp, be. yeah. <laughs> so we'll see what the uh, panel has to say about game two and what they have to think about game three. Back over to you guys. Beastmaster seems to be the answer, even if you don't even use one of his spells at all. Creativity from Smart Omega to snipe out that Beastmaster was going to be first phase picked. And they're like, oh, okay, you know, core Rubik. Yep, this is a team that definitely has impressed me in this series. I expected them to not str show as strong of a showing versus D1, but even in a draft like this one, in which they're uh, completely disadvantageous, in a disadvantageous spot, they managed to make it work somehow with those Aghanims on, on Rubik early on and Bloodseeker as well. Surprisingly strong. I haven't really seen this hero too many times on that core position, but here versus the Morphling and Bristle, there were some clutch moments in which if Omega perhaps took some better strategical approach, perhaps uh, contested Roshan and had that Aegis taken away from Morphling earlier, they, they weren't far away from winning this one. Yeah, the Shard of Bloodseeker actually feels super strong against these tanky heroes like Morphling and the uh, Bristleback. Like you can see him like all he needed to do is like get possibly one more kill, then he heals up to almost full HP. And not here, like the game was already decided here. But uh, I, I like the itemization, you know, overall uh, trying uh, a bit of a th they were in a spot where they need to think differently how they're gonna win the game. You know, Beastmaster, he didn't even get the get the eggs at all because he's playing the offlane. I don't think it's viable to get it on the offlane. Like, it's much better to get the Solar Crest, which you get, like, so much value from it. Helm of the Dominator, of course, uh, you need uh, something to synergize with your aura and everything. Just also scout things out, have a bit more push power. Uh, 23 Savage, he played a really, really mean Morphling in that game. Like, he was on point, a blank dagger to close the gap, get himself in a better position, even though he was playing into Nyx Assassin, something that uh, Morphs don't like to play into, especially after the addition of mana cost on those shifts. So, yeah, overall, just good stuff. A very interesting game. I think this was the best game we had so far today. Yeah, for o sure. Overall, in the season so far, from the games that I've watched, this is I'd say probably... So the the most fun one um, you you could always kind of expect t1 to win but not necessarily after the laning stage as well beastmaster relegated to the jungle very early on carl as well i don't know if it was the lag or whatnot some problems that they had but uh, mid lane it shouldn't die to a solar rubik like it yeah it was just dying you know, there. a bit of a mistake there like i'm not sure how rubik kills you he has one ability yeah. pretty much <laughs> <laughs> just spams faithful <laughs> thank you <laughs> Well, Carl did get the MVP regardless, though, that Bristleback was, uh, I guess, uh, so it was the last pick, and still don't really know what the Bloodseeker response was about. Yeah, the shard was nice, but I feel like he just didn't have enough of, uh, like, he, he had to solo carry. You have a Rubik as a mid, you have a DK as the offlane, and Bloodseeker going head-to-head -head against two very, very tanky cores, he just doesn't really deal enough damage. Yeah, with that shard, though, it, it did look scary in a couple it of did. Team fights. Like, yeah. Both of these carries don't care too much about being ruptured, because Bristleback will turn his back, Morphling can use the waveform, get out of the position. This is why I thought I suggested uh, before the draft ended that Slark could have been a better pick. I still feel, you know, Slark could have taken over this game. Like, don't get me wrong, Bloodseeker, he, he had some really good time with the Shard, uh, you know, going in and out, zooming in, uh, controlling them with the Blood Rites where they want to fight. I still feel, you know, Slark getting that, like, he wants these prolonged team fights. He wants to be able to go in and out, uh, and then he can pretty much solo kill the egg. You're going to be afraid of uh, him getting the mana burn on a bristleback. Like, he gets one lifesteal item, possibly. Like, Satanic is also really, really good on him right now, so you have a second way of dispelling things. Maybe that could have been the pick, but uh, you have to play with what you have. My question is only, um, is it truly the Slark or the Bloodseeker or the Rubik that you had in the mid lane? Right? Yeah, I, I think... Rubik if they had saved the Rubik, do you think they could have gotten away with saving the Rubik for a later phase in the draft? Because they, they showed it. Yeah, they, they could have, and maybe, but the response from T1 would probably still remain the same. Switch up the Beastmaster, or at least don't skill the Axes. And that's the problem. Because you can always adapt to the p fact that Rubik is played against you by not skilling the spell that he wants to steal. True. He did still skill it. The he three did, he points. leveled it up. He, he got, got the third point? Yeah, he got Where's the third the point. Where's the stats, Cuckoo? 
read the patch, bro. That was at the end, though. Like as the as the game was beginning to close. He definitely out had two points, though, yeah. at like a critical stage in the he, game. He, he held it on one point for a really long time. He mm. only had one point, and even with that one point, Rubik was doing a lot. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, what what a crazy hero! What a crazy axe! Surely it'll be banned in game three, unless there's another layer of mind games awaiting us. But we're gonna jump to a quick break, and when we return, we will close out the series between Smart Omega and T1. Back to 7.29 Beastmaster. Why is this hero not nerfed more? I don't know. I just have no clue because the hero... I mean, in this game, you could not see the full potential of what hero was capable of. But if you, if you see game number one, then you can <laughs> see him just doing this every second pretty much. The hero is so strong that even without his two strongest assets, he still wins the game. Like, you had Beastmaster without the axes, you had Beastmaster without the necros, and he still <laughs> has impact in the game. That, that's ridiculous. Like, his passive, the Solar Crest, just, just having those two items from your offlane already benefits you quite a bit. Plus, you have BKB piercing ability. Like, some heroes are usually satisfied with only having one of those things. Like. BKB piercing ability, right? Like some supports that, that thrive on that. No, Beastmaster, strong laner, broken. Has yeah, he's BKB one piercing. of the few heroes that can still uh, get vision in the pit. Exactly. You know, no couriers can do that anymore, but Beastmaster just sends a hawk, sends a boar. He can do it all. Unbelievable. What if, let's say, Beastmaster ulti doesn't pierce BKBs anymore? That would dumpster the hero, I think. Like, would he be picked? I don't think so. I think with, he would. With he the would. Well, with, the, with the with current axes, yes. Yeah, yeah, he would still be picked. With the current agonists. But if that if that were to get nerfed, then for one thing, that would remove what? like one of the most iconic aspects of Beastmaster. Yeah. Which what, is what if you take everything away from him, but you only have the axes? <laughs> only have the axes. <laughs> he would be picked. Would he still be picked? He would That's still be picked, question. I think. Yeah. He would take towers slower, but he would still be picked. Yeah. <laughs> And we will see if he will be picked in this game, because I, I you have to ban Isle. That's still for sure. Ban Omega, they don't have to ban anything. They can just leave the Beastmaster in the pool. They have the first pick, so sure. they can just, just say, yeah. you know, we don't care about the rest. 
Now the hero just fe feels too powerful what he brings to the table. Yeah, we just have to see if T1 is going to... Eh, uh, well, who would have guessed that uh, some things will be banned here? Shocker. Shocker. Okay, so Grimstroke still available. Io probably will be banned out by Smart Omega. And then... Yeah, we'll see. We, we've, we've seen different uh, bans. Actually, we've seen Luna, Luna. being uh, banned out too. Hero that looks pretty solid on that position one at the moment. Not necessarily on sports. We've seen her fail quite heavily yesterday, played by Ihom, and Io by T1. So you, you, you get rid of all these uh, first phase heroes that are still pretty, pretty solid. Sure. I, th I think teams are falling into a trap where like, they just focus on the couple of heroes that seem super strong, but there's so much things in this patch that is just undiscovered. Yeah, unexplored, yeah. yeah exactly. I'm like looking at other regions. Warlock is apparently like super hotly contested yeah, in Warlock, North Spectre America. Again, yeah, War Spectre as well, exactly. And then like China and SEA, we have seen zero Warlock. Yeah. The, uh, we, we've seen some Darkseer as well, like Darkseer plus uh, Earth Spirit or, mm -hmm. or Tusk. That's also an option, maybe not versus Enchanters, but overall. But yeah, like Lacoste said, patch is very, very flexible right now, uh, un unexplored. However, you're playing DPC and you're trying to stick to your guns. You're trying what you feel is the best. You can't fool around. Like, th this is the most important thing. Like, it's a new patch. You should explore things that are strong, but you should still, you know, try not to end up with too wonky drafts because... Even though it's a new patch, you might feel like you need to experiment. These wins matter so much. Yeah. Like, yep. we've seen it in the previous season. We've seen it the, through the Major. I like this. I like the response. Centaur against the Doom. Historically, this hero has been great against Doom. You you are taking away Doom target. Like, yep. by picking a Centaur, you're saying, you must Doom me, otherwise I'm going to use my ulti and we run away from Doom. Yeah, it's literally just stampede and out. However, the reason why... T T1 open the way they did historically would be Enchantress. Like you see Ench, you pick Witch Doctor and, and Doom, and this hero just cannot play the lane. Okay. On on position four, you don't do anything. On safe lane as well, he just eats your creep. And it, it can be a bit rough. Uh, Ench as well, like a long time ago, she could she could uh, take a bigger creep and keep it for a really long time before Doom can even devour it. But now uh, the creeps di di disappear a little bit earlier. So it's not as strong, but uh, yeah. The main point Doom, is Doom got buffs. Like yeah. Doom's actually jacked right now. You know, even the previous patch, uh, I think the duration and the cooldown on the war also got a yeah. uh, bit of a buff. They took his region away. That was, sure, that was a sure. Problem. But they gave him some armor, so yeah. he's now sitting at the four armor. You buy one stats, one branch. It's gonna give, get you to five armor. So he's like edgy type of a uh, guy. Yeah, you Do know. Doom's yeah. biggest problem actually was the fact that he had no armor in the lane. You always had to work for, like, you had to buy uh, ROP, Ring of Protection, or you had to go for phases very early. Or on. pray that you get the Seder yeah. and to devour him. You're always kind of pray praying for the Ogre, right, or, or the Wolf, which now are actually, level 5 now. Are so. you even interested in the Ice Ogre anymore? With 5 armor after, like, level 1, yeah. who, who needs it? It's still pretty solid on some matchups, but uh, the levels have changed on the Wolf as well. So Yeah, you can't take yeah. it immediately. Okay, so we have Morphling and Bat coming from Smart Omega as their next two bands. Meanwhile, T1 with the Nyx so far, and actually chewing through their reserve time a bit here. All right, Yursa. Yeah, banning out heroes that are also broken right now, in my opinion, Ursa. We don't see him a lot, and that's why we don't feel how broken this hero is. Yeah, we, we can't see every hero. Like, that's the problem, because it's a new patch. You would love to see heroes He's who are not... Uh, He's showing up in, in North America quite a bit. So yeah, the hero is strong, don't get me wrong. Like, he received a bit of a nerf uh, yesterday, yeah. tonight, whatever. One, one second. It, it used to reduce Earth Shock by two seconds with the shard. Now it only reduces it by one second. Now that's what's needed. Yeah. Oh no, now you can only have Enrage for every seven seconds instead of every six seconds. He's just screaming, like, chill out, player. <sighs> Your cubs are orphaned now. Batrider banned out. I guess to protect... Actually, I'm kind of surprised by the Batrider ban. I would have felt that the Centaur would have been strong. Maybe, maybe with the new Feast you should ban out... Uh, well, new. Old new Feast. Feast, you should maybe think about banning out Nikes, but they don't. They ban out uh, the Grimstroke instead. 
Double Doom, good old school. Oh yeah, Double for sure. Coconut as well. Coconut is actually such a sick ability right now. Once it's maxed out, it's 80 damage per bounce, and it also prioritizes heroes. The I was I was wondering, you know, I'm playing a pub, and I'm like, why is this happening? It always always bounces on me, <laughs> you know, because no matter it, what, yeah, yeah. So they now it's like that, yeah. Like the the paralyzing cast talent. I think it was uh, two more bounces, and they buffed the alternate talent, which was Maledict AOE. So now Maledict AOE is like plus three fifty or something. It's wild. No, it, uh, I think it's plus. It was plus eighty AOE. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. No, so the total AOE totally, I think yeah, is yeah, like yeah. Uh, three fifty or it's plus hundred now. Yeah, so it's gigantic, but Paralyzing Cask also feels so good. You get that one good cask in a team fight, oh you're like, God. whoa, There's we're no winning that. Feeling. If if they get stuck somehow, you know what's the combo? Like it doesn't sound too good, but I've I never actually seen it in Dota. I don't believe. Like let's say you have a Darkster Vacuum plus uh, plus a Witch Doctor cask, like that that could be brutal. I've seen Mag RP into. Mag RP cask? into cask, okay. Yeah. I, I remember the agonims, which Doctor Plus these spells. Oh, the bouncing but, yeah, death the bouncing ward? literally kills everyone, but uh, yeah. The cask, the problem with the cask, the projectile speed is a bit slow, right? So by the time yeah. it hits, they can kind of react to it. Um, they go with the Lina, they ban out the Razor, so your life stealers and trolls are definitely an option for both of these teams. Yeah, I think uh, you. Maybe a better choice for Omega would be to take the troll because he matches up nicely against the life stealer. He itemizes mm -hmm. uh, well against him, so you're not afraid of him. So this time around, like T1 can pretty much do the same thing. Yeah. I like troll. That they they need some tower damage, for sure on both Pretty sides actually but I, yeah but too. i would love to see it on t1 why'd they pick ember into lena i feel like lena would be able to burn off his flame guard pretty easily in lane maybe it's a position for lena i think lena four once again is viable oh yeah we've seen some buffs to the hero but lena pretty much stays the same in every patch in in a way that if you get on top of her she's gone right and mm -hmm. you have centaur already with stampy plus you, ember yeah, yeah plus, the, plus ember two heroes can play very nicely cut into back lines. Doesn't I like just don't want to see a Corlina. This is something that I've been talking about for quite some time. You know, this hero just falls off so quickly. I don't think it's winning games. Like, same goes for position four tiny, where you might get a couple of kills, blah, blah, but uh, you don't win the games with yeah, it. Yeah, you, you see one out of 15 Lina's win. And 14 times she's picked literally to counter the Phoenix or some bad matchup on the mid lane like uh, Razor or Death Prophet or something similar that she does well against. So even though Fiery Soul gets buffed, you say that that's more of a four position oriented Lina buff as opposed. I mean, obviously it does buff core Lina, but not enough to the point that she's viable. LSA also got a bit of a buff, the AoE and uh, Dragon Slave, level 10 talent. Instead of two seconds, now it's minus 2.5. And yet, as you said, like duration is 12 seconds, which is really nice. It's above the core Lina as well. Like once and you get those like damage items. Though, yeah. Still looks uh, that way. Lina against Tiny. It's going to be very hard for me to choose who, a team which one who's going to win. <laughs> 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 because they're both so good, right, Lacoste? Yeah, this looks like <laughs> a... Or tiny, I believe. Like they could still play it as a as a core. We have not seen it in neither Southeast Asia nor uh, China, but I've heard some stories about core America. Tines, you know, yeah. playing it in pubs, going uh, one one four build with some stats. Yeah, but this is a decent four tiny game, right? You're playing with Centaur as well. You have the toss <laughs> airlines combination, but uh, you're playing into Lina and Witch Doctor. So these two supports are extremely squishy. You can blow them up on your own throughout the game, even with uh, raindrops and whatnot, neutral items. So overall, if you do get a good start, good blink, it, it can work. But we. We haven't really seen a four tiny work here, have we? No, nope. I think he lost all the games. All the games. Yep. We had one core tiny, but it wasn't him that was winning the game. It was it was that Huskar game. Skybrat ban from T1. They think it's a core tiny. It's a position one tiny. Should do well versus Doom in the lane, right? Like it's used. Don't, to yeah, don't you, you can't kill him. Like you just don't have enough to kill him. Doom is uh, way too tanky. It could also be a mid-Doom. Like, they're very flexible with their lineup on side of T1. 
could be an offlane Void Spirit, could be mid. Most likely it's just going to be mid Void Spirit, offlane Doom, Witch Doctor, Lina 4 and 5, but they could swap five things around if mean, needed. Lina is 4, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Alina and Doom look pretty solid on that lane. Um, the problem is always Enchantress if she finds the right creep, but if you manage to play again, uh, around that, if you block the camps, y you can do all right. Banning down, banning out all the spell immune carries, Juggernaut and Lifestealer taken out of the pool. Yeah, we talked about them earlier, right? Lifestealer, Jug, Jug not necessarily as much, but Lifestealer would be really strong for T1. So Troll still available. Yeah, but uh, look at T1. Look at their last two bands. They think it's a core tiny. Yeah. yeah. So. It they could be. We'll see. If they were to pick a support, then they're looking to give something to lane with the tiny. Uh, like, if, the, if they had a different position five, maybe? Something with more stun. Like, I'm thinking about the Vibrant, something that can split the fight. Not a big fan of Vibrant Enchantress duo, but. Maybe it's a possibility here where you just, you know, cancel the whole Doom. You also have a Centaur. Might be overthinking. Yeah, I think what they need is Catch, right? They need, uh, that's why they banned out the uh, Skyrat and Lion. The catch and Silence is for the Void Spirit. If you're looking at the support, I feel that's the way. Shadow Shaman still in the pool. Perhaps not the best, but an option. Where's the Warlock at? I'm <laughs> seeing yeah, so much Warlock have, elsewhere. You, you have Ench already. Because you That's have Enchantress. Yeah. Like, no, I'm, yeah. I'm not a big fan of these, like, two supports who don't provide with any kind of, like, stun lockdown. Oh. Okay, that's oh. so a lot of uh, Disable coming on from this uh, oh. little fairy. Pretty strong combination of heroes on the offlane as well. Dark Willow plus Centaur. Pretty much Dark Willow and Mars and Dark Willow and Centaur, when, when she was introduced to the game, were picked al almost always Sand King as well, so... Yeah, I, I like that. Oh, okay. I, I was thinking about the Vyvern, you know, being able to split the fight, say enough, uh, we're just going to back off. But Dark Willow pretty much does the same thing better. You know, you have stun, you have uh, Bramble Maze. The new shard is pretty sick with all the Brambles appearing and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 23 Savage Alchemist, though. They do have natural vessel builders. Amber can definitely do it. His lane, he should be laning what? Into Centaur and Dark Willow. Yeah. It's a lot of yeah. it's a lot of kill potential coming out from these two heroes, like uh, Bramble Maze into Stun. Also, I would love to see like an earlier point instead of maybe Shadow Realm just to set things up. Uh, I love new build on Dark Willow where you max the Bramble instead of Shadow Realm. Uh, maybe even put like a point in a Stun on level two just to get uh, more kill potential. It's a possibility, but it's also a very annoying lane to play into. Alchemist uh, with the Acid Spray, then you have Witch Doctor, Sustain. If it gets heal level one, it's going to be very hard for them to maybe even get a kill because Witch Doctor brings quite a lot to the lane. With hard the hard to be aggressive versus Witch yeah. Doctor. Yeah. So what team are you going for? I'll go with T1. I'll go with T1. Um, the reason is because I don't have it yet. I just love, love their lineup. I can't Perfect. explain it. I'm, I'm just thinking what's good. I'll but give Black one will explain it for me. I'll, I'll, I'll give uh, T1 because I don't think that uh, Smart Omega can end the game before Alchemist gets large. I don't think that they have enough objective taking potential. Lizard, how about you? Yeah, I'll go with Omega. Any reason? Or you want Black to explain that one also? No, I, I, I really do <laughs> like uh, these new carries in their hands. We've seen Sniper work. Now we have uh, Tiny as well. True. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, I want I want the real determination, though. Black and B-Cop, explain to me why tier T1 is going to win. You're not allowed to vouch for oh, Smart Omega. Sorry. All right. I'm going for Omega. What? Okay, look, look, look. <laughs> There's one heart, one brain, right? Brain says T1, of course. I like the draft quite a bit better, but yeah. I got to go for Omega because otherwise Lacoste is going to win. I can't let him win for free. <laughs> At least he's going to fight for it. Same reason why Lizard went for Omega. He doesn't actually think he'll win. What do you think? Wow. You really think that Lizard just went strictly off prediction game? Of course. You want to win every time. We're competitors. I mean, you're out of the run, so you can say T1. I, you guys don't have proof that I didn't pick a winner every single time. I don't. I, no. But production I think has. No, I think production is going to be like, yeah, he did pick the winner on every single one. And well, I think production will be like... <laughs> they're probably just going to throw me the win. I doubt So it. now that I have the win guaranteed, it's okay. I just picked the winning team here. Which is? The winning team. Any. The team that wins. Either of them. Yeah. Okay. It's whatever team wins. 
Sounds good to me. I mean, I called it all on. Yeah. Yeah. You're doing a good job with that. <laughs> I, I am. Realistically, though, letting the analyst take over and not the competitor. Yeah. Um, it is a really damn good Alchemist game. They don't have a whole lot to deal with him in the mid late game. Like, Tiny is good, you know, but he's going to be pressured quite a bit by the Doom. The Infernal Blade, of course, scaling on the enemy's max health. It's going to deal a ton of damage to the Centaur. To this Tiny, the Doom is going to be a massive problem for playmakers like Ember. Right. And just overall, it's going to be a very tough game for Omega to win. We've got pretty good chemistry. I like the we've got pretty good chemistry. It's a good line. Yeah, except he's not talking about his teammates, but his little goblin guy. And his teammates? Nope. That's oh. not how Dota works. No, I think it does. Sir, I'll have to remove you from the scene soon. <laughs> oh, no. Don't worry, I'll, I'll do it myself. <laughs> I don't have to stress you out. All right, thank you. How do you like this matchup? Usually when we've got... Which one? Well, we shift over top. We talked about the top matchup. All three. Are All right. anyone, are any of the three lanes really super one-sided? Not really. I mean, Alchemist is just supported by Witch Doctor because he's going to go into the heal. Just make sure you can farm comfortably to like level 4 or 5 so you can jungle. But there is some killing potential here. There's a lot of damage with the double edge and the Bramble Maze. Mid lane is literally just a 50-50. Like it's right. a 50 50 as it can get. Ember, possibly with a very tiny, slight, minuscule advantage because a flame guard got a buff in duration he can't really take it off on the void spirit until the six bot lane should just be a very classic farm lane i don't expect tiny or Eng to die here and doom is just too tanky to die as well so overall it should be a not passive game but a pretty killless game there will be some pressure but not too many kills i think okay so we'll see if that ends up being the case you're saying mid is like a 5.1 to a 4.9 advantage? Yeah. Maybe actually with the Ember buffs, more like a 5.5 five now. Because like the, the three seconds on Flame God level 1 really make a big difference. Okay. That's like an additional how much damage? An additional 75 damage. Which is quite a bit, especially level 1. It's a decent chunk. Yep. I'm excited to see how this Alchemist works out. Um, with seeing Centaur, that's, he's becoming a big thing. Like... Yeah. A big pick in the off lane. Are we going to see that back to classic Centaur Rubik lane? It's a possibility. One of the strongest lanes in the game still. It's just Rubik is not as strong as he is. Not a great hero right now. Yeah. Which is crazy. With a hero that was so consistently competitive for so long, he doesn't feel like it anymore. Not as much as he's been, at least. Yeah. I kind of miss it too. Rubik always adds to hype in events, you know? A good spell steal into a good spell usage. Whoa, what's happening? The, Everyone's dead. The black hole steal or any yeah. big, like, spell steal. Yeah. It was a cute idea last year, but it kind of showed the weaknesses of Rubik, really. Yeah. It's just, if you don't get the right spells, you're not really a hero. Like, you're just lacking an ultimate. Okay. You used to, that's for sure. Yeah. My mid lane, actually. Seen quite a bit of damage here, but it's gonna be fine. Radiance like he, got, she got uh, fire soul buffs, which last two seconds longer. AOE bigger stun, which just came into play here. Otherwise, it would have missed. Just overall, the hero got a lot of buffs, and it's a very strong plus four hero to pressure the enemy carry. Maybe not against Enchantress though, who is still the king of the lane if you don't get to block the camps. Yeah, still, still the queen of the lane, and. Uh We'll see what CML can do with this Enchantress. We've seen a couple Enchantresses here and there, and it, it, sometimes it just feels like the Enchantress isn't really doing a lot in terms of damage, but more just soaking things up. Avalanche comes out on a Zephyr. They should have the damage to get this kill onto the Lena. The question who is, is first? it first blood? It is Tino who grabs it. I say who dies first, and she doesn't even die. Yeah. Okay. The early nature's attendance it's enough to heal up CML to survive. Alchemist has no stun. Do they have enough damage to kill the Centaur? Ooh, One more! Or oh, Witch Doctor now in trouble. And now they're trying to turn this around. Shadow on strike. He's got it. That damage. Insane. Sam H living on his skin of his teeth. Yeah. By his skin of his teeth. Not on. Well, whatever. Uh, Not a native speaker. Don't judge me. By the skin of his teeth. Yeah. That's what I said. Which is gross. Depends on what you've seen in your life. But yeah. Void so Spirit. We've seen this 
pretty much all three games. I know it's early in the laning stage, but Omega, Off to a good start their laning is great. Yeah. However, Alchemist is not shut down at all. Like, he's free farming, sitting at the top of the board, and so is Doom. They're doing very well for themselves. We really need Ember to rotate to cut open those uh, lanes. Like, Alchemist needs to die, Doom needs to die. Ember right. is the man for the job. All of a sudden, eating a little bit of damage there. Needs to be a little bit careful mid, though. Back and forth they go. Cast comes out, hits onto the Dark Willow, back over to the camp. Mm -hmm. Not really much doing in terms of securing these kills, although I say that. Tino trying to run forward. He does have enough for an avalanche toss and the combo. toss, but the LSA is there. They still get the kill on a Cuckoo. But will this be a trade? Tino on the run, and CML just trying to keep Tino alive, who survives with 40 health. And hands over healing self as well. But it's the power of Lina. Like the, the stack duration charge. Oh, he has to be careful. Tino's in the back line. And he's got Soaring in five. Ooh, can they chase him? So fast, though. Yeah, very speedy early on. Oh, he got. Oh, it was so close. Almost had it. He had him with the avalanche, but only two of the ticks managed to walk out of it. Ember Spirit grabbing up the haste. Fill up that bottle. No, yeah, that is a good way to get something going. Also, claritying up, so he just comes to level four mana. Van got now picked up on the centaur. Should be pretty much unkillable because there's also no melodic. Throwing down a sentry and spotting a couple stacks here. Take up an. Take out an Observer, Doom hoping again. to see if he can get something done with that. Maybe steal those stacks. Cuckoo, though. Taking a lot of damage again. Chased, tossed up into the air, and he's dead again. Tino, he's having such a good lane. Having a very good game. And this Alchemist, though, is still pretty unchecked. Sitting at 4.2k net worth, despite the Tiny having such a free game. Is it enough, though? Like, if, they're, if you're going to have multiple good lanes here for Omega... Is just the Alk getting off to an Alk start enough? The Alchemist will need some support from the Void Spirit and the Doom. But their lands aren't going terribly. You know, like, they're still okay. Like, Doom is only 400 behind the Tiny, so it's still all right. But I really like this move from the Ember Spirit, stealing the stack away from the Alchemist. Making his life a little bit harder. We're still, though, on a good pace to, like, a minute 10 Battle Fury at this rate, which is very scary to go up against. Tiny again. Sam H. Forced to use kill. that stampede while that's happening. Bottom, Zephyr dead, and another kill there for Tino. It's just so easy. And slows him. He runs up. Avalanche toss. Gone. Too much damage. Five nothing. Five nothing. T1 but haven't gotten anything yet. Gold lead still in favor of Dyer. Because but that's also the Alk. And Doom. True. But Doom's not nearly as high. He's only got 3,000 gold. Oh, I say only. Like, for his death count, it's pretty damn high. Ooh, and and stole the rune away from the from the Ember. Radiant Probably gonna have some words there for him. Attack. What are you doing, mate? <laughs> Is that what Ench sounds like? No, but Ember. Okay. What are, what are you doing, mate? <laughs> Is everybody bristle just with <laughs> their Different normal voices? hero sounds? Yeah. yeah. Of course, that's how it goes. Once a bristle, always a bristle. Center now, starting to pressure the top tower a bit. Alchemist, 600 gold ahead already. <laughs> it's going to be a very fast battle, Fury. Yeah, they need to slow down 23 a little bit. I think they're doing a good job in the other lanes. They just need to be able to secure. They don't have the greatest top. heroes for it, though. Yeah. They have no burst damage. Zephyr lineup. might be in trouble. LSA avoided. Raymond forward, and they've got the Bramble Maze down. They have the control. Zephyr, Shadow Struck, and killed. I'll join Yugi's grandfather in the Shadow Realm. The, the Shadow Realm he goes. We have seen this so oh, many Carl? times, though. Like Carl He's just finds. walking up. Aether Remnant Searing Chains eats the Shockwave. Carl now on the run. CML is coming over. Meanwhile, Cuckoo's dead to Tino as well. I mean, they've got the slow on the Carl. He might just be dead here. They're going to run after him. They've got the Searing Chains and the wow. Shockwave again. They kill off Carl. They're getting completely run over. <laughs> Run flat. 8 0 now. Okay, like if the game goes like this, maybe Alchemist. Nah, I say that I've seen way too many times where Alchemist doesn't get contested at all for 20 minutes and just takes over the game. They will need to eventually address this Alchemist. Far under the way from his Battle Fury. It's too fast. 
They at least need to limit the space where you can farm. They put a good ward into the triangle, but they need to do more than that. Oh, he got doomed on the Ember. Oh, no. Hey, can they go and get this kill, though? And they're trying to get one, they're trying to get something, but they can't catch up to him. They look to throw a cast, but White Mon, he's just out of range. The new jungle path saved him there. Like he, he couldn't use his Quang Blade to eat through, but you don't need to anymore in the new patch. And he just TP's away. Just TP home. And there's still a remnant in his lane. Okay, that's a wasted doom, a wasted opportunity. Radiance top tower is under Battle attack. Fury, though. It's already online. Yeah, but if, you, if they can get a kill here, if they can take the tier one, shut down the map, you've got the battle here, yes, but you might not be able to do much with it if they can continue to shut you down. Carl gets away, Aether and locks him up. 23 comes in, he doesn't have a lot of mana to play with. So let's see what they're gonna do with this. They've got themselves the Maledict as well as the cast coming through onto this Ember. Good move by 23. He knows that he needs to at least try to keep the map. But they still lose the mid tower, unfortunate. But he also wants to transition to the uh, ancient area, anyways. Right, I would say another 10, 11 minutes of uncontested free farm. This alchemist will be out of control. Could be. So, Aether Remnant, Ooh, CML, first kill on the board for T1. A lot of damage being done to White Mon. They've got a Remnant. They'll take out White Mon. They're playing so well here. Ember, dodging Light Strider race like it's nothing. Like yeah, it's an really Olympic make sport. it all look simple. Yeah, with, with Slide, with Remnants, has a lot of tools to play around with. What did the Tiny go for? He actually went straight for Blink as a carry Tiny. Interesting. Usually we see like Saint Jasha and two more of the right click build, like Echo Saber. But he's going to go Blink Echo. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I hate that. And I'll, I'll tell you, and the only reason I, I think they, they've cut down the map, they've got mid, they've got top. They took out the tier ones. They want to shut down and close the map. They need someone to jump on the Alchemist. Sure. Now they do have the the Ember, but they could have a little bit more that might work out for them. Like White Mind just gets destroyed so there. Easy. Shanks has got a lot of damage with that Shadow Realm Strike. I don't I don't hate it either because there's a lot of food on the map right now. Right. The Witch Doctor's food, the Lina's food. The and rest not as much, but the Lina, he found him out. And we'll get that kill. Again. And that's you know, investment. Yeah. The blink ends up being an investment if he can use it right. Sometimes we see these tinies, they get the blink and they can't do anything because of the timing with it. But maybe here he can. Alchemist. In trouble. Damage the coming two in. Supports oh my God, him along. The, bedlam. the two supports. Thank you very much. Oh my God. All right. I, I knew that Dark Willow did a lot of damage, but not that much. Hey, single target on Bedlam level one is a lot of damage. How much damage is it per take? 75 and you get f how many four per room okay that's a ton of damage that is literally 1500 damage right there okay makes sense balance yeah uh, I, I you were about to call me out dude i was looking at you i was doing the math in my head just to make sure yeah I, I can't calculate as fast as you do. And, then, and now they're going to get potentially another tier one over bottom yeah. so you're really closing up the map on the alchemist Doom is going straight into the Solar Crest. They haven't gotten the kill with Doom yet. Only one kill on the edge so far. That's all they've gotten. Almost perfect, flawless game here from Omega. You Which is what they the need. Gratitude. They're going to smoke on T1. Scary looking happen. team, to be honest. They're very, aggr uh, very aggressive. Yeah. Excuse me. Got a little hiccup there. Dark Willow. Not the one that they want to go after. They don't want to forfeit the top tower, though. Like, the sand tower should be a casualty. Potentially. Cask bounces just under the Enchantress. They're trying to use that ult to go after Mac. Run away. And now they'll just TP out Sam H. And out. Just the Ench again. 42 top tower. A trade they'll take any day of the week. Oh, for sure. Now they lose bot tower as well. Tiny's taking that. Taking even more of the map. Alchemist, how is he looking? Finished Sange. Halfway done with the Saint Joshua. Or the Yasha, rather. But it's 2k lead for Omega. Yeah. Alchemist won't be able to do this alone. No, Ember is also not the most fun. Cuckoo might be in trouble. Yeah, he doesn't expect this. I think he's dead. Yeah. Side of his searing chains. Bramble Maze with a Shadow Realm strike. And they'll ram it back and forth. Get this kill. Almost a miscalculation. <laughs> he's going for, uh, for, the, for the Desolate on Ember Spirit. Just pure physical damage. Goes very well. Together with the Tiny, of course, who's also all physical. At some and he point. got the Echo Saber, so Tiny's timing on Blink to Echo was pretty good. Yeah. He got a lot of kills, a lot of farm efficiency because of it. 
He's 6 0 one Now that they want to try to bully the Alchemist out of his own jungle, the Asha completed on him. He's really the only saving grace they have right now here on T1. Void Spirit has no game. Although, as I said, he has a Vessel completed. If they get a good initiation with that, there's a lot of damage coming out. It's got to be perfect, though. Yeah. Game is looking rough for T1, but no any unwinnable. Like, oh, they for sure. They have an Alchemist. They could, they could come back in this, I think. Yeah, for sure. Void Spirit, Curse Crown. Shots coming in with the Impetus Strike. It's not going to be enough damage just yet. They're looking for the ulti coming through from White Mon. And it just doesn't feel like enough. They've used that Doom that's out onto the Centaur. They're continuing to try and chase. CML is coming over to help him yeah, out. 40 health they also have Mount Mac in. So LSA Laguna Blade, that's through. Kills off CML, but they've got themselves a Terrorize, and now they're feared away. They look over at the Void Spear. They'll take out Carl, toss him into the air. He's 23, he charges up the stun, but it's not going to be enough to survive. They kill off the Alchemist. They look over in Zephyr. They should be able to take out Melina, and they will. Three heroes dead. Side of Fist, Searing Chain. Sam H, you sure are right. You are stomping on them. Cuckoo on the run, but the Curse Crown will pop eventually. White Mon's in the trees. He might just get caught. And if he gets caught, this will be a full team wipe. Triple kill for Tino. He's <laughs> godlike. Okay. The, the fight started off really silly. He used the Doom on Centaur. He walked into the river with the Ocean Heart sitting at like 35 health region, taking no damage whatsoever. And without that Doom, they have no control for this Ember Spear. Just going rampant in this team fight. Same as the Tiny. Just too much damage in the back lines. Even Alchemist gets taken out. Just look at this. He's healing through the Doom. It's kind of silly, but it's happening. Then the backline, they focus all the attention on Ench. They kill him with Laguna, sure. But then what? Good terrorize, good initiation from Tiny on three. Gone. Ench is all three of their kills. Yeah. And now they're going to go for the Void Spirit. Toss Down up again. in the air. Dead again. Carl gone. Map tipped. Man. 5k ahead. No, they're crushing T1. Yeah. I mean, even game two, you could say they were arguably yeah, crushing them. Was a nice comeback from T1, but... Oh my god, Lina, careful! Side of his searing chains. You're caught, you're killed. Zephyr, run, hide, try to get out of there, but there's no chance. And that's a death so now picked up on Ember Spirit. If you died fast before, now you're dying just that much faster. And Alchemist has no armor item yet. He's gonna go into the negative. Or oh, he's pretty damn close to it. Man, this is rough. And yep. a tier two's gonna go down. I think they did the... What, what, what ended up working? Let the let, let the alchemist get his his battle fury, but we squeeze the map, we've destroyed the other two lanes, and uh, they, 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 they have twenty kills. They, yeah, they have the alk. They've got terrorized. They have bedlam ready. I mean, in the bramble maze, <laughs> bedlam right on top of solo target. Like you said, it's a bunch of damage, and and twenty three is dead again. The only saving grace they had was him. He now died for the third time. I don't know if there's any saving this. Like yeah, they, they uh, you're, well, get, you're not going to get more space. Towers don't come back. You're not going to get that security back. He, whoa, one slight half health gone from Witch Doctor. And there's another slight. And they've got the avalanche. They have the toss. Cuckoo in trouble. <laughs> Cast comes out. They've got the damage. There's no chance he survives. This Cuckoo. death of corrosion damage. Dead death of corrosion more. plus tiny on a tower. They can take it so fast. Yeah. They need to be ready to defend this. Tiny taking a lot of damage here, though. But not enough. How much? Mine's almost corrosion three, right? Yeah. That's so nine. If that tiny hits, it's gonna be a lot of damage coming out. Your yeah. anger is useless, CSS Carl. Well, I think they're pretty happy right now. I doubt it's anger. Stomped, yes. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. It is the score, though. Reversed. Reversed. Oh. Dark Don't tell level anybody. 12. Bad level 2. He can solo kill anybody. The level 1, he could solo kill anybody. Yeah. It's so much damage. Like this Doom, Solar Crest, sure. But it doesn't gonna help you with magic damage. I like how this engine is selling himself every time. I'm here, go on me. My team is nowhere near around. Debated yeah. it. It's like in the cartoons when they're like, create a diversion. Avalanche toss, stampede used. The Lutz getting a kill here on a car who asked for a step away. That's a second one used. He just escapes, but they're going to ram it forward. Look over at Zephyr. The yellow state comes in, but it's not going to be enough. They get the kill on a white one. Now they'll look over the rest. Zephyr gone. Two heroes dead on the side of T1. They look over Cuckoo. Terrorizes in. All right. They've taken out Mac. They get something from this. And I think that kill on a Mac is enough to send Omega back towards their end of the map. Actually, not a bad trade at all. Like, in the position they are in, losing two supports for one very important Ember kill is very well worth it. And now Alchemist getting more space to farm. Already has the Blink Dagger, going straight into the BKB. Once he has that, 
it's going to be quite a bit more difficult for Omega to take fights. Not all is lost, 41. It's just looking pretty damn dark. I just think the problem is, like, yeah, he's going to have that BKB, but you just kill what's around him. They have nothing. Yeah, it's definitely attack. difficult. But they, got, they did get a Doom onto the Ember, and you can see a Doomed Ember still dies. True. But now, do you take advantage of that and go fight now? Yeah, for sure. 90 seconds cooldown, you definitely want to squeeze them out now. We'll have to see. White Mon, double Fluffy Head, Sephir, Fluffy Head Cloak. They're all just trying to tank up. This physical damage Ember build is really doing a lot of work this game. They have so little armor on this diet team. Almost everybody's going into the negative. Ag's next for the Ember. Goodbye, Witch Doctor. Solo battle. <laughs> 808 on this Dark, Dark Willow. Now level 14 soon. <laughs> Dark Willow, I, I don't know if you remember. Well, you probably do. When it first came out, the battle was so strong. Yeah, it did like 100 per hit or something. It was something crazy. Yeah. And, you and could, it was you could also kill five anybody. times per second, not four. I think so, yeah. It, it was, I mean, even now, like, that feels so strong. It is. Doom pushing out the lane. Has to be careful. They smoked up on his trail. They found him. Centaur's got the blink. I mean, they're right on top of him. His searing Stop. chain, slide of fist. Bedlam. Look, blink, stun, Bedlam killed. <laughs> <laughs> they just make it look so easy. 8 0 and 9. Yeah, this guy's doing a Shanks, lot of work. He's got my vote for MVP right what now. What about Tino? 10 6? I'm a support guy. Oh, you can't be biased, though. I think they're both. Double MVP. Let's go. Did you do that? Yeah. Tiny Game's not over yet, though. Tiny finish BKB. Going to the shot next. I like that. Oh, also oh Bramble Lee! Did it catch him? Oh, oh, Shanks! Barely. And he's got the Terrorize. He's ready to kill off Carl. Does he make the jump away? No. <laughs> Max got it. Tino, he's going bottom all by himself. They're debating him. See if he falls for it. He has a BKB. Very hard to kill him. He's fine. He's fine. Fake guy. That new talent is actually so good. Plus 15% tree grab unit damage bonus. It's 15% again. Just like the cooldown reduction talent on the sniper. He likes his 15s. It's very commonly used percentage, 15. More than 10 and 20? I feel like people like round numbers more. Well, and then he's also got 15% status resistance on 20. Yeah. Well, this Roshan is just gone. And Batland is even shredding Roshan with all that minus armor as well. <laughs> Gonna give it to the Tiny, who soon has a shard. Means unlimited tree grab hits. The old Agam is basically for a third of the price. Why not? Sounds fair. Good Sounds bargain. Sounds balanced. Yep. Dormammu. Searing Chains. He'll try to heal. Cast. Ult. Mac. Oh yeah, he's close to dying. <laughs> he's fine. <laughs> he lost 200 health. Good effort though. He's healing. Maledict, it'll tick. Did nothing. Like, didn't I, even, I, it didn't even, it didn't hurt. I mean, it canceled the shield at the very end. So his farm got slowed down by one second. They're so far ahead. <laughs> it's kind of disgusting. Yeah. Shot tiny up. Oh, Cuckoo. Getting tossed back. Yep. Avalanche, toss. Cuckoo trying to survive. They've got the Brambles around 23. They're going to Revenant forward, try and catch this Alchemist, which they will. Curse Crown pops. They got the kill on the Cuckoo. They're saying boohoo. There's nothing to survive, Peacock. No. The night is dark and full of terror. Sam H, double edge, getting these shots in, going for the Ags. Yep, more damage reduction. Can't hurt us. Not like they were taken any before. No, but not really. Less. Why not? And another tier two. Alchemist. He has his BKB though. And he's got the whip. He's going to try and run. Speedy boy. Battle oh, Bramble. Caught him. Caught him. Caught Shank. Stop. He's too good. He would have to pop the BKB. Curse crown. And that's going to pop. He's he not going to pop, pop the BKB. It, the BKB. Oh, okay. Now Wait he gets it off. But Tino's right there with him with a BKB of his own. They'll use that ulti from White Mind, but it doesn't even break through rocks. If you can't break through rocks, you can't find the diamonds, you can't find the minerals, you can't get a kill. I want to tell you right there, it takes balls of steel, like just a millisecond longer, Tiny gets his combo off this Alka's death. Yeah. Lunatic. Whew. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Bounty Rune is going to get picked up. Somewhat fake hype. School, give it. Oh, that could have been the end of the game, though. It could have been. Like, if he dies there, he does not have buyback. Game is over. 
You can say it with us, chat. Fake out. <laughs> Get involved. Get involved, yeah. We're here to entertain you. You are the primary focus of our awesome words. Carl? Sometimes. Avalanche. Avalanche. All right, Avalanche All right. hit the top. Cool. <laughs> 400 damage, two hits. Nicely done. Sounds good. Let's just wait a minute. What is it, 37? Until he gets a leveler. They're gonna smoke. Smoke to get some vision down? Smoke. Right. Smoking is not good for you kids. See if it, see if T1 uh, you know, can get away unharmed. Go oh, slight miss. And he just smoked the alchemist so he can find the enemy triangle. <laughs> That's what it seems like. Yeah. This tiny though is knocking on the high ground. Bop so, into tier three. <laughs> it's falling fast. Five hits, half health. And he's got an Echo Saber. So, in a second. <laughs> boom, boom. Aether Remnant. Or is it long damage? Damaged. He might be losing his Aegis here. Oh, All oh. right. He might lose the Aegis. I think he does. There's a lot of damage. It's gone. Question is, can you do it again? Yes. But only if they Tiny don't have walks up high ground, which yeah, he won't. They don't have the Witch Doctor. Oh. Who do they catch out here? Oh, They've they, got a scan. They, they oh, found shanks! Gotcha. Is he going to run away? He found the creep wave. He's being greedy. <laughs> do they not see each other? Is he going to pop PKB this time? Yes. Yeah, okay. This time he's like, all right, last time I took my chances. That's greedy. That's good. It's well calculated because like, if he pops BKB, they don't have an instant stun. No, they don't. He knows. He knows. I mean, it can be greedy and well calculated at the same time. Look at the Mac boy. Went for the Lincolns. Now Doom. What are you going to do? Someone else. Not the Zamper. Maybe the Tiny. Tiny can still take a lot of damage. They have percentage damage. They have Maledict. They can kill him. It's just not easy. You know, they're playing the game on hard mode. New game plus. Yeah. And they're not fully equipped. No. Like they sp speed ran the game. Going straight into New Game Plus. Oh, Pal and Sword now. Mr. Steiny. More cool now reduction for the Ember. Oh, like he needed it. Although he's holding the bullet, but is he going to swap on that? Whip or charm? Yes. You choose the charm. The charm. You're my lucky charm. Tiny, 340 damage. 330 damage. My math sucks. No, you're on it. Thank you. So let's see. 12k ahead. I mean, they're just cutting all the waves. They're not yep. letting T1 get out of base. They're just waiting for the next Roche. Just like game one. Very methodical. It's on T1 to really make something happen. We're going to move forward. 23 up into the air. Yules with the curse KKB. crown. And he'll get That's stunned. It. Terrorize holding it. Thinking about it. They've got the Terrorize. Avalanche toss. 23. What? Cuckoo's dead too. This game over, I think. Zephyr's got. Why? They're all gone. He's holding his BKB again. I mean, you can't blame him. They're so far behind. If he pops his BKB prematurely, they'll also lose the fight after that. But or you just lose the fight. You don't fight. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, anti one. Wow. I don't know if Omega looked really impressive, which they did, or T1 was just not the same T1 we saw in Season 1. Well, we've been having that conversation through this series. It's looked like a different team. The, yeah. the style of play has looked very different from, t uh, from Season 1. Yeah. And just the confidence level. Like, they're not confident. They make, they're not making any plays they did before, you know. Like, GG is called... Wow. Omega! I think this deserves it, right? Yeah. GG! Killing the king. Crushed, demolished, absolutely <laughs> taken like... down. And you could argue game two, as I said before, was also very one-sided. One good yeah. fight there, three free rows, maybe a couple of questionable decisions, but game one and three, easy. Yeah, Flawless. really, really easy. well done. Right. Game and two looked good too. Yeah, T1 is a major team. You know, Omega yep. came from the lower division. Now 2-0. This feels like last season in China, like, just that cusp, like battle, like LGD elephant. You needed to win mm -hmm. to get to that last spot. And for Omega, I mean, this could be the win that changes their season. Yeah, I mean, being up 2-0 is yeah. good stuff. Yeah, it's really good stuff. They take the series over T1. Really want to hear what the panel has to say to break down what went wrong for T1 and 
One Omega did right, so back over to you guys. Some things have not changed from the Singapore Major, one of which is Black blowing out your eardrums at the end of every single game. And the other is T1 not quite matching expectations as Smart Omega take the series 2-1 over T1. That was, uh, I did not see that coming, but I will also say amongst major contenders, I think that T1 was, I, I was chalking it up to Cuckoo not being there. And I was like, okay, this is why they're not matching expectations. But even with Cuckoo back, I have many question marks, like this fight. Yeah, I wouldn't actually talk about T1 here, even though they're, uh, them losing is a, is a big surprise. I want to talk about Omega, and they're giving me the Neon or Thunder Predator vibes in, in the Singapore Major. Okay. They figured out the meta in a different way. They're playing Sniper Carry, they're playing Tiny Carry here, and they're executing uh, very, very precisely. You could see December with, uh, he had a good idea with Yorb of Corrosion, with just cutting through them, dodging LSAs, and Tiny as well. Yeah, he got the Blink Dagger first, but he made it work. It, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it is risky, but you're playing into an alchemist, so, you know, maybe that risk does have a very big payoff. It's one of those, you know, I'll get a blank dagger, could potentially backfire, like you lose, uh, let's say, two fights in a row, you die, you're gonna end up, you know, everyone's gonna get become more tanky, but he found the right opportunities, he found the right targets, uh, and, like, the, they played the lane well, you know, getting that soul ring, uh, also Enchantress with man, uh, Enchantress was also, like, providing the heal, the sustain, uh, bringing extra regen to the lane, uh, just some good stuff like Omega, Esports, Smart Omega, they look good. Like, I, this is a team that, uh, you know, came from the bottom division from the last season, and they could cause many more upsets for sure. Most draft creativity that we've seen throughout sure. the entire region so far, even game two, them going for that Rubik, and they take a very well deserved 2 0 for sure. I'm looking forward to seeing what they're capable of. And T1, this is just their first game. Maybe, you know, coming back from the Major, haven't read all the patch notes quite yet. But uh, still underwhelming, even with Cuckoo back in the driver's seat. Yeah, very underwhelming. Overall, the way they're playing, the itemization that they're choosing, even 23 Savage doesn't look like this prodigy that we were hyping up for uh, the majority of the last season. Like his Juggernaut game, he had a couple of uh, deaths that... He, he goes in without having spin on cooldown, without having spin off cooldown, it's still on two seconds and dies in those two seconds. Here as well, waiting with that BKB or getting caught off or fighting constantly. With Alchemist, w when it's an Alchemist game, just run yeah. away and farm. And Doom. Exactly. Yeah, they, like they should have tried to just dodge those fights because they have Demar goal kicking in, they have Alchemist goal kicking in. But you can say, you know, Smart Omega, they played it uh, really fine they went into the jungle find the right targets they were the one you know they understood we need to go uh, go into the jungle invade get the kills they have a bunch of tower damage with the tiny tree with the desolator on ember spirit also like the way they drafted was uh, pretty good you know they had this centaur against the doom instant uh, pick pretty much where you need to be doomed once again like this has been throughout the dota history uh, it's just taking away doom from one of your cores uh, you're so tanky we've seen one of those fights where he actually survives because there is no follow-up dark willow also top tier pick there you know yeah. they they just like found the void spirit the good terrorizes on top of that just uh, just some crisp stuff i would say in game number three thankfully for t1 they get a little bit of time off as this is the wrap-up for week number one here in the upper division for SEA. But we'll be back for but this is just, the, just the tip of the iceberg. When we come back on the 21st, we will return to SEA with Smart Omega versus TNC as the first series of the day. And then the second series of the day, Execration versus Fnatic. Fnatic's first reappearance here in the upper division. But already we're starting to see Starting to see that things don't always replicate, you know? Season one, you think that all these top dogs are going to stay top dogs? We're going to change things up as we see these lower division teams make a mark. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you to HyperX and Secret Lab Chairs for making this event possible. We'll be back on April 21st.